On New Year's Eve, a guy went to take a picture of fireworks for his little sister. They grew up in an orphanage and were not siblings. They lived very poor in the slums. They had no money and our hero hoped that next year there would be better luck. As he was returning home, suddenly he saw a bright side light that blinded him. He felt a sharp bang and a very loud sound from the car. He flew the air from the impact of the car, blood splattered flying around. He remembered his little sister. His last thought was that he hadn't kept his promises. Around the boy's neck was a walnut-shaped talisman that he had worn since he was a little boy. At the moment of the accident, the talisman split in two and a bright light emerged from it. The boy was caught between two worlds, the world of the living and the world of the dead. The boy's name was Lu Shu. He was the hero of the story. That New Year's Eve, he was hit by a truck. Since then, his life changed. When he woke up and stood up in a pool of blood, he looked at his body and thought, why didn't he die? Covered in blood, he returned home. At home, his little sister was waiting for him. The girl was very worried about where her brother had disappeared to. He said he had been hit by a car, but he was fine. He just needed to take a shower and rest. In the shower, he examined himself carefully, but nothing had changed in the reflection of the mirror. But looking carefully at his hand, Lu Xu saw a crack from which energy was glowing. Then, a virtual screen with different abilities appeared. Lu Xu stood and looked at the big screen. Different superpowers and skills appeared on it. There were various buttons that could be selected on the screen. One of them was called the Negative Emotion Points button. He pressed the next button that said Lottery. He wanted to see what he could win in it. The guy got the changing fruit. It could bring him out of the game into reality. Lu Xu wondered what would happen if he ate it. When our hero swallowed this fruit, he felt a burning sensation and warmth inside his body. He came to his senses, but he didn't realize yet what changes had happened in his body. Together with his little sister, they were having a noodle dinner, and Lu Xu realized that he was getting points of negative emotions when his little sister was annoyed and angry with him. He felt sorry for her and suggested they go outside to make a snowman. They went outside. It was cold and their snowmen looked like themselves. One, the big one, looked like a boy, and the other, the small one, looked like a girl. Lu Xu and her little sister were playing outside with their snowmen. Suddenly, a man in a black cloak appeared on the roof and looked at them. This man's eyes were glowing like a laser blue color. He looked mysterious. The little girl noticed that since the accident, her brother has been acting strange. He spends all his time on his phone. Lu Xu was writing chat messages to get negative emotion points to play the lottery in his virtual card. The lottery wheel spun and he got a value and a yellow talisman. After he read the verse written on the yellow talisman, fire began to burn from his hand. As he continued to recite the verse, the star galaxy of his superpower opened in front of our hero. The fallen stars created a galaxy within Lu Xu's body. That bright blue starlight of galaxies was amplifying the power in his body. This was how his superpower was born. Then the guy woke up and thought that everything that happened to him happened in a dream. He realized that the stars had to teach him the legendary techniques. The next day, Lu Xu and his little sister went to a festival. There they saw strange actors and unusual phenomena. One actor on stage had fire blazing from his hand. These were paranormal phenomena that had happened recently in their town. Lu Xu, watching the performance on stage, felt an awakened power in his chest. He thought that the fireman on the stage was as awakened as he was. Meanwhile, backstage, two men in cloaks blocked the actor's path. The man with fire in his hand threw back the cloaked men with a forceful punch. There was a rumble and a whistle, and a girl in a cloak with a gun in her hand attacked the actor. She pointed the gun directly at him and shot the actor in the neck. Lu Xu and her sister witnessed the incident. The little girl asked why they attacked the actor. A woman wearing glasses with a gun said that the guy didn't get a permit for the fire show and violated safety regulations. That's why they detained and are taking him away. Lu Xu didn't believe the words of these people. After all, real firefighters never attacked people and took them away. The little sister asked our hero who the evil people were. It was clear that there were many strong and evil people in the world now, so he and Lu Xu must become the strongest to defend themselves. He must be careful not to reveal himself and his awakened power. Our hero said that he will definitely protect his little sister. This is his main task and mission. A guy whose name was Ji Wei approached them. He wanted to meet him. He was also researching superpowers, but Lu Xu was cautious. He didn't want to expose himself. Sitting on the couch, he searched for information about the festival they were at. On the news, he saw a picture of a guy with fire. There was a group of people crowded around him. They were taking pictures and talking about him being a superhero. Lu Xu saw the same people in black clothes in the photo who were following the guy. 
Also, he saw his classmates at the party who didn't call him because Lu Xu was poor. He wrote a joke and mocking message in his classmates' chat room and received negative emotion points. With the negative emotion points he received, he bought a new fruit from the store. From the fruit in his hands, the guy felt an outgoing energy. He decided to eat this fruit and see what would happen afterward. After eating this fruit, he felt immense power and saw the first two stars in his star chart light up. Never before had he felt such power in himself. He tested his power and struck out with his fist. Beams of bright light appeared from the blow. A little girl came running into the room at the noise. She was worried about her brother. After making sure he was okay, she looked out the window and noticed a man falling from the sky. Lu Xu said it was time for her to go to bed, but the little girl didn't listen and pushed him towards the window. There was a body lying near the snowman. He saw that it was a man from the fair who was playing with fire. They ran outside to the lying body and decided to call an ambulance to save him. However, Lu Xu suspected that the man on the floor was pretending and changed his mind about calling the ambulance. Perhaps he was one of the superhumans they were talking about on the news. Lu Xu offered to drag the guy away from their house. The man lying on the floor came to his senses and asked for their help. He realized he had been exposed and decided to act differently. The man with the fire tried to get up, but Lu Xu didn't let him do so. He realized that he was getting negative emotion points from annoying this man. There was a fight between them, at the end of which the man with fire asked him to let go. Lu Xu and the little girl let him go and invited him to come play some more. As he ran away, he thought that the family that made snowmen had kind people. Lu Xu stood outside the house and saw people in black chasing the man they had let go on the roof. These people were chasing the man with superpowers. The little sister was worried about her brother and asked him not to go near the people with superpowers anymore. But he shared with her the secret that he was also awakened. The sister asked to show his superpower, but the guy said he had to go to bed because he had to get up early tomorrow to sell eggs. In the morning, he went to his job, after which he walked to school. Browsing the news on his phone, he saw that he could now recognize videos about superpowers blocked on the internet. There was also a website with categories of awakened. There were different levels of awakened with superpowers and super strength. They were divided into levels A, F, B, D, level C could resist firearms. Level B, awakened ones could make energy from heaven and earth. Level A, awakened ones could harmonize with earth and heaven. He was so engrossed in his study that he didn't notice when a group of guys approached him and started taunting him. They told him not to waste his time because he would never become awakened. A very beautiful girl approached the egg counter. It was the main beauty in the whole school, she asked to sell her one egg. When the girl put down the money for the purchase, Lu Xu realized that she was also an awakened one. The guy thought about the fact that more and more awakened ones were appearing. He should speed up his training and try to obtain more altering fruits. He needed to collect more negative emotions in a day. With those points, he could buy fruit. He came to school for an exam. At school in his class, he was the smartest student. All his classmates cheated from him. But in this exam, he covered his answers with his hand and didn't let his classmates cheat. They got angry and he got a huge amount of negative emotion points. One of the students in the class was awakened. He went into a rage and lashed out at the teacher and then started wrecking the classroom. At the commotion in the classroom, the headmaster came along with two people who were very similar to those men in black. They picked up and took the awakened man away. The classmates were standing around discussing where their classmate had been taken. They were talking about what they had heard, that a new era had come when people's superpowers awakened and they became awakened. Our hero heard some rustling. He turned around and met the gaze of a girl who, like him, was awakened. The school loudspeaker announced that all students must now take a blood test. Lu Xu immediately realized that the blood test would give him away because he had become much stronger. He looked at the people in masks and white coats and recognized that they were the same people in black. Our hero looked for any way to avoid the blood test, but he failed. And in a few minutes, there was a Band-Aid on his arm, which was glued on after the blood samples were taken. There were rumors in the school that there would be a special class to gather students with unique abilities. Lu Xu thought of a special class where the awakened ones could be gathered all together for training. Our hero was wondering if he would go to the special class for the chosen ones. He came back from school and wanted to tell all the news to his little sister, but he saw her lying in bed. She had a fever. He decided to get the altering fruit in the system and try to strengthen the little girl's physical condition. She immediately felt better and asked where the fruit came from. Was her brother really an awakened one? Lu Xu said that he was definitely no longer the same person he was before, and he would find a way for the little sister to awaken as well. The star fruit could provide star energy for 15 days. 
The altering fruit could increase the effectiveness of training. After eating it, one's pumping increased. When the guy ate it, he started accumulating constellations even faster. He began to accumulate negative emotion points to buy the altering fruit and train as much as possible to become stronger and more enduring. At school, the principal announced a list of students who would be able to attend a special class. They selected gifted students to teach and train them and introduced the new classroom teacher. The principal began to read out the names of the students and called out Lu Xu's name. There was a very handsome teacher in their new class. Our hero was collecting negative emotion points in the classroom for the awakening of his little sister. A new student came into the class. She was a foreigner. The new student sat next to our hero. To a big surprise, it turned out to be a guy, although he looked like a girl. The new teacher brought a non-disclosure document to the class. All the students had to sign it. The teacher divided the students according to their level of potential. Everyone had their own category. It was already night when our hero came home after class. After he ate the altering fruit, the lottery display said that he had reached his limit and could no longer use it. He kept one altering fruit for his little sister. The guy decided to accumulate fruit and test the time of the fruit's effect. He gave a couple of these apples to the girl and decided to test the effect. Lu Xu promised that he would earn money so that she could go to school to study. He played the lottery and tofu cheese fell out. He ate a piece which turned out to have a very foul odor. Then he clicked on the lottery display one more time. Our hero got a lot of boxes of stinky tofu. He got the idea to sell them. The next day at the bazaar, all the people paid attention to the seller with such stinky tofu. Although the smell was repulsive, it tasted very tender and delicious. By selling such cheese, the guy earned not only money, but also negative emotion points. At school and class, the teacher talked about how the world had changed. They were able to discover many new properties of different metals with more and more awakened every day. In the future, invincible weapons could be made from these new metals and used. In the future, weapons made of the new metals will become necessary props for many superhumans. In the evening, our hero went to the lottery again to play and get something new. He got lucky and instead of tofu, a golden piece of paper fell out to him. When he wanted to grab this paper, his little sister walked into the room and the paper went to her. Bright rays went through her body. The guy told the girl not to worry, to calm down and check the abnormal sensations in her body. The girl closed her eyes and felt the birth of a star inside her. There were seven stars, and they were strange. They created something that looked like a black hole. Lu Xu gave his sister some new fruit. It was supposed to help. But the fruit disappeared from the girl's hands, as if her body was pushing it away. At night, when everyone was sleeping, a thousand new stars appeared in the sky. In the morning, when the boy woke up, he was happy to see a new star. He decided to test the changes in his body and stabbed his arm with all his might. His body became so strong that the knife broke, but his arm remained intact. As usual, every day our hero was going to go to the bazaar to sell tofu. As he was going to work, he was thinking that, would he really be a tofu seller all his life? Suddenly he saw his grandfather practicing with a sword with blue streams of energy flying around him. It looked very impressive. Our hero froze in place and marveled at the sight. He continued to stand back and watch the elderly man's training. This grandfather had a very strong technique and a powerful energy level. When this man noticed Lu Xu approaching, he stopped his practice. Our hero asked what this grandfather was doing. He replied that he was practicing his sword skills. Through wielding a sword, many things in the world become much easier, but the effect can be the opposite. He handed the sword to the boy and offered to be his apprentice. Lu Xu didn't want to learn swordsmanship. He hit his grandfather on the head with a stick and ran to work. For this deed, he was able to get an additional 100 emotion points. The gray-haired grandfather was very upset and angry. He had little time left to pass on the sword technique to his heir. Lu Xu pondered as he walked down the street. Why did the old man's resentment keep growing while he was earning so many negative emotion points? Why did this grandfather offer to become his disciple? But the offer felt good to him. The boy came to school, and sitting in the cafeteria at his lunch, he calculated that he had earned 3,000 negative emotion points for today. That made him very happy. He was pleased. Classmates teased Lu Xu because he had no friends, but our hero needed the negative emotion points. The evening of the day came. The lights were on in the house. Lu Xu was at home with his little sister. They had some fruits on the table. Lu Xu put one of them in his mouth. The little sister also really wanted to taste at least one fruit. She looked at her brother so sadly, but he said she couldn't try it. She wondered how he was able to earn so many cheating fruits. The guy told her that he was selling very stinky tofu. People passing by would gasp at the nasty strong odor and feel such negative emotions that our hero became rich. 
After our hero ate so much of the changing fruit, he felt a changing sensation inside. He closed his eyes and felt a new energy in his body that filled him. This energy filled his whole body. He felt a new seventh star was born inside. All the stars revolved around one, the biggest star that had appeared a couple days ago. Lu Xu looked at this glowing, beautiful star mesmerized. He was strongly drawn to touch it and feel its energy. Suddenly, this star turned into a purple-colored ball with glowing eyes and a huge mouth. It was like a giant snake. Lu Xu was blinded by the bright light and he bounced away, covering his face with his hand. Within the flow of that energy, he saw the glint of a steel dagger. The guy reached out his hand, trying to grab it. The dagger beckoned and drew him in. He managed to get the dagger. It was a new power he had gotten in the system. Holding the dagger in his hands, Lu Xu felt the energy of the seven stars transformed into the power of the magic dagger, filling his body with power. He felt the transformation and harmonization of his abilities. Lu Xu looked at the small dagger with bewilderment, which looked more like a stationary knife than an invincible weapon. At night, when the full moon rose in the sky, three masters in black cloaks ran swiftly and easily across the roofs of the houses. They stopped not far from one house and began their observation. After following one person, they realized that it was a civilian who posed no danger. The boss of these fighters ordered the rest of the team not to move without his further orders. Lu Xu's neighbor stood outside her house and looked at the fiery sparks that were flying around. While reading a book in his chair, Grandpa uttered a cryptic phrase that the time had come. A stranger appeared in their gateway. He was dressed in a dark cloak. Bright fire surrounded his entire body and sparks flew around him. His aura was strong. Our hero immediately felt the emergence of a strong energy somewhere in space. He ran outside to find out where this source originated from. His eyes opened wide with surprise. He saw a very strong fire person. A woman greeted this stranger. She was waiting for him on the doorstep of her house. The stranger said that he had come to see Master Li on an important matter. Mr. Li invited him to enter the house. The stranger was from Qian Lu's organization, 33. When Lu Xu heard this name, he remembered a student at school telling him about a very strong organization that consisted of a limited number of members with an ability level of at least B. Qian Lu was the strongest in it. In the kitchen, a dinner party was beautifully set up for the guests. Sitting at the table, Tian Lu warned that if the Reiki culture recovered, Master Li would not be able to destroy the foundation. Mr. Li took the kettle and invited his guests to drink tea. Seated in comfortable armchairs, they drank tea and chatted. Tian Li had a tempting offer for the master. He offered to join their organization. Mr. Li found the offer so ridiculous that he choked on his tea. He declined the offer. The stranger was offended by the master's behavior and said that he hoped the organizations would cooperate one day. The stranger said goodbye to the master and left without making a deal. It fell through. Putting on their dark cloaks, the members of the organization swiftly flew away. The next morning came. Mr. Lee went outside to do his sword exercises. Our hero was going to school. As he walked outside, he saw the mesmerizing sword-wielding technique of the master. Mr. Lee offered to teach Lu Xu this technique. Lu Xu became very curious about the techniques that his grandfather had. Then he called his little sister and asked Mr. Lee to teach her, said goodbye, and went about his business. Mr. Lee felt terribly annoyed. After all, he was a Category B master, and he was left to work as a babysitter. After the little girl had a snack, they sat down at the table and started studying. Checking the little girl's lessons, the teacher marveled at the neatness of her handwriting. He hoped that he was teaching the right person and that the lessons would pay off. The next morning, Mr. Lee prepared strength training exercises for Lu Xu. The boy put weights on his legs, but the weight seemed very light. The teacher was surprised, for our hero could handle his maximum weight even at the beginning of his training. The guy really enjoyed the exercises and was looking forward to the next test. The next exercise was how to handle his body and make a thousand swings of the sword. A master who learned how to wield a sword could become the strongest person. It took training to reach the instinct of strength and confidence. To cleave even the heavens with a sword required special confidence and professionalism. The master said seriously that once becoming great, one would also have to take on great responsibility. But our hero didn't want to take any responsibility. He wanted to live simply and be responsible only to live well and take care of his little sister. Master Lee was greatly surprised by such a quick refusal of the guy, but the life of our hero was incredibly hard since his childhood. He had to fight every day to survive in this world. He did not want to create illusions of high ideals for himself. His life was already difficult. Master was saddened to hear these words, but he was wise and realized that life was far from easy. Master couldn't become our hero's mentor, but he could teach him how to wield a sword. Two days later, little Xiao Yu came to visit her grandfather. 
She brought her math homework. But the grandfather didn't seem to know much about math. He didn't understand equations. The girl doubted his knowledge and asked him how old he was. The grandfather replied that he was 81 years old. The old man and the little girl sitting at the table argued a lot about their knowledge and math problems. Suddenly, a young guy with glasses came to them and offered to solve the problem. But Mr. Lee was not happy about the arrival of this guy with glasses. When Zi Yu was in school, he started to receive a large number of negative emotion points. He thought that his little sister was in trouble. He told the teacher that he needed to leave class right away. Our hero ran home and started looking for and calling for the little girl. When he entered Master Lee's house, he saw an unknown guy with glasses in front of the master. Master Lee introduced Shur. He was from Chen Lu's organization. After the destruction of the foundation, Master Lee's authority remained strong for Chen Lu's organization. Everyone respected him. Mr. Shur revealed that Master Lee had developed lessons for the Dao Yang class, for the very same class that Lu Xu was in. Two days ago, two days ago, the school's teacher talked about the exercise, the dual ceremony in class. The students listened to her very attentively. This spiritual practice required great perseverance. All the students had to complete the first part in order to move on to the second part. Each of them had different potential, and the speed of adaptation would be different. All the disciples were sitting on the floor, crossing their legs and arms in a special way. They were doing this new practice. Suddenly, our hero felt a dissipating warmth of energy in his chest. It was a feeling unlike anything else. The stars in his body shone, and his dagger, glittering, flew swiftly towards this ball of energy. The guy realized that this technique and exercise couldn't be done at the same time as his star card. In terms of its power, it was very dominant. Lu Xu thought that if Master Li found out about his exercises, there might be trouble. A man with glasses brought him back from these memories. He asked to introduce him to our hero. Master Li said that this guy lives in the neighborhood and is in school, in the Dao Yang class. Lu Xu picked up his little sister and said they should go home. The man with glasses stood there looking at them suspiciously. When the guy left, Master Li invited the guest to drink tea. He waited for Shur to tell the reason for his visit. Shur told about the signs in all the ruins in the city. The revival of ruins and spirits was happening all over the country, and he hoped Master Li would not interfere with their business. The master listened to his story understood everything, and said his guest could leave. Then Master Lee came to our hero's house and brought two test tubes to determine the level of potential. But the boy said that he had already taken this test. He didn't want to do it again. But Master Lee didn't want to hear any excuses. He just waved his hand and said he was waiting for the test results tomorrow morning. In the evening, Lu Xu took out the test tube and did the test. But the test tube failed and exploded. All the contents ended up on the floor. The next morning, as usual, the guy woke up and went to his job selling tofu. He kept mocking and joking around with the customers to get more negative emotion points. Grandpa Lee asked the little girl what the result of the test yesterday was. The little girl cheated, saying that their strength was at the same level. Master Lee knew that these children's potential was unique, but he realized that the children didn't trust him yet. In the evening class, the teacher brought two crystals for the awakened ones to increase the effectiveness of their powers. One of the crystals was given to our hero, but with his aura, this crystal was useless. Lu Xu kept his strength and tremendous energy a secret from everyone. He approached one of his classmates and cautiously proposed one serious matter. He took out his crystal and offered his classmate to buy it. His classmate froze in surprise. He didn't understand why Lu Xu wanted to sell such a valuable item. Lu Xu started to evoke pity, telling him that he and his sister are orphans. He needs money for her future studies as they are very poor. When a classmate agreed to help him, our hero realized that his plan worked. Every morning, Lu Xu practiced and practiced with his sword. His body became stronger and more muscular. He didn't reveal the secret of his strength to the master, but he continued to train with great persistence. After receiving the money for selling the crystal, Lu Xu invited his little sister to go shopping at the mall. They were poor orphans and rarely bought things for themselves, so this was a real treat for them. He bought his little sister a beautiful new dress and shoes. She looked very beautiful. They were playing on the slot machines. They were having a lot of fun. The little girl was scared that it was like a parting gift and Lu Xu was going to leave her. Our hero replied that it wasn't true. He had bought a new house and they would never have to suffer again. The girl hugged Lu Xu tightly. She couldn't believe such a big gift because since they were little, they had to survive with almost no money. They had never had a house of their own. In the evening, Lu Xu took out a dagger of his strength. He was glad that he had mastered the art of sword wielding. He took the dagger and, controlling it with the power of thought, peeled the apple in midair. Lu Xu told his little sister 
that it was time for her to discover new abilities as well. At night, in a dream, the little girl broke through the first nebula. She saw a black hole in the star chart. In her dream, she caught a sparrow. It was a soul. After that, a black sparrow appeared on her head. Perhaps it was her new superpower to absorb souls. Our hero decided to test the little girl's superpower and conduct an experiment to capture souls. He brought her to a farm where there were pigs. There were a lot of them. The pigs would go to slaughter soon anyway. One could choose one of them to train. The pigs didn't like the idea. One of the pigs hit our heroes hard. The pigs stood and mocked the boy and the little girl. They were glad that they were able to throw these people out of their home so easily. This made the little girl very angry, and she tried to grab one of the pigs. They brought the pink piglet to their house and did an experiment. After this experiment, the boy had to submit to the little tyrant. He had to earn her forgiveness. During dinner, the children watched the television, which was showing the news. The news was about the 20th bank robbery by an awakened man. An infected SWAT team had surrounded the robbers and ordered everyone to surrender. The robber was very strong. The police couldn't handle him. He was an awakened man and could throw even a real automobile into the air with the power of one hand. The robber seemed invincible. He used his power and only laughed at the policemen. Several policemen were lying on the ground. Others were trying to escape from the awakened man. One SWAT man fell to the pavement and a heavy car flew on top of him. He was frightened and screamed. It seemed like one more second and the car would crush him. The policeman thought he was finished. Suddenly an unknown man in a raincoat flew by and with a strong blow he threw the car away. The policeman lying on the pavement was saved thanks to the stranger. This stranger asked to evacuate the crowd of people and let the pros do the rest of the business. When the team discovered the robbers, they prepared to destroy them. A yellow magic talisman hit the mugger's forehead directly. The last thing the robber saw were the hieroglyphics on the talisman glowing with fire. His eyes glazed over in horror. Lu Xu swiftly ran outside from the house. He could feel a strong aura approaching. He wanted to climb to the top of the roof to get a better view of the event taking place, and he suddenly discovered that he could jump to great heights. It was an amazing feeling. On the roof, Lu Xu saw a large number of explosions and fire. Smoke was rising into the air. He realized that heading into the very depths of the events was dangerous. It was necessary to look around first. Despite the explosions and fire of the yellow talismans, the robber continued to rush away with the stolen money. The girl with burning eyes continued to chase after them and throw magic yellow talismans at them. The teacher continued her attack on the robbers. She wanted to destroy them with the power of fire. The robber ordered his accomplices not to give up, to keep fighting and repel this attack. But the girl was such a strong fighter that it became increasingly difficult for the bandits to fight back. The entire city was engulfed in fire in the aftermath of the battle. Sparks were flying in different directions. A robber as huge as a rock was so strong that he grabbed a man's head with one hand and the man hung in the air. This evil robber said that the time of strong men has come. All the weak ones must die. The robber's words made the warrior angry and he said that he would take revenge on the criminal. He would pay for everything. The warrior swung his sword and struck the giant with all his might. He blocked it with his hand. But the giant was so strong that he threw the cloaked man back with the force of one hand. He made the warrior so angry that dozens of glowing talismans rushed towards the robber. Everything around him was ablaze with fire. The teacher, along with his team, continued to cast spells and strike the enemy repeatedly. The robber took his accomplices and used them as human shields to repel the attack. After that, he fled. The search for the robber continued. The neighborhood was cordoned off. Several helicopters were raised to catch the criminal. Our hero approached one of the buildings near which these events unfolded. Coming around the corner of the building, he practically ran into the criminal. Lu Xu quickly hid and disguised himself. From around the corner, our hero saw a sword stabbed into the robber's chest. The money flew apart. The warrior had every right to kill him because the robber took the lives of many people and broke the law. He ordered the thief to prepare to take his punishment. But suddenly, the star mantle that Lu Xu was wearing fell down and stopped working. Our hero was no longer invisible. To take revenge, the awakened criminal wanted to use all his evil powers. When the girl tracked down this thief, it was too late. He had time to use the spell. Minutes passed, and the criminal was getting stronger and stronger. If this continued, his increased strength would be impossible to deal with. The warriors used a binding spell of red thread. Blood gushed from the outlaw's chest. The fighters had a slight advantage to deal with him. Suddenly, the outlaw noticed Lu Xu hiding in the boxes. The bandit wanted to destroy him. The guy saw the bandit flying at him and realized that he couldn't escape the attack. If he couldn't deal with him, he would die. 
Suddenly, he remembered all his training and the master's advice. He realized that he had to defeat the monster. The guy was just tiny compared to the criminal, but still struck him with all his strength. The two powerful arms of the opponents met in a duel to the death. Lu Xu realized that he had become very strong and could perform new attacks. He defeated the robber who was lying on the pavement. A cloaked warrior ran out from around the corner and ordered him to tell us who our hero was. Lu Xu was very careful. He didn't want to reveal himself, so he hurriedly ran away. The warriors saw the stranger's superpower. They realized that he was an awakened person. Late at night, a light was burning in one of the buildings in the city. In that building, there were people sitting around a table discussing the news. There was a new awakened man in town. It was necessary to search for him. In the new house of our hero, light was burning from the windows. A little girl had a new summoned soul. It was the soul of the criminal our hero had defeated. Lu Xu said he didn't leave his soul to run around naked. Children shouldn't look at naked men. He ordered the girl to dress the spirit. Sis didn't understand why souls needed clothes. She was a little tyrant, and with one punch, she knocked her brother to the floor. Lu Xu demonstrated his new ability to her. In one motion, he put a flowery dress on the spirit. The spirit didn't like the clothes and ripped the dress off its body in one motion and was left naked again. The spirit stood motionless. It was now subject to the girl's instructions and served her. The little girl had the superpower by closing her eyes to see different events of the past tense. The girl closed her eyes and was able to see all the events in the bank that had happened with this spirit. Then she saw her brother defeating this criminal. The girl said that his punch became pretty good. The guy was wandering around in the dark. He wanted to cover the spirit's naked body. The spirit started to help the guy. He handed him a tissue in the bathroom as our hero washed his face and brushed his teeth. The spirit was helpful at home with chores at home. He was able to prepare dinner and serve it to the table. The next day, Lu Xu left home to go about his business, and his little sister stayed home with the spirit. Our hero came to school. All the students were discussing the events of yesterday and the newly awakened hero. The news of the robbery was shown to Lu Xu. All the classmates admired the new awakened one and his strength. They wanted to know who he was. No one was able to track him down and solve the mystery. A special agent was sent out of town to investigate so he could find the awakened one. When our hero approached the school podium, he felt a vortex of energy of great power. He had only felt such a strong aura field once before when a person from the council came to visit. On the stage was their new school principal giving his speech. He was poorly prepared and read his speech from cues written on his hand. The students were bored and uninterested in listening. Last night, a cat wandered down the dark street. She was directed at the principal. She passed on a secret assignment. He was to become an agent and learn the identity of the awakened one. Then she attacked the headmaster and chased him away, telling him not to come back again. The principal read his speech while he examined the students. In order not to arouse suspicion, one must be careful. Suddenly, a bush flew into the principal's back to bring him back from his memories, and he continued reading his speech. The speech mentioned that he cared for the younger generation and would now personally teach the Daoyang class himself. Meanwhile, the leaders of the Heavenly Network watched the latest news. Heavenly Net King was angry because their secret agent was behaving too openly and loudly. It was late evening at Lu Xu's house. The night was dark with many stars shining in the sky. Our hero was sitting at the table eating dinner with his little sister. He looked distressed. He was worried that their secret might be revealed. They need to stay away from people in the organization. The boy's cell phone rang. A message came in that there was an urgent gathering of all the students in his class. Meanwhile, a man appeared at the edge of the ruins, illuminated by a light. Closing his eyes and listening to his senses, the man with the sword realized that a stranger was approaching the outskirts. The stranger knew how to control fire. Holding a flame in his hand, he said that the ruins belonged to all mankind. The man with the sword said that any trespasser would be punished. At that moment, the ground beneath his feet split open, a dark abyss gaping beneath his feet. The warrior with the sword destroyed the man who wanted to cross the border. The slain man lay on the ground, a medallion hanging on his chest. A bird flew in and took that medallion. Flapping its wings, it carried the medallion in its beak. The bird flew with it into the unknown. A military car with tinted windows was approaching the border of the ruins at high speed. Inside were the students of the special class. Lu Xu was among them. Everyone was curious about what was special about these ruins. One of the students told them that inside, in the very center of the ruins, there was something special called an eye. Also, in the depths of the ruins, different magical herbs grow. Artifacts, tools, and materials that have value are hidden. 
but anyone who enters the ruins without caution and permission will only die. Due to the strongest aura, these ruins have always attracted many different masters. A special class arrived at the site. The students were impressed by the scale and size of the ruins. There were helicopters flying in the sky and military equipment on the ground surrounded by searchlights. A classmate told our hero that they had come to train near the ruins. They were forbidden to go inside because they had no special strength and were not strong enough. But Lu Xu had his special plan. He realized how he could act more efficiently and gain new abilities. When all the disciples started practicing, our hero started pestering them with different questions. He was so annoying, behaving too intemperately, that the points of negative emotion sprinkled on him. Having earned enough negative emotion points, our hero was able to buy new star fruit. After he ate the star fruit, he felt that a new star was born in his galaxy. After a couple minutes, the guy felt his body even stronger than before. His arms became stronger and his legs stronger. He fought an arm wrestling match with the head of the class and defeated him. Then the teacher sat down at the table to arm wrestle with our hero and he was stronger again. The whole class envied our hero. All the students wanted to be as strong as him. After the fight, when everyone went to their tents, the headmaster ordered everyone to leave the camp immediately. All the students were excited and scared. They noticed that something was coming down from the mountain. Clouds of fog were rolling down the mountain. The disciples needed to leave the foot of the mountain as quickly as possible. Lu Xu and his friend ran away from the wave that was coming after them. Suddenly they slipped away and were lost in the mist, and our hero was left alone. He looked under his feet, there was the ground, and further he saw ruins, they shimmered with different colors. Finding himself in the very center of the ruins, Lu Xu was surprised that there was such a huge space hidden there. Suddenly he felt someone standing behind him. He turned around and froze. A spirit skeleton stood behind and stretched out its bony hand to strangle our hero. The spirit skeleton surrounded Lu Xu. They were everywhere. One skeleton's hand came out of the ground and grabbed the guy's leg. Lu Xu pulled out his big iron axe at the moment when the skeleton jumped up and prepared to attack our hero. But the lad was brave and fearless. He swung his axe and threw the skeleton's back. But as soon as he smashed one batch of skeletons, new spirits began to appear from the ground. Lu Xu fought the new enemies with all his might, hammering them with his iron axe with persistence. He realized that a skeleton could only be destroyed by smashing its skull because skeletons possessed F-level strength and they weren't easy to deal with. The guy thought that if these skeletons were met by students from his class who hadn't awakened yet, they would all die in a fight with these spirits. The guy thought that he had defeated all the spirits, but then he saw a huge number of new skeletons coming out of the ground. Our hero thought that there were too many of them and decided to run away from his opponents. He ran as hard as he could. When he managed to escape from the gang of bones, he thought that he was very hungry because he had spent a lot of energy. Our hero looked around and saw that he was standing at the edge of the forest. He thought that something edible must surely grow there. Under his feet he saw fruit lying there and decided to eat some. All the trees were covered with fruit and there was a lot of it. He thought that he could sell the fruit and earn money. But the squirrels who lived on this tree and ate these fruits did not like the guy's idea. They saw some stranger stealing their fruit and decided to attack him. The angry squirrel started throwing fruit at our hero's head. Lu Xu had to run away. He took the fruit with him but promised to come back to deal with the squirrels and take revenge on them. And the king of the squirrels smiled slyly, celebrating his little victory. He was pleased that he had succeeded in chasing the boy away. Our hero walked alone at night through the forest and thought that not in vain, everyone talked about the danger of the ruins. They were full of spirits. He remembered the words of his classmate that the strongest relics were hidden in the depths of the ruins. He ran as hard as he could through the ruins and wanted to get out of them alive. Suddenly, his foot stepped on something soft on the ground. The boy screamed with fear. It turned out that he was standing on a big gray wolf that was sleeping. The wolf threw itself at him. Our hero tried to run away. He realized that in these ruins, there are very many traps. The skeletons attacked and killed the students of the special class. The students were lying on the ground in a pool of blood. One boy was left alive. He stood holding onto his amulet that hung around his neck, and the spirit surrounded him. Lu Xu took out his axe and raised it above the surviving disciple's head. He closed his eyes in fear and begged not to be killed. The axe was a few centimeters away from his head. But suddenly, someone's axe flew through the air and smashed the skull of the skeleton. The surviving guy turned his head back and saw that it was Lu Xu who saved his life. Lu Xu took out his axe and prepared for another battle with the spirits. The spirits were very angry. They wanted to kill the guy. One of them crept up from behind and wanted to cut off his head. But our hero was very strong. 
With one kick of his foot, he destroyed the skeleton and he flew back. The stranger was greatly surprised at the strength of our hero. He thought that he was magnificent. Lu Xu killed all the skeletons in a rage. Only the bones from them flew in all directions. Our hero was so strong that he threw one of them high into the air. The stranger grabbed some stick to help our hero defeat the enemies. When it was over, they were standing back to back with many skeleton bones lying under their feet. Lu Xu said that they should destroy every last one of the skeletons. The stranger thanked our hero for saving his life. Lu Xu realized that the guy had survived because of the amulet he wore around his neck. The stranger's name was Chang. This amulet was a gift from his home. It glowed with a bright red light and protected him. Chang asked to go along with our hero because he was worried about the skeletons appearing. Lu Xu agreed because he was a kind man. But this Chang was not who he said he was. He was deceiving our hero and was glad that he didn't notice the deception. Lu Xu's appearance spoiled Chang's plan, but he rejoiced as he thought of how he would destroy our hero. He caught up with Lu Xu and further pretended to be his buddy. They continued walking together through the ruins. The stranger came up with a plan to harm our hero. Walking beside him, he purposely stepped into one of the pits from where the spirits appeared, and he pretended that it happened by accident. At the same minute, skeletons began to appear from under the ground from all the pits. It was incredibly noisy. Our hero's buddy was glad that his plan was working. Leaving Lu Xu alone, he turned and ran away. But Lu Xu was not confused and overtook his new acquaintance. Our hero was not only very strong, but also very fast. Soon he was even ahead of his new friend. This new friend Lu Xu realized that his plan had failed. The two of them hid behind a large rock. They realized that if they ran away a sufficient distance, the spirits would stop chasing. Then the man came up with a new plan. He decided to take our hero's axe. He pretended to be kind and said he wanted to help carry Lu Xu's axe but he wanted to take it away so that our hero would become weak. But Lu Xu didn't give up his weapon. He told his new friend not to run away from him. It was very dangerous in the ruins at night. The night came. The stars were burning in the sky. They had to spend the night alone in the ruins. Chang noticed that our hero was eating dinner and asked to be allowed to eat a piece of tofu because he was very hungry. But before giving the food, Lu Xu wanted to ask him a question. He realized that Chang had been pretending and hiding his power to kill him the whole time. Chang wondered, how did Lu Xu figure out his plan? Lu Xu noticed that although his new acquaintance looked weak, there was not a single wound or scratch on his body. Chang smiled evilly and said that he would gladly kill Lu Xu because he was tired of pretending. He took out a sharp dagger from his jacket and was about to stab our hero with it. Their duel was for life. Lu Xu realized he couldn't die. Suddenly, his body shone with a deep, bright light and a sharp sword emerged from his chest. The sword pierced through Chang's chest and he flew backwards. Lu Xu was glowing with blue light at this moment. He was very strong. He had reached a new level of awakening. Next, something strange happened. The amulet around Chang's neck glowed with red light, and he turned into a terrifying monster with huge fists. Red-colored fire burned around him, and with his powerful hand strikes, he scattered rocks around him. Lu Xu didn't understand why his opponent was still alive and after being stabbed, he became even stronger. There was a red aura and energy around Chang that was like an electric field. Not only was he still alive, but his strength had increased. Our hero hid behind some rocks to come up with a new plan to defeat Chang. He noticed an amulet around his rival's neck and realized that it was the amulet that gave him his power. Lu Xu decided to rip the amulet off. Chang grabbed the knife in his hands and attacked our hero. Lu Xu jumped high and was in the air. Chang missed. His eyes flashed with anger. He was very angry that he didn't get a chance to strike, and he missed. A force like electricity went throughout our hero's body. He pulled out his last trump card. Lu Xu powerfully struck Chang with his hand and ripped the medallion off his neck. Without his protective amulet, Chang was weak and couldn't defeat our hero. His body began to dry up very quickly, and in a couple minutes, he was reduced to a skeleton lying on the ground. Our hero stood and looked at his defeated opponent. He realized that it had been a very brutal battle in which he had emerged victorious. Standing in the ruins, he missed his little sister, who was alone in the city. Our hero's classroom, where he was studying, was attacked by monsters. They looked intimidating, and on their necks burned red amulets, too. One strong girl was not afraid of the monster and struck it, ripping and shattering the medallion from its neck. The rest of the students who were afraid stood back and watched this duel with fear. She said that there were spies in their class, and they should report it to the leadership. Our hero went back to get some fruit that grew on the tree, which was guarded by squirrels. He picked a lot of fruit from the tree. He wanted to pick so that the squirrels would not catch up with him. The king of the squirrels ordered the boy to be killed. 
he didn't like someone taking their apples. After the boy ran away from the squirrels, he saw people running towards him. He got excited because he thought he could finally get out of the ruins. Then he noticed that the people were running for a reason. They were running away from a pack of skeletons who were chasing and chasing the students. But our hero was not afraid of these skeletons. He took his ax and chopped all their skulls. He was strong and had experience in fighting them. Then he gave this ax to his classmates, saying they could have it. The only thing he wanted was to get back to his little sister. The path to the center of the ruins was blocked by a group of skeletons. In the center of this group rode one, the most important one, the captain of the troop. If he was hit, the other skeletons would be vulnerable. The surviving disciples were trapped in the ruins. They couldn't make it to the center. Their food supplies were almost out. The teachers decided to sneak to the center of the ruins and try to defeat the skeletons to save themselves. Suddenly, they saw a warrior jumping down from the mountain onto the skeletons. This warrior easily dealt with all the skeletons, smashing them to pieces. The teacher and the students looked at the warrior with amazement. They recognized him as our hero. The skeletons on horses rode straight at the boy. They wanted to kill him with their spears and swords. However, Lu Xu easily dealt with them. With the blows of his axe and swords, he chopped the skulls of all the skeletons in a row again. The strongest captain of the army attacked him, but Lu Xu chopped his skull with his sword, and he fell to the ground. After our hero had dealt with the whole army of skeletons, the teacher ran up to him. The whole class looked at the guy with admiration. Everyone asked how he managed to defeat the army of skeletons. The classmates were very hungry, and our hero treated them to fruit, which he stole from the squirrels. Lu Xu offered to sell his spear, which gave him extra spiritual power, and merged with his inner energy. He demonstrated the spear in action. All his classmates ran up to him, willing to trade their jewelry for food and weapons. They offered expensive things like pendants, diamond rings, jewelry, and gold to exchange for a few fruits or for a spear, sword, or axe. One classmate gave a bundle of money to buy himself a weapon. Lu Xu earned a whole bag of expensive jewelry that he could sell later. He was about to leave with his loot, but he felt the galaxy stars inside him activate, and he felt the power of his sword inside. He turned his head and saw a group of skeletons, demons, and goblins approaching him. Our hero gathered all the treasures into a bag and hurried away. But the sword inside the guy wouldn't let him leave. It was ripping out of his chest and pulling him back. Lu Xu ran straight towards the group of goblins. The sword inside him was burning with a blue light. The evil spirits, goblins, and skeletons were already a few meters away from our hero. The sword inside him glowed even brighter and burst out. A group of goblins swirled around the guy and covered their heads with their hands. Their yells and screams were terrifying. They began to growl and show their teeth but they couldn't harm the boy. The students and teachers of the class were shocked to see that the demons were scared of our hero and disappeared. Lu Xu stood, and with his hand touching his chest, he thought that the demons were scared of his sword. He remembered that his sword was born to destroy all evil spirits. A girl approached him. She was the first pretty girl in the class. The boy asked her to do him a favor, but their conversation was interrupted by an attacking skeleton who wanted to kill them. Our heroes grabbed their swords and cut off the skeleton's head. They destroyed a large number of skeletons and had a lot of fun. The class teachers decided to head towards the center of the ruins. The students walked through a deep, dark gorge. They advanced one after another. The cave was very dark. Suddenly, when they saw the light, they realized that the edge of the cave was very high up. Lu Xu and Chao Qing were selling weapons in the cave. They were exchanging them for jewelry. She had a plan. Their mission was to find special talismans among the disciples' jewelry. There was an assembly of all the students of the class in the cave and our heroes went there to find out information about the spies. All the students were very surprised. How could such a beautiful girl be next to a loser and a poor man as our hero was considered to be? A man approached Lu Xu and introduced himself. His name was John. He had a high rank and was temporarily replacing the head of the operation. He had a high-level aura. This person said that he was counting on our hero's help because the situation was difficult. They looked at the center of the deep pit and assumed that there were armed units there which they couldn't see because the magic field was unusually strong. They couldn't get the special drones down there either because they would break down and couldn't work. The man wanted to check this pit with his sword. He possessed a special technique. The man summoned his sword, and all the students in the class watched with delight at his extraordinary sword wielding. Down in the cave, one could feel the breath of souls. There were too many of them. Suddenly, the headmaster appeared nearby carrying a few trees. He liked the bright style and was delighted with our hero's decorations. He liked them very much. The squirrel saw that they wanted to steal fruit from her and chased after the thief. Among the students, the squirrel noticed an acquaintance and recognized him as our hero. 
It was strange that in such a big forest they met for the second time. The headmaster had gotten so much food that it was enough for all the students, and now they could pass the ruins. The principal said that tomorrow morning he would take all the students and they would go down to the pit. Lu Xu took the squirrel for himself and gave it one fruit so it wouldn't starve to death. He let the squirrel live. All the students in the class put up their tents to sleep in the gorge. The principal was sleeping soundly on the ground, making snoring noises. While the whole camp was sleeping, the members of the organization jumped into the gorge. Lu Xu grabbed one man's leg and stopped him from jumping. Lu Xu asked this man to take him into the pit with him. Our hero began to shout very loudly that they were going to jump into the pit themselves and take all the relics for themselves without sharing them with anyone. From his shouting, all the students who were sleeping in the tents began to wake up. A member of the organization was very angry that the guy woke up everyone around him, raising such a ruckus, and our hero got a lot of points of negative emotions. The director appeared, and with the strength of a lion struck this man. Everything around became an orange fire. The traitor fell into a pit. The principal's plan was to trap them by saying that they were only going to the pit tomorrow. These people decided to infiltrate the pit at night first. All the disciples gathered in a group to go down deep into the pit. They had to be very careful and protect each other's lives. There was a stone staircase leading down to the bottom of the pit. They went down one by one, one by one. At the bottom, among the stones, they spotted a glowing house. Going down the pit became harder and harder. The students were getting cold. As they walked down the gorge, their foot came across something sticky and viscous. When they looked closely, they saw that it was blood. A picture came to their eyes. A group of people, heads bowed, sitting at the bottom of a cave, with pools of blood spreading out from beneath them. Their eyes were empty without eyeballs. Rivers of blood were spreading everywhere. The director touched one of these people. They were frozen. He couldn't guess what magic had been used. Suddenly, evil spirits appeared from the center of the ruins. A huge amount of negative, evil energy appeared from the ground. The spirits possessed long, sharp claws. The principal ordered all the students to be attentive and protect each other. Ghosts were appearing literally from everywhere. There were so many of them. But thanks to Lu Xu's magic sword, not a single ghost came near them. The teachers looked at our hero and wanted to understand, when did he become so strong? He didn't want to be exposed, so he just said that he read a lot of books and slept a lot. He didn't want to reveal his secret. Lu Xu felt something strange inside. The energy of the embattled spirit had been absorbed by him. He thought it had something to do with his little sister's training. Something strange was happening all around. It was as if the spirit was playing with them. It would appear and then disappear. Looks like this devilish ritual wasn't that simple. Other people sacrificed themselves so that one could turn into a ghost and attack our heroes. They stood back to back and waited to see where the ghost would appear from again. The evil ghost stood there and laughed at Tian Lu's organization. He was playing with them and thinking who to choose as the next victim. He wanted to attack our hero, but the guy's magic sword reacted to him and repelled him. Everyone was delighted. How does Lu Xu manage to hit the evil spirit and repel its attacks? Our hero made this ghost very angry, so he decided to kill everyone. Some noise was heard from the palace doors, and streams of energy began to come out of the gates. Everything was of a dark color. The gate opened and a bright flash rose above the gorge. An Oka guard in armor and helmet appeared and stood in front of them. He looked very intimidating. That spirit joined with the guardian and said that a new performance awaited everyone. The teachers ordered everyone to be on full alert. Oka's guardian looked intimidating. He was burning with red light, his eyes glittering like lit coals. The headmaster ordered everyone to stand back because this guard was very dangerous. He said that he would handle everything himself and the students just needed to stay alive. The principal knew that this demon spear was the relic. He ordered all the students to stand back and until he took the spear, no one must die, everyone must stay alive. All the disciples rushed to attack the skeletons. Our hero looked at the girl from his class with admiration. What incredible abilities she had and how bravely she fought the spirits. The boy sat alone with his spear and was sad. A teacher ran up to him and asked if he was all right. Was he not wounded? The boy said that he had the spear and no one dared come near him. He was perfectly all right. No one knew how long the duel would last, but everyone had to conserve their strength to help the principal defeat the demon. The principal was ready for the duel. His energy transformed into the power of the lion. He delivered the first blow to the demon with his spear, but the demon was unusually strong and withstood the blow. The demon with glowing red eyes grabbed his sword and struck the principal in the face. But the headmaster had managed to grab the demon's spear, and he was very happy about it. It was his goal. 
The demon was large in size and didn't want to let go of the spear. The headmaster hung on to it. A magnificent dragon suddenly appeared from the spear. A huge number of dragons appeared from the demon's spear and wanted to destroy the principal. The demon ordered the principal to let go of the spear, but the principal did not agree to do so. The principal said that he would never give up the spear and would continue his journey to the last. The teacher and our hero saw that the principal needed help. They realized that he could not do it alone. Lu Xu focused, then filled his weapon with star power and prepared to strike. Our hero threw his spear into the air and ordered the spear to fly forward. The spear turned into many spears that hit all the skeletons in the heads. The boy hoped that this technique would work. He saw the demon holding the spear with Principal Lee hanging on the end of it. A girl ran up to him to help him and the demon's sword struck next to her head. Our hero jumped and knocked her to the ground and the sword didn't hit her. He saved her life. The principal kept hanging onto the spear and didn't want to let go. A teacher ran up to our heroes and asked if they were all right. The girl's arm was injured. Lu Xu decided to distract the demon and rushed at him with his spear. He was as fast as a whirlwind and grabbed the spear with both hands and stabbed it forcefully into the demon. The demon with its iron hand grabbed the guy's head. The demon thought our hero was a petty thief and sent him to hell. Principal Lee activated his tiger power and rushed in for another attack. The power of the black dragon and the golden tiger met each other. A powerful explosion rang out with Principal Lee and our hero beside him. The principal said that it was time for payback. They had been playing games for too long. He ordered the students to attack the ghost with all their might. While everyone was busy fighting the ghost, our hero was transported to the castle doors. The spirit that inhabited the castle didn't like the presence of our hero and sent demons to attack him. Lu Xu stood with his spear, while hundreds of paws pounced on him from behind. Suddenly, the guy's magic sword activated. He sensed the danger. The evil spirit wondered how did our hero have such a sword in his possession. That spirit was very evil. He wanted to kill Lu Xu because he was the one who spoiled his plans. The spirit blamed our hero for all his troubles and problems. Whole balls of dark negative energy appeared around the guy. A long, unpleasant sound was very loud and penetrated into the guy's head. He couldn't do anything about it. The terrifying spirit with ferocious power, summoning a thousand evil spirits, continued to attack the guy. Lu Xu remembered his little sister. The only thing he wanted at this moment was to return home to her alive. Remembering all the joyful moments of his life, he thought that he wanted to live in peace and tranquility and ordered his magic sword to attack the evil spirit. This magic sword destroyed all the evil spirits. The evil spirit was defeated. Our hero's sword destroyed it. The guy felt inside the appearance of a new star. He decided not to waste time and find the eye. It was difficult to do because the room he entered was filled with water. Once on dry land, he saw a small box on the table that was glowing brightly. He eyed the small box with interest. He wondered what was inside. Outside, the demon with the spear continued its fight with Principal Lee. Once again, the principal was attacked by the dragon's predatory paws. He couldn't believe it was happening again. The principal flew backwards, but he held the spear in his hands. Under no circumstances did he want to part with it. The principal was very insistent, and it made the demon terribly angry. His eyes burned with a red light, and smoke came out of them. Snatching the spear from the demon, the principal didn't understand why the ruins didn't disappear. There was some kind of mistake here. The guy opened the casket, and everything around it lit up with a blue glow. Inside the box was a dragon statuette, and it was all glowing with blue light. It was a seal. When the demon saw the guy open the box with the seal, he became furious. Everything around glowed with fire and the demon lunged at Lu Xu in a frenzy. Around our hero, everything began to disappear. Only the skeleton spirits were flying in space. Clots of golden energy swirled around the guy. He bravely stood in the very center of this vortex, unafraid of any events. Suddenly the fog around him began to dissipate. Outside the boundaries of the ruins stood a crowd of excited parents. They were waiting for their children. They saw the fog clearing and the students of the class returning home. They were incredibly happy to be alive after their adventure in the ruins. All of the students who came out of the ruins were able to go to their homes. The weapons they obtained from the ruins were recorded as income. Lu Xu stood beside his screen and checked his negative emotion points, which had increased greatly. It looked like he had offended a lot of people. Our hero walked and thought that so few people were able to return from the ruins, and so many people died in them. Parents asked in despair if the lad had seen their children, but he said he didn't know them. He hurried home to his little sister who was waiting for him so much. When he got home, he told his little sister all the things that had happened to him in the ruins. Then they sat down to dinner. The master who lived next door felt that the boy's energy had changed. He retrieved many new relics from the ruins. The guy showed his little sister the gold. 
the spear, the fruit he found in the ruins. Our hero gave his sister a little squirrel that he brought from the ruins to tame. The little squirrel nestled on the girl's lap. The girl asked what the squirrel's name was. They decided to call the squirrel Cheeky, but the squirrel did not like this name. They gave the little squirrel a piece of chips and offered it to stay with them. The squirrel liked the chips so much that he agreed to stay with them. When Lu Xu was alone in the room, he took out a seal of mountains and rivers that he had gotten from the ruins and began to look at it. Hidden in this blue shining cube was a dragon. The dragon was a river that fed the mountains and lands. It was magnificent. How could an entire world fit into such a small box? This casket was a divine thing that could control the mountains and earth. Lu Xu held the casket in his hands. A clot of bright blue energy appeared. Suddenly, our hero found himself lifted into the sky. He was floating above the city. He saw the whole city from above and a huge amount of transparent sparks. It was spiritual energy reuniting in a stream. Our hero realized that the seal was capable of controlling the aura of an entire city. Hovering above the city, Lu Xu soon saw the glowing gates. They caught his attention. He approached the gate and couldn't understand how they suddenly appeared in the mountain. Raising his hand, he touched them. What happened next was a bright flash. The boy woke up on the floor of his room. With his powers, he could not open the door. Our hero had an idea in his mind to go back to the ruins again to become rich. 48. On the roof of the building, two people from the organization recorded the activity of spiritual energy and reported to Qian Luo. Sitting at home in his room, our hero discovered a new fruit on his star chart. When he ate it, he felt the fruit penetrate his body like a cloud of energy. He listened to the sensations inside his body to see how the fruit affected him. He was angry because he didn't feel any beneficial effect, but getting more fruit wasn't working. The next morning in the garden, he was met by the master and told that the guy should do exercises with a sword. Our hero began to train to strengthen his will and reveal his aura and power. The master remembered how in his childhood he used to go up to the mountains to find healing herbs that could increase his health and strength. The master suggested that the boy synchronize his body with his breathing so the training would be more successful. The lad repeated the master's words and struck his sword and shouted the word, open loudly. Suddenly, he felt the energy in the bottom of his abdomen come alive. He decided to continue practicing. It seemed to him as he concentrated, the energy within him continued to grow and increase. He kept making sword swings and repeating the word open each time. Master was very angry because it took him two years of training to unlock this energy, while Lu Xu only had two months. The master was telling our hero, the more auras he collected before releasing the divine energy, the greater his future achievements would be. Lu Xu realized that it was the star fruit that helped him accumulate energy, and he should be able to retain it with all his might. The next day, our hero took his little sister to school to study. The teacher introduced their new classmate to the whole class. But the little girl didn't like the class, and she trashed the class and beat up all the students. Lu Xu said that he would pay for the damage caused to everyone, but the parents didn't agree because their children were badly beaten. His little sister apologized for causing him so much trouble. She said that when she came to school, the girls in the class started to bully and call her names. The girls started touching her little squirrel, laughing at her and calling her a savage. Then the girl ordered the squirrel to attack her abusers. The squirrel kicked the girls to get her favorite chips. One girl had all her hair pulled out. Our hero replied that he knew and understood her. He asked his sister to apologize to her classmates and their parents. But the parents and classmates pounced on the little girl. No one wanted to forgive her. Her apology was not enough for everyone. Her brother stood up for her saying that she didn't deserve to be excluded. She had made a mistake and he would not allow her to be bullied. They walked out of the school. The girl was about to be expelled. She walked and cried bitterly because she felt guilty and thought her brother was angry with her. She was afraid that he would take her back to the orphanage. But our hero offered her to sit down and discuss everything calmly. She said that the era of people with extraordinary abilities will come. Perhaps the day would come when ordinary people would not be able to defeat them, but that didn't mean they should use their power against ordinary people. Brother explained that even after leaving the orphanage, they never broke the rules or crossed the line. It was the only way to live their lives according to their conscience. His little sister understood everything. She was very ashamed of her behavior and talking to her brother showed her that she was wrong. 37. Lu Xu said that she could use force as needed. The world is cruel in itself, and sometimes you have to be strong to avoid being wronged. The little girl said that she didn't want to go to school. Perhaps Grandpa Lee will continue to study with her. Lu Xu told the little girl that through school, she can know the world of people and human hearts. School is not only a place where knowledge is gained. She must learn the rules of life. 
The little girl said her brother looked amazing when he stood up for her. She felt very comfortable and safe. He promised that he would stand up for her always, and no one would dare to hurt his little sister. If he had to, he would destroy the whole world for her. It was a dark night, with the moon shining in the sky and the stars twinkling. Our hero sneaked illegally into the school grounds at night. Lu Xu told his little sis, who went with him, that he was going to release the spirit. After a minute, a huge rock-like spirit came out. The spirit was acting strange, but our hero gave it a vial of blood and ordered it to take it to the principal's office. The spirit flew above the building and headed off to fulfill its task. The vials of students' blood stood on the principal's desk. With the power of thought concentrating all his senses, he ordered the spirit to change the vials. Suddenly, a guard on duty with a flashlight looked into the office and saw the spirit. The guard didn't understand why the spirit was naked and what was it doing in the principal's office. He started shooting at it. The guy realized that the shots would alert the others and backup would come to the guard, so they needed to leave. But before they left, they should have made sure to switch the blood vials. They failed to do that. At home, our hero sat with a piece of paper and a pencil and thought about how to make it work. A squirrel came back to them and the guy gave it the altering fruit. The squirrel turned into a super-powered squirrel and they decided that it could help with their plan as well. The guy expected that the squirrel should learn to understand them after the altering fruit and be able to control the rats. They gave the rats to taste drops of jam from the altering fruit. After that, our heroes decided to test the squirrel's intelligence level, hoping that the squirrel had become intelligent. A few days passed after the attempted theft of test tubes at school. The special class teacher asked the students about their choices. Did they want to continue in the class? The students answered that they wanted to continue learning. The teacher congratulated and awarded her students with the rank of lieutenant for their military service in the ruins. She held out papers for them to sign. After signing this paper, they joined the celestial community. Our hero took the pen and signed the document. After that, everyone became a fellow member of the celestial community. The new members of the celestial community were built in front of the school building. The principal congratulated everyone and said that this world is waiting for change. An interesting path to spiritual enlightenment awaits them. All the disciples raised their right hands and took an oath that they would voluntarily join the heavenly community and would defend the borders of their country until death. From that day forward, they would become warriors and dedicate their lives to the defense of their homeland. They all swore to fulfill their promises and protect their country and not to break their word. On that day, all over the world, Daoyang classes took the oath of office. The oath was spread all over the world. More than a month passed. In the city, life remained the same as before. There were traffic jams on the roads and there were many people on the street. The incident at the school was no longer news and life went on as usual. Lu Xu and her little sister were going on a trip. They had packed a lot of warm clothes and food to take with them on the road. Lu Xu, despite the approaching journey, continued his training. Master Li saw him and said that he should train hard, travel and read books to better understand the world around him. Old Man Li looked at the boy with respect. His perseverance was something to be envied. Our hero practiced so much that his cloud of energy almost became a sea. The master recalled that it was very rare that students could achieve the effect to make clouds become rain, but our hero had succeeded. The second stage was the snowy mountains, and the third stage was the formation of the sword due to the cold from outside. All the filled energy was channeled into swords. The disciples who were able to transform clouds into rain would be able to lay the foundation of the sword. The teacher was amazed. How does our hero manage to undergo transformation quickly? What he couldn't do, the apprentice was able to do in two months. Our hero and his little sister packed their suitcases and set off on a journey. The train was rushing fast through the scenic area between the mountains. At night, Lu Xu started his spiritual practice again. He practiced every day. His inner strength and energies were gathered into droplets, and the droplets formed streams. The more rivulets he could gather, the sooner he could turn them into the sea. He concentrated and imagined that he was holding a sword with which he could smash everything around him. Concentrating his thoughts into energy, he pointed his fingers at the glass. Suddenly the glass shattered into a thousand pieces. Our hero was amazed that he was able to break it without touching it. In the morning after his workout, a guy asked his squirrel to make coffee. A man passing by was very surprised that our hero had such a smart squirrel that could make coffee. He asked what the guy's specialty was. Our hero said that his specialty is to annoy people and spoil relationships, and for this, get a lot of points of negative emotions. The train kept rushing between the Rocky Mountains. Lu Xu and his little sister watched a movie on the train, slept and arrived at the train station. So he decided to follow his neighbors whom he met on the train. 
They were going to the black market. Lu Xu climbed to the roof of the building to get a better view of these people. The black market had different artifacts that were hard to distinguish from fakes, the real ones from the magical ones. Our hero was surprised that everyone in the market was selling fakes. These people did not even feel the aura of things. Suddenly a stranger came up and asked the guy to demonstrate his abilities. The guy crushed the brown ball the stranger gave him in a second. After that, the stranger took our hero to his store. The store felt magical energy, and the salesman took out a wooden box with a piece of stone in it. This item was what our hero needed. Lu Xu asked what was the price of this item. The seller began to entice our hero, telling him how important learning was. This stone could save a lot of time. Thanks to this stone, new opportunities opened up in front of the guy. They began to discuss the price of the stone. Our hero offered to pay an increasing amount. The seller lost his mind. Sixteen years ago, an unusual story happened. In the middle of the night city on the roof of a building, a lonely girl stood and sang a lullaby song. Her face bowed near a wooden box. She was stroking the box affectionately. As she sang the lullaby song, teardrops fell on the lid of the box. Suddenly, the sound of shattering glass and the order to grab the girl was abruptly heard. The girl spread her arms and jumped into the abyss. A golden sword glowed beside her. Then a violent explosion sounded and a cloud of smoke and fire rose into the air. The girl was surrounded by people in special uniforms. They grabbed her. They ordered this girl to answer who she was and where was the box she was holding going. The girl said that they wouldn't get any information from her and took the sword in her hands. Purple energy pierced through her body. The next moment the girl was lying dead on the pavement and strangers surrounded her, never recognizing who the stranger was. It was raining heavily. These people remained standing in the street. They had no way of knowing who the girl was. A wooden box was brought and placed near the steps of one of the houses. Inside the box was a newborn baby. He had a locket around his neck and a letter in the box. A woman with an umbrella ran out of the house and saw the box with the infant. Attached to the infant was a note with his name written on it. The boy's name was Lu Xu. The woman carefully took the box with the infant and took him to her house. A few years later, a little girl was brought to the house. It was terribly cold and the child was very cold. She too was taken into the house because it was very cold outside and the girl was crying because she was very cold. So a boy named Lu Xu and a girl named Xiao Yu met in the orphanage. The girl behaved very wildly and scared everyone away with her behavior, but our hero found the keys to her heart. She loved fish and he began to call her my little fish. From that moment, they became a family and the guy always took care of the little girl. He got food for them and always protected her from all the evil people. The little girl wanted to be adopted and our hero was not wanted to be taken into the family because he was old enough. The principal said that together they would not be taken into the family. The guy decided to run away from the orphanage so that his little fish could get into a good family. And he stood in the street, he was cold and he wanted to eat. He wrapped himself in old rags trying to keep warm. A woman called him to come in to see her. She wanted to feed him because he looked very miserable. Lu Xu was given a bowl of hot soup, which seemed the most delicious after his hunger. The woman promised to introduce the boy to someone who could help him and take him to her house for training. Early in the morning, Lu Xu pushed his cart to the bazaar to sell eggs. He labored very hard and worked very hard. One day while working in the bazaar, he saw a little girl come to him. She had escaped from the orphanage and wanted to live in the same family with our hero. But Lu Xu took the little girl back to the orphanage because he could not feed her. He made a promise to himself that he would definitely take the girl back. He put all the money he earned into a wooden box. And at night when he slept, a thousand stars surrounded his bed and guarded him. Thus through work and survival, a year passed. When our hero had saved enough money, he went to the orphanage to pick up little fish. But upon arriving at the orphanage, he was shocked to find out that the girl was not there. He ran to look for her. Lu Xu didn't know where to run to and was crying. Suddenly he heard someone's voice. Upstairs there was a little girl standing on a branch. They made a vow that they would never let each other go again and they would live together and they would have a better future. At the black market, our hero bought a magical vessel from one of the merchants. It could draw in the energy and souls of people. Sitting on the roof of a building, he wanted to try out his new magical weapon. He lurked and saw his target approaching. From the roof of the building, he aimed the magical vessel at his opponent. A purple light streaked towards him, but nothing came out of this experiment. The magic vessel did not draw the man into itself. They decided to go look for an inn to stay for the night. The next day, Lu Xu and his sister went to have a very delicious soup for breakfast. There they came to the bus stop to go to the lake. Our hero noticed a bag from one of the passers-by and remembered that it was the same market vendor who sold him the magic vessel. 
The boy called the man by name. He wanted to definitely take revenge on him for selling the fake vessel. At the stop of this bus came a group of guys with whom our hero was traveling on the train. He had a conflict with them on the train. All these people together with our hero started boarding the bus. The bus was traveling through a picturesque area. Here began a nine-day tourist tour. They arrived at the shore of the lake where they were to set up a tent camp and stay overnight. Lu Xu and her little sister cooked a delicious dinner, and the little girl said she felt the happiest in the world. As they were eating dinner, a group of people on motorcycles whizzed by not far from them. Lu Xu moved away from their camp. He noticed that the people on motorcycles had pulled up to their tents. When it got dark, our hero went to scout this camp. He overheard a conversation that these people were going to go to the mountain at night on a motorcycle. There was something hidden on it. Our hero recognized the voice of one of these men. The legend said that on this mountain, a princess broke a mirror into two parts. And thanks to this, a mountain of the sun and a mountain of the moon appeared. The boy wondered what could be hidden on this mountain. Our hero decided to steal a motorcycle so that those people couldn't leave on it and they would have to walk. Lu Xu climbed up the mountain of the sun and moon. The first thing he did was to look around. He closed his eyes and felt the energy that was around. The magic waves were somewhere around. He swung his magic spear and struck the rocks. As the rocks flew apart, he noticed that there was some dark tunnel next to him. He turned on the flashlight on his phone and went down this tunnel in the mountain. Suddenly and sharply from the darkness, spears flew at our hero. Traps were set everywhere. In one of the underground rooms on a shelf stood half a mirror. The guy carefully walked over and took a piece of this mirror and began to examine it. He thought that the mirror might need to be filled with energy as well. But suddenly, the rays of the mirror blinded his eyes. He squeezed his eyes shut and fell to the floor. Lu Xu remembered the head-turning vessel, and now he saw the blinding mirror. While our hero was in the tunnel, the strangers came to the mountain and noticed on the grass their motorcycle, which had been stolen from them. They were about to burn the one in the cave, but our hero said he would come out himself. He took his find out of the tunnel and threw them half of the mirror he had found. When those men took the mirror, the flames of the flames burned them, and Lu Xu had time to escape. These people wanted to get on a motorcycle and chase the guy, but he tricked them. The men looked at their compass. It was showing high energy waves nearby. There were people from the celestial community nearby. They decided to run away before the people from the celestial community found them. A military vehicle drove up to them, and the people in it showed a picture of the man they were chasing. They asked if they had seen him. This picture was a picture of our hero running and carrying a motorcycle in his hands. The men lied and said they had not seen anyone and did not know the man in the picture. The uniformed men grabbed one man from this gang and detained him. The fireman had to run away from the people from the heavenly community, but he was still captured. Lu Xu went back to the camp late at night. He showed the little girl Xiao Yu what he had managed to find on the mountain. The people from the heavenly community were trying to find the unknown person who had carried away the motorcycle. They got into their car and drove off to the mountain following the trail. Our hero watched what was happening and thought that perhaps a new ruin had opened up somewhere. Lu Xu told his speculation to his little sister and she asked if he wanted to go there. Xiao Yu's little girl said she would also go with him. She didn't want to be alone. Lu Xu ate the changing fruit and treated his squirrel with the fruit. In an instant, the squirrel gained improved strength and glowed with a bright light. It looked like Lu Xiao Yu had finished her evolution and gained a superpower, but they didn't know which one yet. The sun was rising over the mountains. They decided to go and meet the beautiful sunrise in the mountains. They saw the sunrise and admired this picture. Our hero Lu Xu, the little girl Xiao Yu, and the squirrel. The boy felt drops gathering inside him which become the streams of a river. They become rivers that aspire into the glacier. He realized that he had reached a new level of enlightenment. What awaited him next, he did not know for Old Man Lee had not told him about it. The bus was en route to the lake, but suddenly all the cars hit a traffic jam on the road and the traffic was stopped. They went to the road to find out the reason and saw that the celestial community had blocked the road. The area was cordoned off, and they said that there was a special military operation going on and no passage was allowed. Night came, but all the cars were still stuck in a traffic jam on the road. The people on the bus began to lose patience. They were angry that they had paid money for the tour and were locked in uncertain circumstances. They were angry and demanded their money back for the tour. Lu Xu and Xiao Yu left the bus and decided to travel alone. They had their own plans. The guy pondered that if a new ruin opened up, he should definitely go into it. But he was young and didn't quite understand the existence of different magical organizations that shared influence among themselves. The camp was guarded by the military. Our heroes showed their identity cards and they were let through. 
But the girl had not yet joined the community, and the military blocked the way, not allowing her to pass. Our hero's friend showed his special card to the military, and thanks to him, Xiao Yu was let through. Together, they got into the jeep and continued their journey. They arrived by nightfall. They were put into a special tent with other disciples who were about to enter the ruins. Among the groups, they discussed the value of the rank of the disciples and the number of achievements in battles and quests. At dinner, Xiao Yu asked our hero to take her to the ruins with him because she was stronger than many disciples. The other Daoyang-class disciples arrived at the ruins. Two disciples especially stood out with their strength, beauty, and confidence against the rest. In the evening at dinner, our hero and his classmate were discussing a new incident in the world. His friend was from a powerful clan. He was telling the latest news. The friend told our hero that many clans no longer want to accept the limited duration of human life. They aim for eternal youth. Night has fallen in the camp. Towers and guards were posted around the perimeter of the camp. Bright searchlights illuminated the campgrounds. In the morning at dawn, they decided to take a walk along the lake. The water in the lake glistened and sparkled like diamonds. On the lake, they saw a man illuminated with a golden glow. He had an incredibly powerful energy. Our heroes decided to run away from him before he noticed them. But the man turned around and said that no one had given them permission to leave. The man said he had heard of the exploits and bravery of the guy in the ruins and offered Lu Xu to be his apprentice. Our hero refused. He said he had no such plans now. The master was sympathetic to his choice. But in fact, the master did not want to take Lu Xu as his disciple, but a little girl, Xiao Yu. He was very upset and angry when she refused him. This master was greatly interested in the little girl because she had genius potential and great strength. She was the smallest of the awakened ones. For the highest rank of awakening, intelligence was a defining attribute. The master's greatest hope was to find a teenager who could transcend the highest level. The master persuaded Xiao Yu to become his disciple, promising to give her a magic weapon, but the girl stubbornly said no. Suddenly all the heroes felt that the air became very cold and a piercing wind blew. All the students were lined up and briefed before entering the ruins where danger awaited them at every turn. They all gathered together, led by our hero, and set off into the ruins. Lu Xu was the first to go. They found themselves in a dark forest. These ruins were more difficult than the previous ones. Even the mosquitoes here had a particularly strong energy. The trials here were supposed to be more difficult. The gathered group was thinking of a trekking plan and choosing a leader whom they would all follow. Our hero climbed high into a tree to look around and see where they should go next. His goal of staying in the ruins was to make as much money as possible, just like he had last time. Suddenly, a red long snake with sharp teeth and burning eyes jumped at the guy. Lu Xu caught this snake and noticed that it had a special super speed. Meeting the snake showed him that the dangers here were more difficult than meeting skeletons. At the top of the tree, he noticed something unknown approaching. Streams of yellow magical energy were rushing inside the valley ahead. From on high, the boy surveyed the ruins. They were huge in size. The strongest aura was in the center. Then he checked his star chart, which had six stars burning, and thought of a plan through which he could light the seventh star. As he looked around these ruins, he noticed that there were very few birds in the forest and almost no insects. This forest was kind of strange. They agreed that they would move along the water sources. Perhaps they would meet other people. As they were walking through the forest, our hero of the years noticed someone's skeleton under the roots of the trees. He called to the rest of the group to come over and take a look at his find. Lu Xu decided to stay near this tree while the other members of the group continued on their way through the forest. He separated the branches entangled in the animal bones, brought these branches and made a fire, thinking about staying where he was for now. He thought of his classmates who had gone deeper into the forest. He had done what he could and warned them of the danger waiting there. On the fire, he cooked himself a delicious dinner. This was his first experience of surviving in the forest. He thought about his little sister, Xiao Yu. Was she hungry, and had she found a place to sleep? He shifted his thoughts to his little sister and saw her in the form of a demon chasing small forest animals. Animals came to the clearing where our hero was stationed. Boar, lynx, bear, spiders. It looked like a safe place to spend the night. Once deep into the forest, the group of classmates found themselves in an enchanted forest. The view was as if they were in the stars. Suddenly, one of the boys was seized by a branch and entangled his arms and legs like a snake. The tree roots came to life and attacked the group of students. They tried to fight, but the tree roots entangled their weapons, and the poisonous thorns at the ends of the branches inflicted deadly wounds. They tried to retreat, but the trees blocked their way. The disciples learned that there were other people in the forest. They needed to break through and find them. 
They needed to find an open area and escape from the trees. That way they could save themselves. Another group of people said that in an open area, they met a herd of wild animals that attacked them. They had to look for another place. The animals stayed the night next to Lu Xu in the open area. The tiger asked to help him and to pull out a sore tooth. A group of students with the head teacher ran up to our hero in the clearing. Everyone was suspicious of the guy's actions. They did not understand how he manages to be near all these animals without harm to life. Everyone in the group was afraid that during the night, the animals would attack them and eat them. But the guy said that everyone would be alive. When everyone woke up in the morning, they found that our hero had left the camp. He had decided to go it alone. He was bold and brave. As they were brushing their teeth, they were abruptly attacked by a group of animals. They threw down their brushes and bottles and lined up in a row. Then they saw that a little girl was sitting on the head of a huge boar. They didn't understand how she managed to fix this monster. This little girl was looking for her brother. She ordered the boar to move on and they set off to continue their search. The girl's superpower was that she could read the minds of animals and control their behavior. Lu Xu, meanwhile, continued his journey into the depths of the center of the ruins. He noticed that the closer he got, the greater the power of the beasts became. As he walked, he came across a group of his students who met him with weapons because they thought he was a wild beast. People jumped on our hero with suspicion because they did not understand how he could stay alive and uninjured if he fought alone. They acted wary because they had negative experiences in past ruins, confronting other clans and spies among them. A group of people in suits and dark glasses floated down the lake on a magical raft. Blue energy enveloped their bodies. One of the people in charge ordered everyone to be careful. They were about to enter the border of the ruins. They were people from opposite clans. They wanted to enter the ruins without permission by illegal means, but they were stopped by a man in a black cloak with a big, beautiful sword. It was a member of the other class. He said that anyone who crossed the border illegally would die. The people in tracksuits and black glasses were frightened. They didn't expect to meet this man here. With his huge sword, the man in the black cloak chopped the men in tracksuits into pieces. The survivor with long white hair and a cap adopted a defensive posture. He was ready to defend himself. But suddenly the man with the sword raised his sword and a golden thread hung in the air. Flames appeared around him and he walked courageously to deliver a fatal blow to his enemies. The costumed men screamed, fell and tried to save their lives by running away from the man with the sword. The last thing they saw before their eyes were rivers of blood filling the air and ground. The cloaked hero glowered. His gaze was turned upwards. He was purposefully destroying the surviving enemies. He was mercilessly inflicting the death penalty on his remaining enemies, one by one. Everything around him was illuminated with stars, as if it were in outer space. Unusual birds glowing with blue light flew in that space to an unknown destination. Teacher Lee assumed that if our hero knew who he was, he would follow him today. He wanted to lure Lu Xu into the forest, kill him there, and hide the traces of the crime. He didn't have time to think about his plan because suddenly our hero jumped down from a tree with great speed on him. Lu Xu knew the secrets of this man and attacked first, gathering all his strength into a fist. From the surprise, Teacher Lee lost his balance and fell to the ground, his eyes filled with fear. Our hero provoked him, saying that if the teacher didn't use his trump card, then he would have to kill him. He grabbed his spear and struck his opponent, and after laughing, he threw tofu pudding on his head. His opponent's strength turned out to be quite weak and Lu Xu was very surprised by this. He barely got up on his feet and tried to run away from our hero, thus finding his salvation. But he did not have time to escape because our hero took out magic spears, which were all glowing with blue energy, and launched them at his opponent. The spears flew swiftly and pierced into the man's body. Blood spurted out from his mouth. Before he died, this teacher thought to himself, how did our hero know who he was and see through him? But he died without knowing the secret. Our hero felt no regret in killing this man because this man deserved to die. After this fight, the guy examined the body of his slain opponent and thought that he should go back to the camp to protect the other students. At the camp, the students made a fire and sat around it to warm themselves. It was already nightfall and the expedition members began to worry. Where had Teacher Lee disappeared to? The other two teachers left the students in the camp by the fire and went into the forest to try to find the missing teacher. They walked into the blue forest, which was all glowing with cosmic blue light and began calling loudly for Teacher Lee. But the tree roots that had come alive attacked them and entangled their bodies, heads, and swords. The tree roots tightly wrapped around the arms and legs of these people. They were like tenacious ropes that twisted their bodies like ropes. 
But the tree roots did not attack our hero, because, as in the ruins, the attack depended on the spiritual energy of the creature and its fluctuations. But he decided to pretend to be like other people and fight these tree roots too, and then try to escape into the forest and find the treasure. He rushed to attack the tree roots and saved all the students and teachers by chopping and breaking all the branches. Making their way deep into the forest, the group failed to find Teacher Lee, and it was decided not to put the students in danger, and all returned to the camp. It was instructed that it was now forbidden to travel alone in the camp. One must always take a couple with them, even when going to the restroom. This was done for safety. Our hero managed to sneak out of the camp and went on a treasure hunt. He sat down to look at his star chart. This was his chance to single-handedly get a new star fruit and break through the second layer of the nebula to discover a new star and become more advanced. He bought a large amount of star fruit, and he immediately felt a blue glow emerging from his chest and a planet spinning in his galaxy. Then he looked to the side and saw a cloth bag, and it looked familiar to him. This cloth was designed to hide the fluctuations of spiritual energy. Under this cloth was hiding the market vendor who sold our hero the magic vessel. Our hero, sitting in a tree, laughed and mocked this man. By trickery, he forced the ancient relics to be handed over and left the merchant alive. The power of this compass was that it showed the direction of the most powerful spiritual energy within a radius of five meters. Thanks to the power of this compass, one could easily find the direction to the ruins instead of searching for them. Our hero followed deep into the forest while his thoughts were occupied with his little sister and his heart was warmed by the hope that she remembered. It was late in the night. The moon was shining in the sky. It was clear between the rocks, through the rocks. Following the compass indication, Lu Xu walked deep into the forest. He came to a clearing with a large fluctuation of energy and realized that a battle had recently occurred. Not far from this place, he sensed a very powerful aura. It was the priest they had met together with little sister Xiao Yu at the lake. Our hero wanted to ask this old man who he had a battle with, that everything around him had turned into ruins and he himself was injured and weak. The old man said that a stranger had gotten underground, but the entrance to the ruins is complicated and not everyone can enter. The old man noticed this stranger and they had a fight. The old man asked the boy to stay on guard until the enemy returned so that he could have time to heal and get his meridians in order. When they found a place to rest and recover, the enemy attacked them with the force of the sand tide. A sand hurricane swirled around them. Our hero had to cover his eyes with his hand to keep the sand from getting into them. Visibility was very poor. The old man cast spells and folded his hands near his face in a special gesture. He launched golden stars at their enemy, but those sharp stars could destroy the protective fields. Guy noticed that the old man looked weak. His breathing was intermittent. Our hero realized that he had to fight by himself because the old man had no strength. He drew his spears and ordered the enemy to surrender. But the old man sent his golden swords to find the enemy and ordered the lad to stay where he was and not to chase him. But our hero was young and brave. He did not listen to the old man's words and went in search of the enemy. Our hero moved very quickly through the forest, but then he noticed that the energy fluctuations stopped. Next, he was met by a sand tornado. Our hero prepared for battle, he was not going to retreat. He gathered all his punching power into his fist and struck at this sandpipe. Pieces of rocks flew at him, but our hero wasn't going to back down so easily. He kept on striking. He saw a man made of sand standing behind the sand tunnel. He looked like a sand mummy. The sand man squinted his eyes angrily and gritted his teeth. He crossed his arms over his chest and wanted to strike the guy. The sand man's target was the old master. For his head, he was promised a couple of ancient artifacts. But our hero thwarted the Sandman's plans. If the old master could recover his strength in time, the Sandman's journey was done in vain. The guy released his magic sword from his chest and pointed the blade at the Sandman again. The Sandman saw the flying sword technique and tried to repel this attack. A wound appeared on the Sandman's cheek. His armor appeared to be pierced. He didn't realize what was happening. The Sandman raised his hand and directed a stream of sand to hold back the guy's sword. Our hero realized that defeating this enemy wouldn't be that easy because he had a lot of tricks stashed away in reserve. The Sandman raised his hands. Little balls of sand appeared in the air. He ran away and our hero chased after him. Suddenly, rocks flew at Lu Xu. They hit him in the head, in the arms, in the legs. He tried to cover himself from these blows, but he stubbornly continued to chase after the Sandman despite the pain and abrasions from the rocks hitting him. He did not want to let him out of his sight. The sand was getting denser. It was harder to breathe. The guy's star power wasn't enough to protect him, but he kept fighting. Our hero pursued the Sandman and ordered him to stop before it was too late. The Sandman didn't understand why his pursuer was acting so strangely. 
Could he be insane or just have his head ripped off? Suddenly, our hero felt new stars inside him. It was a very unusual feeling. It turned out that to curb the emotions of the soul, you need to understand them and use them as a key. A purple ray appeared from his body from the very chest, and from it shot an arrow straight at the Sandman. But his dagger was trapped in the white sand. The arrow traveled through the air and hit the Sandman's shoulder. It punched a hole in him. The Sandman was surprised. Where did our hero get so much anger and tenacity to chase him? The boy wanted to chase the Sandman and catch him. But suddenly the Sandman folded his arms like a diver and dived into the ground. Lu Xu continued to throw his spears and swords into the ground. He floated in the air and continued to strike. All around, everything shone with a blue luster. These explosions were like shards of ice flying around. The guy landed on the ground and looked around. There were broken trees on the ground and everywhere were deep craters in the ground from his blasts. He closed his eyes and tried to feel the energy fluctuations, but he couldn't feel any waves of energy nearby. Looking at the compass, he thought that the Sandman seemed to have escaped because he wasn't anywhere nearby. He couldn't find anything suspicious. Our hero Xiao Yu's little sister Xiao Yu was standing in the forest together with a pig and another guy. They heard an explosion going off somewhere in the forest. Suddenly, she noticed something that looked like electrical energy that was going underground and rushed over to attack. She looked like a small demon. One would never tell that she was only nine years old. With the force of her strike, she blasted the entire earth. A moment later, the girl was standing in the middle of a shallow crater in the ground. She said that she noticed that some man was trying to pass under the ground, and she killed him. The girl had the ability to collect the souls of the dead, and this time she caught the soul of a sand man who had run away from her brother. She asked the big cat to pull the dead man out of the pit. This man turned out to be a spy. They found him in the pit with no signs of life. The little girl killed him. Meanwhile, our hero returned to the old master to help him get back on his feet after the fight with the spy. The master was surprised that the guy was intact, alive and well after the fight with the Sandman. The master said that the guy had great talent because no one had ever been able to jump so high from one rank to another before. He wanted to find a suitable successor, and our guy was the best candidate. The master thought that the guy was not only talented, but also cunning. He wanted to go with him the next day to the center of the ruins, and the master needed time to recover. Our hero's little sister continued her journey on the boars and other animals. Xiao Yu walked over. I saw huge craters in the ground. She realized that the battle was very strong. She was afraid that her brother was injured and ordered the pig to run faster to find him. Lu Xu carried the master on his back and they headed towards the center of the ruins. As they walked through the forest, our hero counted how many points he earned from the beasts and from his classmates. It should have been enough to light the first star on the third layer of the nebula. The boy carried the wizard on his back and continued on his way. He came to a stream and felt a powerful aura emanating from it. There was a blue flower growing in the middle of the stream. It seemed to have all the spiritual energy concentrated in it. A huge snake with red eyes jumped out of the stream to bite Lu Shu, but he struck it with his magic sword. Near the creek, the boy met his little squirrel. He entered the lake to take this flower with a powerful aura. He managed to catch one petal that fell from this flower in his hand. He gave one of the altering fruits to the old master so that he could recover his strength. As the old man swallowed the fruit, he immediately felt his strength begin to recover, and a fire burned within him. Magic began to burst out of the old man's belly, and the entire forest changed, as if that strong aura had sucked the entire forest dry. The old man again offered the boy to become his apprentice, but our hero refused for the second time. Suddenly he heard someone's loud voice. Someone was calling his name. He looked up. On the mountain sat his little sister and called his name. The boy saw that on his little sister Xiao Yu's stick hanging, tied up, was his classmate. The little girl tied him to her stick to find her brother faster. Lu Xu asked the little sister to untie his classmate from that stick. This fellow was the grandson of an honorable master who was very capricious. He was used to living in wealth and dignity. It was very frustrating for him to be tied to the stick. The master was disappointed in his grandson. He considered him a mediocrity. But the grandson deceived his grandfather and said that he had killed the white master himself. He bragged and deceived in order to appropriate Xiao Yu's glory for himself. But our hero realized that the classmate was only taking credit for his little sister. And the master praised Lu Xu because he realized that the boy was able to inflict mortal wounds on this white man. The master gathered all his strength and said that he was going in search of the matrix eye. He folded his arms and flew shrilly into the sky like a bird. Our heroes stood there with their mouths open. They couldn't believe that the master could fly. Then Lu Xu and Xiao Yu returned to the camp, 
where the rest of the students and teachers were waiting for them. Everyone was amazed that the little girl had not just killed different animals, but was able to repair them and control them. The girl was able to control the animals, bending them to her will. She was riding on top of a huge boar. The little girl asked her brother if they could now go back and go home. Just then the heavenly king flew in and said that our hero could go home. He will report the merit in person. The whole camp did not understand what was so special that our hero had done, and why would the heavenly king report his merits personally? The boy took his little sister by the hand and they headed home. It felt as if only the two of them existed in this world. At home, the little girl told her brother that she had managed to capture that white man's soul and also took his magic ring. Lu Xu took that magic ring in his hands. They found a flash drive with some information on it, and using someone else's ID card, they decided to go to an internet cafe and check out that flash drive. They went inside and chose a computer in the hall, at which they made themselves comfortable together and began to study the information. The writing on the screen said it was a Dark Kingdom website. The download was in progress. They began to study the information that was on the dark net, all the latest news from the spy organization. The information on this site was not meant for normal people. This dark realm existed for the awakened and practitioners. On the website, they found information about how the organization gave the task to destroy the master and put up advertisements. They also noticed a human trafficking section on the site. When they returned to the hotel room late at night, the girl asked what was the dark kingdom they had read about. Is this organization doing something bad? The brother replied that it was up to them to find out. In the morning, they were very hungry and ordered a large amount of delicious food for breakfast. The girl, the little squirrel, and Lu Shu ate to their fill. They boarded the airplane and went on their way. The little girl kept eating and drinking all the way. She couldn't get enough. It was her first flight and she was thrilled to see the earth from above. She asked her brother when they would learn to fly. He answered her that it would be very soon. At the airport, they were sad because all the children were greeted by their parents. They were orphans. No one met them. The girl asked why parents abandoned their children. Their cab pulled up to the house where they lived. They were met on the street by an old man they knew. He said he had been waiting for them and invited them to come over for tomato noodle soup for dinner. The next day, sitting at the table, the master asked the children what they planned to do in the future. They said they hadn't thought that far ahead, but the master replied that the world wouldn't be this peaceful forever. They need to think about the future now. The old man said that they believe they can change this world, protect humanity, and bring peace. Their organization is trying to prevent events from happening, disguise themselves, and keep everything secret. The old man said that from this day forward, the children should improve their skills, keep up the good work, and work even harder. The children responded in agreement. He told them about other organizations that were developing a method of systematic awakening and were also training warriors who would change the future. The master said that the time had come and brother and sister should take care of each other. He gave the keys to the house and said that the house was now theirs. He left the house flying high into the sky, leaving a blue beam of light behind him. This master could fly too. Our heroes were shocked by the master's ability and his high rank. When Lu Xu was home alone in his room, he took out a blue stone from a flower he found in the ruins and decided to test it. After eating it, or rather swallowing it because the stone was very hard, he felt a transformation in his body. He screamed loudly, his face covered with drops of sweat. Then he fell to the floor unconscious. Our hero was transported to some other space. Floating in the air, he found himself frozen, as if in a water element. Some beautiful woman like a water spirit embraced him with her arms and ordered him to sleep. She pulled him deeper and deeper into the depths, cuddling him and humming a lullaby to him. She sang a song about him being but a drop of water and the sea being his home, and plunged him into the depths. Our hero was agonizing unconscious in bed. His little sister and the squirrel tried to save him and give him CPR. Submerged deep in the water, Lu Xu felt his little sister Xiao Yu calling for him. He gathered his strength into a fist and shouted that no, he was not a drop of water. Strength awakened in him and he tried to break out of the water abyss to the surface. But the water hands held him and did not want to let him go from the depths. The water demon smiled slyly, unwilling to part with our hero. Lu Xu continued to struggle. He wanted, by all means, to get out of this water and return to his little sister. A bright flash of light appeared above the surface of the water. The boy found himself on the surface. The bright stars of his galaxy shone above him. The little girl and the squirrel lay next to the guy and waited for him to come to his senses. Xiao Yu was crying and begging for him to wake up. Suddenly, our hero opened his eyes and smiled at her. He had returned to this world and said hello. The girl hugged her brother. She couldn't let go of him and kept crying. She was very scared. 
He offered to show her a magic trick. With one movement of his hand, he made a water sphere in the air. Our hero noticed that his hair had turned blue from being in the water world for so long. He bought some paint at the store and dyed his hair black, but they still remain blue. The power of water is quite calm. The great advantage of this power was to manifest it when fighting by the water. The principal asked all the students to return to school. He had important announcements for them. The principal called our hero to the stage to congratulate him and give him an award. The whole school was very surprised because he was an orphan and a loser. He was poor. No one expected that this ceremony would be arranged for his award. The principal made a speech from the stage, saying that the kid showed his high skills in ruins. All classmates were terribly jealous of our hero because they themselves were not distinguished by any merits. Back home, our hero took the dragon artifact and said that now it was time to do good. He flew to the roof of the house and watched the houses and neighbors. He needed to strengthen his aura. He noticed how the place began to change under his power. The aura seemed to be even stronger than the ruins. Lu Shu received a call from the headmaster saying that he needed to take a train to the capital to make a report. The train with the students and our hero rushed swiftly to the capital, passing over a bridge among high mountains and forests. And a group of masked men with their faces covered watched the passing train. They wanted to capture the person who was traveling on that train. The order was given to destroy the twelfth car and capture all the survivors. The enemies attacked and the train was trapped. Huge waves and spray carried along the train. The students in the train car were badly frightened. They were taken by surprise. The masked men rose above the water and jumped onto the train, breaking through the roof in it. Water began to fill the carriage space. The students stood waist deep in the water. The masked man created a water ball of energy in his hands and launched it at the train. The force of the water attacked the rail car. Shards seemingly on an island to me flew into the windows and walls of the carriage, ramming and destroying it. The train was destroyed. The students gathered in a group and took sticks. The enemy was very strong. Everyone was scared, but was going to give battle. One hero of ours was under the protection of water and was as if he were in a blue water bubble. He raised his hand above his head and a water ball appeared in his hand. This ball had tremendous destructive power. It turned into an extremely powerful stream of water energy that was directed at the opponents. This powerful force was inexplicable. Lu Shu was able to push back the stream of water moving at them. He felt that someone was helping him, but he couldn't figure out who it was. He didn't notice the figure of a girl behind him who was strengthening our hero's power by raising her hand upwards. The train did not stay on the bridge and the car fell into the river. The part of the train with the torn off car continued on the bridge. Some students tried to escape. Suddenly, a man in a black cloak with a very powerful force blocked the way of the gang of criminals. Seeing Netton, that was the name of the man in the cloak, the masked gang prepared to flee. Master Neaton was of high rank, and all the masked criminals were frightened and fled away. He came to take revenge on the gang. Netton, who had transformed into a golden beam, swiftly attacked the opponents without giving them a chance to escape. Those students stood and watched the awakened King Netton with admiration. If not for him, they would have been dead by now. Then turning into a great golden flash, he flew away, leaving the students to wait for help. Our hero behaved rather strangely. When he dove deep under the water, he got an unusual feeling. Then he returned home. In the water, he found a glowing golden ball, which he took in his hand. He tried to combine this power with the power of his blue dragon and see what would happen next. As our hero rode on the train with the rest of the students, he wondered, is Celestial King Netton really using the students as bait for his own purposes? When all the students arrived at their destination, a man in uniform asked to deposit all the phones. The man said that all the items would be returned to the students after they finished going through the assignment. This assignment was to survive on their own in the capital city for 15 days. All the students stood there not understanding what they should do next, what actions they should take. Guy realized that the Divine Network wanted to test their teamwork and survival skills as well as their knowledge. Sitting in front of a huge control center, a man in black clothes was watching the actions of our students in the capital. On the monitor was a surveillance video that showed all of the students' movements. Our hero called his classmate, and he came to pick him up in a car. They traveled further into the city. They went to have fun at different establishments, and then they ended up at a boxing club, thinking that they would have a great time. But the heavenly King Netton came to the club and ordered our hero to go back to testing and take his rich friend with him. He forbade the rich friend to use his connections. They had to try not to starve to death. After which, Celestial King Netton swiftly flew away in an unknown direction. Our hero couldn't believe that a person of such a high rank had come to him personally to send him on the task and had turned his attention to him. He told his friend the rules of the test 
and said that he was very lucky because only geniuses were admitted to this assignment. Therefore, this was a chance for him. They came to the bus stop and sat down waiting for the bus. The rich boy didn't know how he could survive on the street and earn money without his relatives and social status. Each of the students tried to survive somehow. Some of them played instruments in the establishments. A strong girl, carrying iron prostheses on her back, came to work part-time at a construction site. Our hero came up with a plan to smash rocks over her head. Many people came to see this performance. After earning money, they came to have dinner at a cafe. After ordering a lot of delicious food, they wanted to replenish their strength. They drank a bottle of beer each and talked about their future plans. Lu Xu dreamed of living with his little sister Xiao Yu and growing a vegetable garden. The friend was very much surprised that the guy didn't have any ambitious plans about joining the heavenly organization. Late at night, lying on the floor, the friends felt homesick. A group of five people from the Divine Network had come to complicate our hero's ordeal. They wanted to sneak into the building where the boy and his classmate were sleeping. Lu Xu ran up to his friend to wake him up and warn him of the danger coming at them. A group of practitioners were preparing to attack our hero and his friend. Their head was handing out a mission to everyone. Our hero sprinted with all his might and lunged at his opponent, striking him in the chest. The practitioner from the Celestial Organization flew backwards from the blow of our hero and folded in half. Our hero realized that the practitioner's mission was to kill and decided not to hold back his strength. Lu Xu was invincible. His strength was much greater than his opponent's. He attacked them one by one. It hit one of the opponents in the forehead. The opponent cried out in pain and fell backwards with his head. Lu Xu chased after him and delivered another crushing blow. No one understood how four high-ranked people couldn't win a battle against a single disciple. Battered and weakened, the attackers sat on the floor with our hero standing over them. They were completely defeated. The guy laughed at them and, in addition to all the humiliation, took their money. These people were greatly annoyed by our hero's behavior and said that next time they would bring 20 more people to get even. In response, Lu Xu decided to teach these ungrateful people a lesson and stripped them down to their underwear, making fun of them. As they left through the underground parking lot, the friends reasoned, how were these people able to track down and chase after them? They folded up their sleeping bags and decided to climb the steps to the roof to see what was going on. On the roof, they saw the Divine King standing alone. He demanded the return of the money taken from the masters, and our hero obediently gave it to the king. The king returned and gave the money to his disciples. They apologized for failing the task. The king said that he had underestimated the lad, and next time he would send more men on the task. The masters were afraid that the divine king might punish them for failing the task. But if the master tried hard, the king was understanding. Everyone knew that if they died, if something happened to them, the divine king would definitely avenge them. The heavenly king returned to the observation post and told his partner about everything that had happened. They discussed that the guy was an unusual student and required careful observation. Twenty dark cars blocked the path of our hero and his friend. A couple people and more drivers got out of each car, totaling about 90 people. Our hero and his friend found themselves face to face with them. Lu Xu, along with his friend, felt the excitement of so many opponents. Their opponents were standing in a wall and were about to beat up the two young guys. The angry crowd of masters ran after Lu Xu's friend. The two friends turned around and tried to escape from the crowd chasing them. But our hero's friend was a fat man, and he couldn't run that fast. Our hero was much more athletic and faster, and the angry Topa couldn't catch up with him. Lu Xu skidded to the roof of the building, pushed off with his feet, and hung in the air. Next, he jumped over the fence and continued running, wondering how he could escape. He climbed onto the roof and thought if he moved on the roofs, it would be harder for the pursuers to track him. The group that was chasing our hero decided to split up and go to intercept him. Our hero grabbed his classmate in his arms and saved him from the crowd that was chasing them. They ran up to the police station to ask for protection. They said they were being chased by a mob of killers. But the policemen looked around and saw no pursuers. Everyone had disappeared. When our heroes saw that the pursuers had hidden, they told the policemen they were joking, thanked him for his help, and left the station. But just as they stepped outside, the burning eyes of a hundred people appeared from behind the tree trunks. Lu Xu and his friend ran to the policeman again to ask for protection. But the policeman was angered by their jokes and demanded to see their documents. Our heroes had no documents. They had to run away from the policeman who was now also chasing them. After breaking away enough from the crowd and the policeman's pursuit, Lu Xu asked his friend if he knew where the headquarters of the Divine Network was. The friend said that finding an apartment wasn't a problem, but he didn't want to cross the path of such a large organization. Perhaps in ten days they will have already forgotten, and no one will be looking for them. 
For six nights, our heroes ran away from their pursuers. They were already exhausted and without strength. Behind the monitor screens, two people watched a group of people chasing our heroes. It was a real bullying. They were wondering how long the guy would last at this pace and what to come up with in response, how to reveal all his trump cards. At the stadium, Lu Xu stole a music speaker and set dynamite on fire. At the sound of the music, our hero's pursuers came running. But they ran into a crowd of women from whom the speaker had been stolen. The women fought with their claws and breathed fire, demanding the return of their speaker. They thought these men had stolen it. The people behind the monitors watching Lu Xu's plans and actions were amazed at his ingenuity and ability to get out of the most difficult situations. These people had a plan to use the guy's unfathomable strength to fight foreign troops and send him abroad. To do so, they kept a close eye on his capabilities. But Lu Xu had his own plan for life. He wanted to build houses on the mountain, rent a vegetable garden, and live with his little sister. Going abroad alone was something he would hardly agree to do. He was concerned about the future of the little girl who stayed home and waited for him. The tenth day of survival in the capital came. Our hero and his friend were walking down the street. Suddenly, an unfamiliar black car stopped in front of them. A man looked out of it and said that our heroes need to go with him to pass one test. Our guy flashed his eyes and was ready to attack the man, but he asked him not to touch him and let him go. They got into the car in the back seat and the strange man drove them to the test. They were dropped off in a dark alley and left alone. Looking around, they immediately noticed two groups of fighters on either side of the car. The guy got terribly angry, clenched his fist tightly, and it began to glow with blue star energy. This energy was so strong that he was able to break through the bulletproof window of the car that brought them to this alley. A trap. But then something unexpected happened. Instead of attacking our heroes, this group of people greeted them and told them that they had done the mission successfully. The group that had chased our heroes for several days and chased them all over the city had made no progress. Therefore, our hero and his friend were victorious in this challenge. A man from the group of fighters patted our hero on the shoulder and said that without a good fight, you can't recognize each other. In these few days, they had seen the guy's strength and power. As a reconciliation, they shook hands, sealing the truce. Shining around with golden light, a heavenly king personally flew into the alley. Looks like our hero really passed the test. Next, a new task awaited him. On the dark staircase that led down, they descended into an underground city with armored walls and compartments with automatic gates. The people who lived in this underground bunker wanted to meet and have a drink with our hero. Everyone had heard about his exploits and admired him. Then everyone was gathered in a large hall to read out the report. The man with glasses mentioned in his speech that traveling and learning about the world were necessary for development. For the next 15 days, the students were sent to the island of Kyoto. All the selected disciples were separated according to their ability to learn and modify. In the future, they were to become a support for the world. The apprentices must learn how to solve problems through diplomacy. In the world, injustice haunted people at every turn. When the disciples reached a high rank, there would be an opportunity to climb to the next professional stage. All the disciples listened attentively to the master's exhortation to reach the status of professionals. The master said that the disciples would be divided into teams and given assignments. After completing the task, the teams would be promoted to the new rank. The next day, all the apprentices were gathered to be told about the tasks awaiting them. Soon, everyone will be promoted to a new rank at which flying blades and new armor will be available. Teachers must teach students how to use the weapons as well as how to defend themselves against them. Lu Xu was very interested in one of the topics of the assignment. It was the proper selection of weapons for each type of spiritual armor. The next course was to talk about how to coordinate properly and learn tactical gestures. All the students went outside after class and gathered in a group. A new assignment awaited them. They leaned over a clipboard where the conditions for the assignment were written. The assignment was to infiltrate the black market, the most closed market for new customers to enter. All the students in the group looked at our hero with hope. Everyone counted on his intelligence and ability to survive in any conditions. He was the head of the group. Studying the list of the team members, Lu Xu noticed that they had the strongest students gathered in their team. Their entire team was made up of geniuses. He wondered why the distribution among the participants happened in this way, and could it be a trap again? They needed to be careful. Our hero went alone to the abandoned marketplace to have a look around. The market looked very empty with trash and scrap metal lying around and only a group of people playing cards. Lu Xu said that he had something to sell to this group of people and jumped high on a rusty structure. 
A group of jocks from the abandoned building got angry over the guy's wayward behavior and were ready to grab him. One of the fighters got into a fighting stance, ready to punch the guy. Our hero took out his magic crystals and wanted to use their power. As soon as the fighters noticed the divine power of our hero, they immediately stepped back. But with his behavior, our hero continued to provoke these fighters and taunt them. They lost their patience in order to drag their weapons to kill the guy. The muscles on their bodies tensed up and their mouths curved into ugly masks. Our hero used the magic vessel he bought from a black market merchant and snapped the necks of those fighters. The neck of one of the thugs twisted 180 degrees and he roared in pain. The boss of this group was stunned. He fell to the ground. The rest of the group of these fighters, seeing that the boss had fallen, scattered in all directions with shouts. Our hero launched his blue sword at the remaining bandits with all his might. From the puncture of the sword, blood spurted from his mouth in all directions. Our hero was ruthless and merciless. He stood on top of the roof and pointed his magic sword at his opponents. The flying magic sword was so powerful that it left no chance for the opponents to escape. After all, our hero could control it with his thought. Having destroyed a group of bandits who resisted him, our hero was able to move on with his mission. But our hero was different from the common bandits. He didn't enjoy killing for the sake of killing. The road led him to a new abandoned building, from which a blue magical light was pouring out. It turned out to be an abandoned store that was filled with various relics and souvenirs. He decided to look around inside the store. A box caught his eye. When he opened it, he was struck by a glowing red light and a small sword that matched his vase. It looked like the vase he had bought from a black market vendor, and the sword made up one whole composition that had been separated for some reason. The guy froze in astonishment as he looked at this magic dragon ball and sword. They could absorb the aura of the divine net. The thought crossed his mind that he was holding a treasure in his hands, a real magic weapon. He decided to try it out, but after turning it in his hands and trying out the effects of this weapon, he couldn't understand or think of how he could use it. He decided to lie down to rest and think how he could find a way to unlock the secret of this treasure. The next day, the little sister welcomed her brother home. She missed him very much. She pretended to be very angry, but she still prepared a delicious lunch while waiting for her brother Lu Shu. During his absence as compensation, our hero gave Xiao Yu a phone as a gift. But expensive gifts couldn't compensate for such a long absence of Lu Shu. The little girl was very sad alone at home. Our hero asked how Xiao Yu's training was while he was away. She replied that the third nebula had already been opened. She was able to control two spirits at once. The girl was flattered by her brother's praise and gifts and decided to forgive him. Some people believe in reincarnation. Some people believe that they will go to heaven when they die. But if you take someone else's soul, then after death, everything is over. People are afraid of the very fact of death. They want to believe in something good. The little girl had the ability to control the spirits of dead people. But this ability could be used for good and in the name of justice. Thinking about how best to disguise and protect his little sister, our hero said goodbye and finished talking to her. He returned to his classmates, who were goofing around waiting for the next assignment. They were laughing and playing cards. Our hero was surprised at the humble and dreary environment in which the students were staying. The room was shabby and old. He decided to play cards with them for company. The game didn't go well. He was left fooled and decided to go out for a walk to the restroom. Night fell in the room. The students went to their rooms. Their classmate came back from scouting and said that there was no ambush in the building. This was strange. The next day, the students went to the market, having bought all kinds of delicious food. They walked around and had fun. In the evening, Lu Xu decided to see for himself. He noticed some kind of warehouse in the market. He decided to go inside and see what was inside the warehouse. But inside the warehouse was empty. There was no other way out of the room, so our hero assumed that everything was underground. He decided to launch his vessel so that it would point him in the direction of the enemy and help him find him. But his vessel with a sword inside did not want to obey him, and this terribly annoyed and angered the guy. He wanted to unravel the secret of this magical weapon. And at this moment, he noticed that Xiao Yu and her controlled spirit appeared beside him. She asked why her brother was so angry. She was bored and her spirit was able to track our hero's location. So she was able to find her brother easily. Lu Xu shared with his sister that there was no way he could activate the vessel along with the blade. He didn't react in any way. He used different ways. Screaming, begging, pleading, asking, talking to the vessel to make something happen. But nothing happened. Standing on the roof of the building, the girl noticed the headmaster sneaking somewhere. He slipped stealthily into the room and met up with the director of another branch of the market. It seems there were some secrets between them. 
Our heroes wanted to follow them, but suddenly noticed some group of people approaching. A man on his knees was sobbing and complaining that some group of people had robbed them and killed them. The man in the black t-shirt kicked the other man, saying it was their own fault. The man gave orders to kill everyone and then retreat, taking the merchandise with them. But they didn't get a chance to take the money bags because they were met by a spirit from the sand who was demonically laughing. The spirit had a superpower. It could make a group of people laugh furiously so that no one could stop. Then, with a single flick of his hand, he raised sand dust in space, and all the bags swirled around him. After escaping from the sand spirit, the group of people advanced further into the abandoned building. Lu Xu jumped out with a large spear at these people from the darkness. He was determined to accomplish the task. Our hero's opponent's jaw dropped from surprise. He appreciated the strength and power of the guy. There was nowhere to run. Standing back to back, Lu Xu and Kao gave battle to the enemy. The headmaster appeared in flames behind him, the strength of the fire tiger glowing. The opponent foully cursed and twisted his face into a contemptuous smirk, and the headmaster, like a tiger's claws, tore at him. Everything around was sparkling, exploding, burning with fire. Flames were blazing all around. But looking at this destructive picture, our hero did not understand why the opponents were laughing like idiots, as if it was very funny. Flying through the air like a tiger, the director threw one of the bandits back. The bandit fell against the pavement and started coughing blood, flooding all around. Cow felled one of the opponents with a blow of her long saber. The latter fell on the boxes unconscious. Next, she was attacked by an enraged bandit who wanted to strangle her, but with her sword, the girl gave them a crushing blow. The sword pierced him through and he flew into the black abyss. Our hero noticed that the girl had a special ability. She was able to slow down time and reduce the speed of her enemy, although she moved as usual. After the battle, all members of the group were exhausted and tired, but they coped and completed the task. Next on his plan was to check around the dark hideout and see what was down there. And at the bottom, disappointment awaited them. Everything was empty, and there was no treasure or supplies down there. In fact, the sand spirit and the little girl Xiao Yu had managed to get ahead of everyone and take the bags. The director suggested our hero to go abroad with him. Soon, new ruins are open to search for artifacts and treasures. The guy liked the suggestion. He asked why they didn't send higher-ranked fighters on this mission. He remembered the masters he had met in the ruins and had to fight and speculated about the prospect of meeting new fighters. All of the apprentices had to return to the capital to turn in the assignment they had completed. After saying goodbye, they went their separate ways. The hero returned to his home, but there was a surprise waiting for him. Instead of Sis Xiao Yu, he met the principal at their house. The principal said that he wanted to stay at the guy's house for a while and then go to the ruins with him. A group of people came to our hero's house, one of whom said he was looking for a little girl named Zhao Yu, that he was her biological father. Lu Xu was angry and threw his ID card in his face. Lightning ran between this evil man and our hero because Lu Xu didn't want to give his little sister to a stranger. Xiao Yu returned home. She recoiled from the stranger and said that Lu Xu is her family. She didn't care if she had blood relatives. Her family was only our hero, and she didn't want to know any other relatives. Lu Xu took out his spear and went out to a group of these people and told them to leave his house. The group of these people thought they could easily deal with the guy because he was alone and there were many of them. But they didn't know anything about our hero's magical abilities and his sword that had magical power. Lu Xu launched his spear and a column of smoke rose at the point of impact. The blow was so strong that a hole like a gate was formed in the wall. Seeing the boy approaching, the strangers shouted fearfully. They realized that they were about to be finished now. Lu Xu used his sword and struck the enemies. He realized that these people were human traffickers. He took his spear and stabbed another human traitor in the chest. The one fell down unconscious. The human traffickers begged for mercy and not to kill them, but our hero was merciless and destroyed all the enemies who wanted to take his little sister. Rumors of this incident reached the leaders of the Heavenly Network. It was decided that Lu Xu needed to hide and lay low for a while. The headmaster came to him and told him about this decision. The boy agreed. The heavenly net stayed by the side of the guy and the little girl and offered protection and support without condemning their actions. What happens in life is that many people will never understand you and will condemn you for whatever you do. That said, there will always be those who will take your side and support you. Sitting on the roof of the house and looking at the night city, our hero felt a great gratitude to the heavenly network. After destroying a group of human traffickers, it was necessary to lay low for a while because there are similar organizations that need to be dealt with. If the guy hadn't killed those people, it was scary to imagine where his little sister Xiao Yu would be now. Our hero was going to deal with all the scoundrels. 
find their networks and destroy them. Late at night, our heroes arrived at the wharf. They were carrying suitcases, and they saw a boat docking at the wharf. The director invited them to board this boat. They were to be transferred by boat to Asia. The captain of this boat was engaged in illegal transportation of goods and people and was making money from it. He could take them to the port, but he could not go near the shore and said that our heroes would have to swim further on their own. They jumped into a motorboat and swiftly raced away from the ship. The boat came to a beach with a lot of beautiful girls in swimsuits. Awakened people of different ranks had gathered there. All were waiting for the discovery of the ruins. Our hero decided to keep his flying sword at the ready. Other people didn't guess the abilities of the guy and the little girl, so everything should be fine. They approached a big tall building that looked like a real beautiful palace. It was getting more and more dangerous. A large number of awakened people of different ranks had gathered in it for the opening of the ruins. Black market traders and smugglers were there. The city would become the center of the spirit world in the future. Everyone is traveling to the ruins. Many predators lurking in the streets will be ready like sharks to devour anyone with power. With the help of a spirit, our hero is transported to the basement of a building for reconnaissance. One of the high-ranking fighters had blown up the building, and it began to crumble like an earthquake. There was construction dust and smoke, fittings, blocks, and pieces of wood. The director stood waist-deep in the ruins of the destroyed building and was terribly angry. He saw a group of people picking their way through the rubble of the destroyed building. On one of the stones, he saw a man who looked like the head of that group. The headmaster was mad with anger that someone dared to pelt him with bricks. He accelerated with all his might and lunged at his abuser. The stranger saw the angry man running at him and was frightened and wanted to hide. Our heroes continued to make their way through the basement of the building where the sand spirit had taken them. They did not know that a fight was soon awaiting them. Negative emotions filled the city, anger, rage, and other negativity. The aura was very powerful. The principal was chasing the two boys in a frenzy. They didn't understand why he was chasing them. He took out his red spear and pointed it at them. The chase was interrupted by a large explosion on the roof of one of the buildings. The principal stopped his chase to see who was fighting. Fighters of other ranks were also attracted by the devastating blows that could be seen from all points in the city. Their gazes were drawn to that tall building. Everything around it was sparkling with flashes of different bright colors. The aura fluctuations were much higher. The energy fluctuations above the building were the effects of the little girl and her spirit underground. Our heroes came out from underground to reconnoiter. They realized that the principal needed help and went after him to help. Guided by the power of the sand spirit, they attacked the running man. This man, summoning the magic power of the black crow, gave them an answer. Two energies collided, the sand energy and the bird energy. The sand power swirled, sputtering yellow sand jets, attacking the opponents. The man with the bird power urgently needed to think of a way to increase his power, or else he would be finished. But he didn't have time to do anything because the chains of sand bound his whole body. Meanwhile, the mad headmaster was rushing towards him. The man with the strength of a bird yanked the sand chains with all his might and tore them off. A new power emerged from him, a multitude of purple star tigers ready to attack our heroes. Activating this power, he ordered the principal to die. But the principal was not intimidated by these tigers. He jumped high above the tiger. The principal attacked with the power of the red dragon that attacked the star tigers. The dragon's power was fiercer and greater than the star tiger's power. There was a powerful explosion. Letting out a terrifying scream, the sword-wielding principal once again rushed towards the enemy. The area where they were fighting was shrouded in clouds of smoke and dust from the confrontation between the two forces. The opponent became enraged. His mouth was like the mouth of a tiger. He grabbed a glass sword and lunged at the principal. The sword was sharp as if it was made of ice. Raising his strong arm, he struck at the headmaster. A force like an electric current lit up everything around him, shattering the walls of stone. Pieces of the shattered wall sprinkled on the headmaster. He assumed a fighting stance. The clash of two elements, fire and electric current, split the space into two parts. The principal drew and launched his powerful fire sword, which flew at his opponent. The principal was very brave and easily overcame the opponent's defense. The opponent was amazed by the man's fearless actions. He didn't expect that the man was so ignorant of fear. The headmaster jumped and punched his opponent with a powerful punch of his hand. His fist was huge and his opponent's face looked terrified. The man's sweat drops appeared from the exertion and he stepped back. With ferocious strength, the principal grabbed his opponent and struck once more. The opponent's eyes expressed terror. Never before had he faced such a strong opponent. Flames of fire blazed around the two fighting men. Soon the opponent was lying deep in the pit, defeated, while the headmaster stood on top of him and looked on. Near the body in the pit, 
Lu Xu and her little sister appeared to take the soul. The principal noticed them and asked what they were doing here. After the mission, our hero went back to his room, taking a shower after a difficult day. Lu Xu took out his magic box, closed his eyes and began to meditate. Flying through the starry sky, he saw golden water in the distance. He began to control it. The flow of the golden water was malleable and easily controlled by our hero. The power of the golden water was that it could corrode any object. Our hero was visited by their grandfather on a cloud. The grandfather came to dissuade the little girl Xiao Yu from going to the ruins. But the girl was terribly angry. She wanted to go to the ruins with her brother and didn't want to listen to anyone. Grandfather warned that danger awaited them in the ruins. Different organizations compete with each other and fight for resources and artifacts. Grandpa said goodbye to them and flew away. The director came back and said they needed to scout the situation. Tomorrow alone we'll head to the foundation. Our hero was happy about tomorrow's trip because he had 60 spiritual stones and the trip to the foundation brought him good luck. They went into one tall building which struck them with its beauty. There they met some man whom they had met before. Our hero decided to disguise himself and acquired a mustache. The power of the magic sword that was inside our hero showed the direction of where to go next. Examining the artifacts and treasures that were being sold in this foundation, our hero noticed one statue that caught his attention. He managed to buy the thing that attracted them at a favorable price. Satisfied with the deal, our heroes went on their way. They came home and took that statue out of the bag. Lu Xu thought that he could use the statuette to control his magic vessel, but the flying sword lashed out and cracked this statuette. The purpose of the flying sword was to destroy souls. The hero tried so hard to separate the flying sword and the magic vessel, and it turned out that the sword was aiming at the soul and destroying it. The next day, our heroes woke up in a beautiful and luxurious villa. Everything around shone with a golden light that spread across the sky. Lu Xu looked out the window and realized that the entrance to the ruins was finally open. Hundreds of people piled up to get in. The crowding had begun. Our hero wondered, how could he get into the ruins another way? He converted the power of the stars into the power of the elements, and by manipulating the water, he created a large bubble. As if in a submarine, they floated on the water. Lu Xu, upon reaching the shore, was going to act separately from the general crowd and get as many different artifacts as possible. The team stood ready, waiting for the signal to enter the ruins. One girl from a team invited our hero to join her team. She gave instructions before the challenge that each team member should help the others. Near the campfire, a man spoke of a European organization of the Awakened. They had awakened the ancient gods to contact a representative of the Protos organization. Another large organization that called itself the Order of the Phoenix competed with them. They were not the heirs of the gods, but they too had found a way to stimulate the awakening. One organization that had suffered huge losses last time in the ruins was now undergoing recovery and coming to its senses. The man taught that when confronting these organizations, one must be sober and confident. He spoke of the Order of the Phoenix. All the masters in it were bound by very valuable connections. This led to the strengthening of the Order, which became the largest organization of the Awakened in North America. The Order of the Phoenix has a lot of power. All of its members call themselves the elite of the world. When dealing with the Awakened, it is very easy to get hurt. Also, a group of Awakened Ones from Australia came to the ruins. Their leader could control the air pressure in space. Everyone was sitting around the campfire when a strong wind blew and a strange sound was heard. A hundred terrifying demons with sharp teeth and sharp claws swooped down on the camp. Our hero took his little sister Xiao Yu's hand to protect her. He was not afraid of these demons. They approached the place where the ruins began, which looked very spacious. The guy closed his eyes and tried to feel where the aura in these ruins was intensifying and search for that place. He took out his magic compass to locate the center of the area, but the aura was distributed very unevenly. The guy looked up and saw demons in the sky with big bat-like wings and horns. Lu Xu was excited that he had finally seen a real monster. He decided to observe the situation and take his time to act. Demons with wings circled around a group of people in the sky. The eyes of these monsters were glowing with red demonic light. They looked like gray blocks of stone. The monsters grabbed the humans and torn them apart with their sharp claws. The people with swords tried to fight off the monsters, but the monsters were very strong. The humans called out for help. The flying demons spotted Lu Xu sitting on the rocks and headed towards him. The group of people were fighting with their last strength. They were weaker than the monsters and asked our hero to save them. Lu Xu was alone against the flying monsters. He ran fast. They chased after him. Sharp claws like a wild beast could tear apart any human. 
These demons were as if they were from hell. The people who didn't succeed in striking the flying monsters tried to escape. They ran as hard as they could, but the demons had wings and easily chased after the people. The humans screamed in despair that they were definitely finished and they wouldn't survive. Against the dark rocks and gray sky, more and more demons with burning horns and red eyes began to fly out. There were more and more of them. Their teeth were like those of a dragon, their nostrils flared fiercely, and their eyes glittered like glowing embers. Our hero took out his magic box and activated its power. The group of people standing in the gorge looked at the approaching, circling demons with fear. They tried to push back the demons flying at them with their punches. But this made the demon even more angry, and it opened its huge, fearsome maw. Demons destroyed a group of these people, leaving not a single bone from them. Then they approached our hero, who was standing on one of the rocks. Our hero drew his magic flying sword. Using the power of the flying sword, our hero assumed a fighting stance, waiting for the demons to attack. The sword hit one monster and it cracked like a stone statue. He launched the sword once more, and the demon's head flew off as if it were made of stone. Lu Xu realized that he could defeat everyone because the monster's magic was of a low level. They could only act with quantity. Taking out his flying sword and blade, the guy went to further explore the ruins. The stone demons that were waiting for him in the stones were easily destroyed by his flying sword. Along the way, he met a group that was traveling through the ruins. These people asked if our hero had met the master who had killed those all demons that had turned into stones. Lu Xu didn't reveal that he had done it. The little girl Xiao Yu, who was walking alone in the ruins, wanted to find her brother. And our hero joined a group of fighters who were walking through the ruins and decided to continue walking with them. This group did not notice that from one cave someone is following them. A monster with red eyes and wings jumped on them. The girl was greatly frightened when she saw the monster and screamed in fear. One of the masters rushed at the monster with a weapon. The impact of the sword caused the monster to shatter into pieces made of stones. The stones fell to the ground with a clatter and the master stood there, his sword glowing. The girls thanked him for saving them. The master replied that it was all thanks to the Order of the Phoenix who had given him the magic weapon. The master suggested to camp for the night in the Valley of Stones because it would be unsafe to travel in the dark. The group set up camp. Everyone was already sitting around the fire and was relaxed. Everyone was laughing, chatting, and joking, and eating a delicious dinner. Lu Xu sat on the side and watched this group. In the sky above them, hundreds of purple spirits with powerful energy were circling around. Suddenly, they attacked a group of people who were camping and eating dinner near a fire. Some were vomiting blood, some were screaming in pain. The attack was very powerful. The spirits made terrible screams that made people vomit blood. But our hero was not affected by these spirits. They could not kill him. The master asked why the spirits couldn't affect the guy. Lu Xu said that he had earplugs in his ears, and he couldn't hear those sounds. All the other members of the group took this advice and put earplugs in their ears. The survivors asked why he didn't tell everyone about this way of not hearing the monster screaming. Then everyone went to sleep next to the fire without any strength. Lu Xu traveled onward. Toward morning, they saw a group of flying monsters moving towards them. The stone monsters glared with their eyes. They were ready to destroy all the humans. The girls cried and screamed in fear. They asked for help. This girl was very beautiful, so a few guys wanted to help her and save her. Our hero rushed straight to these stone flying monsters and started beating them. He grabbed them by their paws, tails, smashing them to pieces. Lu Xu looked very strong and beat these stone monsters with ease. After grabbing one of them by the paw, he ran with it in an unknown direction. The others were trying to fight off the paws and claws of these flying monsters. One of the girls used the power of fire and thus destroyed the monsters one by one. But these flying demons were still too many. More and more monsters were appearing in the sky. The forces were not equal. The flying monsters were circling around the people by the hundreds who were trying to defend themselves, but it was difficult for them without our hero. The girl grabbed the monster by the horns and tried to tear its head off. The second guy was beating the monster with an ax. The sky was dark and ominous. It was sprinkled with monsters as if it was raining. Lu Xu appeared on the horizon, and with a powerful fist strike, he hit the monster right in the forehead. Then he grabbed its paw and dragged it behind him, not bothering at all. The monster was smashed to pieces and lay on the ground while our hero sat on top of it. People on the sidelines were admiring the strength and experience of our hero. Meanwhile, the guy continued to carry and pound the monsters like peanuts. Lu Xu kept hitting the monsters and dragging them in an incomprehensible direction, and all the people who were watching this didn't understand where he was taking them. The girls were watching our hero's bravery with a hazy, enamored look. All around, everyone forgot about everything and only stood and stared at Lu Xu. 
One of the masters ordered everyone not to just stand there, but to start fighting. The master drew his magic sword and struck the gargoyle with it. The monster let out a terrible scream. This blow made it angry. The master stabbed the stone monster with his sword. Another monster was defeated. He called Lu Shu to help them defeat the monsters and not leave them alone. Sitting by the fire, our hero thought that the fluctuations of the energy aura in these ruins were the same all the time. He didn't understand where the center was. When night fell, everyone heard terrible screams and shrieks. It was at night when the stone demons retreat and return to their lairs that the strange screams would start. Lu Shu was approached by a very beautiful girl to meet her. She was an awakened one and came from Sweden. She wanted to meet the guy very badly and asked his name. The girl said that when confronted with the stone monsters, the guy had behaved very bravely and rushed to the defense of strangers. She said that he was simply admirable. He was a real hero. The girl touched the guy's hand and asked him to teach her Chinese. Our hero replied that of course he could, but only for a large sum of money. For this, he received a large number of negative emotion points. The other guys were terribly jealous that our hero met such a beauty. She was a real goddess. The next day came. The whole group went further on the road. The girl came up and hugged our hero, telling him that he was very brave and no one could compare to him. The girl was from a rich family and had a lot of money. Our hero warned the girl in the ruins to behave carefully and pay attention to safety. Lu Xu thought about not letting this girl who thanked him so much by giving him a lot of money die in the ruins. A dark cloud of flying demons was coming towards them. The people, noticing these flying demons, once again screamed in terror, thinking, who will protect them from these monsters? Lu Xu, watching them, realized that these monsters were chasing someone. He saw that the person these monsters were chasing was Principal Li. Our hero stood there and thought about the fact that the principal seemed to have gathered monsters from all over the area, and now everyone was chasing him. He's a true madman. Principal Li waved his hand at our hero and asked how he liked his spectacular appearance. The girl said that the director called our hero by another name and Lu Xu's cover was blown. The girl thought that if she and the principal knew each other, then maybe the guy was also from the heavenly network. They ran and a cloud of monsters chased after them. The principal ran and joked to Lu Xu to take a picture of him in front of the monsters. All the young friends were shocked. How could the principal joke at such a moment when their lives were in danger? But our heroes were fearless and invincible. So Lu Xu took out his phone and took a picture of the principal. The principal bragged that he had taken such a cloud of flying monsters with him, and he had something to impress the patrons. Then the guy noticed that the principal had disappeared somewhere along with all the flying monsters. Although the headmaster was big and fat, but it turns out he had gathered all the monsters from the neighborhood and led them along. Lu Xu saw the F, ranked fighters running towards them. They drew their sword and ordered them to stack all the resources and weapons they found on the ground. If Lu Xu and the others wanted to stay alive, the order had to be obeyed. They were threatened to be killed if they did not follow the order. One of the group of these people asked what organization our hero was from. Could he be from the Heavenly Net? The guy replied that he was someone they had never met before. He angered these people by throwing them a challenge. The man was very angry with our hero's arrogance and smugness, and he prepared to kill him. Our hero activated the power of golden water and was ready to destroy all the opponents. The FM rank group pulled out their iron swords and attacked our hero. But it was to his advantage, because to increase the power of the golden water, he needed to absorb as many weapons as possible. The guy ordered the golden water to attack, and the sky lit up with golden light. The golden rays bound the hands and weapons of these men. This energy was very fast, and in a couple seconds, it absorbed the weapons of these men. The warriors froze because they didn't realize what was happening. The weapons in their hands didn't work. Their boss ordered them to throw the weapons out of their hands. They realized it was the guy's magic. The sword ended up on the floor, swallowed by the golden water. Lu Shu, activating all his strength, scattered and rushed to attack. His opponent said that losing the sword doesn't affect anything. He is still a warrior anyway, and took out some metal stars. He launched the stars at the guy. Lu Xu jumped high above the ground. But our hero, thanks to his lightning-fast reaction, dodged the metal stars. They flew a few centimeters from his head. Then they took out a metal blade, and deciding to try out its power, went on the attack. The warrior said that the boy was acting very smugly, and ordered him to show what he could do. Our hero didn't mind showing his capabilities, and ran forward, running away from them. The warrior said that the guy must have run out of all his tricks and ordered everyone to run after him. The group of fighters Lu Xu was traveling with chose to run away while the military chased after him. But the beautiful girl that Lu Xu saved made the decision to follow him and help him. 
Lu Xu continued to run away from the warriors who were chasing him, leading them away from the group. When he had gotten far enough away, he suddenly stopped. The warrior said that although the Heaven's Net warriors were quite strong and could control the flying sword, but they were outnumbered by one Lu Xu. Altogether, they were preparing to kill the guy, gathering in a semicircle around him, trying to surround him. They pulled out their flying weapons and jumped on our hero. The guy pulled out his flying weapon and impaled their body. The guy's flying sword appeared suddenly, with the most incredible speed, and took the enemies by surprise. The warriors were amazed that the guy had two flying weapons at once. This was something they had never seen before. Then the warriors saw that the golden water was returning to them again. The golden water was dangerous because it could absorb weapons. The ray of golden water took the shape of a golden dragon with a mustache. All the warriors were ordered to hide their weapons. It was difficult for the warriors to follow the flying weapon attacks and the flying golden water at the same time. The warrior boss ordered everyone to be very careful. Lu Xu was most likely preparing a new attack. They didn't expect him to sneak up behind them and strike. He took them by surprise at the most unexpected moment. There was a powerful explosion and the entire space was filled with bright fire. The bodies of the warriors with bloody wounds flew into the stone gorges. Our hero continued to strike the warriors with his fists. The force of his blows was so huge that blocks of stones were flying around. The guy moved with great speed and skill. His strength was great. The strength of his strike was against the strength of the boss's strike, but our hero had less experience in one-on-one -on -one battles. The boss grabbed his blade and threatened Lu Xu with a swift death. Blood spilled all over the space and filled everything with it, but it was the boss's blood. Putting on his mask, our hero went to explore the ruins further. He had been wandering around for days, but he never reached the center. His path was blocked by two men who asked if he was a practitioner or an awakened one. Our hero understood that he was stopped by the masters of some large organization and that he had to be careful with them. The masters were obviously of high rank because they were distinguished by the brightness of their clothes and behaved rather provocatively. So the boy took off his shoes and pretended that he was barefoot and poor and that nothing useful could be expected from him. But these men weren't going to rob the guy. They ordered him to follow them. Lu Xu decided that he would obey the order and followed the masters. The masters led the guy to a big hole and ordered him to dig the hole with the rest of the men. He realized that these men were going around looking for lone travelers who had strayed from the group, capturing them and forcing them to dig the dig. Our hero wondered, what are they trying to dig up? He jumped into this big quarry and saw a lot of gold weapons at the bottom. They were various ancient gold artifacts that were just the right amount of gold for our hero. Lu Xu, when he saw the amount of them, immediately rushed towards them, smiling. Two people ran up to him and ordered him to get to work if he didn't want to die. But when they ran closer, they saw that all of their looted artifacts had been greatly reduced. These people were terribly angry. Our hero moved the artifacts into a new spatial dimension. This skill was really only possessed by people of high rank. The man in the red cloak wondered who the guy really was. They didn't understand why he was pretending to be an idiot if he was a high-ranked awakened person. They couldn't explain his behavior. This man approached our hero and said he wanted to explain himself to him. A group of masters descended into the quarry and surrounded our hero. They ordered him to return all the artifacts he had found or he would die. Lu Xu, meanwhile, pulled out his blue dragon magic box behind his back. But the guy had no intention of returning the stolen goods. He turned around, climbed up the rocks, and quickly got out of that quarry. These fighters, enraged by our hero's behavior, chased after him. The boss launched a huge stone, and it blocked the path of our hero. He was caught up by a very strong fighter with fire coming out of his hands. The boss launched streams of fire that almost caught up with the guy. This man told the guy not to think that he would be able to escape from them. But our hero ran very fast with such strength and speed that he was able to break through the stone. These people could not catch up with Lu Xu because he moved at too high a speed and jumped from stone to stone, changing direction. One of the men instructed him to write a letter to the Dark Kingdom and report to his superiors. In this letter, to specify the appearance and signs of our hero, the guy fed all these artifacts to his golden water. A few hours later, the sun shone strangely in the ruins, though it was not usually seen during the day. The people working in the quarry turned their heads and saw that it wasn't the sun shining, but a man running towards them. There was an unusual glowing aura around the guy, which was golden in color. Lu Xu said that he wanted to show off his new liquid gold armor. This made the boss angry, and he launched a fireball at our hero. But our hero's aura was strong and impenetrable. He jumped at these warriors. The fire flames of those warriors were weak against the guy's blows and just disappeared. The warriors drew their swords and assumed threatening poses. They were ready to strike the guy. 
But the golden aura that framed the guy's entire body was impenetrable, and the swords couldn't hurt him. His golden protective aura could absorb the enemy's weapons. Our hero was invincible. He asked his enemies, did they still hope that they could compete with him? But then the ground beneath his feet cracked and split open. Our hero fell into the rocky chasm between the stones. The warriors rejoiced that they had succeeded in destroying the boy. Had they really killed him? But with his strength, our hero split the rocks and remained unharmed. He split the rocks with a blow and landed in front of the warriors. They realized that the guy was incredibly strong. If they continued to fight him, they would surely die. The warriors didn't know what to do next. Maybe they should retreat. They gathered together and tried to escape from our hero. But the guy wanted to test his newly acquired power and quickly caught up with his opponents. His bare feet deftly moved on various stone ledges. Gathering the power of golden water, he prepared to strike his enemies. There was an explosion of unprecedented power. The shockwave hit all the canyon workers. When the smoke from the explosion cleared, they saw a deep hole at the site of the explosion. Lu Xu was walking down the canyon, and an aura of golden water glowed around him. He killed the head, and the boss was lying unconscious in the canyon. The other surviving warriors screamed in terror as they tried to run away and save themselves. One of the fighters called for help and begged for mercy. But the destructive energy of our hero was merciless. He destroyed all the soldiers of the Red Order. Everyone greeted the guy as a big hero who saved them from hard work in the quarry. The guy ordered them to work further and dig up all the magical artifacts that were in that quarry. He was getting negative emotion points for this and hoped that soon, the fourth star on his star chart would light up. People continued to work hard digging for artifacts and were angry at our hero. That's what he needed. By making them work, he was getting negative emotion points from them in large quantities. Very quickly, thanks to the negative emotions of working people, he had a fourth star lit up on his star chart. He realized that by making these people work, he could accumulate negative points and earn new abilities. Then he noticed someone walking in their direction. Flying in on a flying sword was their grandfather, Lee. Everyone recognized that it was the director of the Lee Foundation who flew in and asked for his protection and help. The director asked what was going on in the pit and why was Lu Xu in the pit. The people in the pit started complaining and saying that Lu Xu suddenly appeared, beat everyone and ordered them to dig holes, and that he was a very bad person. Director Lee asked the guy if what these workers were saying was true. Lu Xu admitted that it was true. Our hero said that in the pit, they dug up a lot of different gold and ancient artifacts, just what he needed to strengthen his abilities. After that, the director ordered the men to keep digging. The people were outraged, for they thought the director would do anything to stop this madness. After all, Grandpa Lee was the director of the Justice Foundation. Everyone wondered how strong our hero was, that even the director sided with him. There was nothing left for people to do but to keep digging the hole. The boy asked his grandfather if he had seen his little sister Xiao Yu in the ruins. Director Lee said not to worry. The girl would be fine. But our hero missed his little sister. He knew that there was hardly anyone stronger than him and this little girl in the ruins. The headmaster's goal was to find the fat man who was being chased by the stone demons. The fat man was running around the ruins with a thousand demons behind him and extorting money from anyone he met. The old man was terribly annoyed and could barely contain his deadly aura. The boy replied that he didn't know where the fat man was. He hadn't seen him since last night. The laborers continued digging until some huge hole was formed. Our hero and the old man came to the edge of the hole. It was very deep there. The bottom was not visible. They decided to go down into it and check what was at the bottom of this abyss. They jumped inside the pit. The old man and the boy flew head down. Spreading his arms wide, Lu Xu enjoyed the free fall. After a couple minutes, they landed on a stone ledge of the cliff. They saw steps that led even lower and deeper into the abyss, so they decided to go lower. It was very dark in this rocky gorge, and the old man took out a flashlight to light their way. Our hero had a mirror in his pocket that shone with a bright blue light. He took it out, and it illuminated all around. There were a lot of steps going down the stairs. They plunged deeper and deeper into the abyss. Then they saw a magic circle. Stone monsters were sitting around some kind of idol. The stone monsters had scary horns and teeth like vampires. They held tridents in their hands. At the bottom of the ravine, they noticed many skulls lying around. Our hero looked around. It was as if the aura of this place was consuming all living things. It was like a sacrificial altar that was used to summon stone monsters. The altar was built from human skulls. The signs were written in blood. The old man launched her magic sword to see what was below. As they descended the steps below, they saw that the place looked very ominous. The stone monsters were sitting there without moving. But that didn't mean they were dead. They held tridents in their paws. 
The stone monster in the center seemed to be attracting supernatural energy from all around. Our heroes raised their heads upwards because they suddenly felt the appearance of air vibrations. Suddenly, the center monster opened its red eyes. A bright blue flash of light illuminated the entire space around it. The stone monster grimaced at the bright rays because he lived in the deepest part of the monster, and apparently he was not used to bright light. Our hero directed the light of his magic mirror directly at the central statue of the monster. The stone monster didn't like being disturbed and was blinded by the bright light. The stone monster got angry and said that it would definitely eat our hero. The stone monster let out a deafening shriek that showed how much power it had. The stone monster strongly disliked the fact that some people had broken into his domain. It woke up and straightened up, showing its big, strong red body and burning eyes. The monster spread its wings and took off, preparing to kill our heroes. It opened its big mouth with sharp fangs and rushed at the guy. The monster's strong paws with long claws approached Lu Shu and were already a couple of centimeters away from the guy. The monster looked terrifying, big teeth, horns, and burning eyes. But the old man stood unfazed. He calmly he drew his flying sword and pointed it at the monster. The monsters pulled out their spears and with a flap of their wings flew at our heroes to kill them. The stone monster's trident swiftly flew at the old man. The old man concentrated all his consciousness on his fingertips, brought them to his face, and pointed his magic sword at the monsters. There was an explosion of unimaginable force in space. The shockwave threw the monsters back, and the monsters that had manifested from the shock had their tridents pointed and were preparing to attack the old man again. But then the impossible happened. In one second, the old man smashed all the monsters and they shattered into tiny pebbles. The old man levitated in the air, and eleven monsters were destroyed by his one strike. He really was the greatest master. The altar with the monsters was destroyed, leaving only the tridents and the remains of the stones lying on the ground. Our hero looked at the old man with admiration. Never before had he seen such a strong fighter. The guy decided to jump down to the altar and take the magic artifact lying there. Our hero landed on the altar, picked up the trident, and noticed that red energy was emanating from the stone monster in the center. The red monster sat in the center of the altar and looked at the guy carefully. The red monster recognized our hero. After all, before that, he had absorbed his golden water, his other brothers, monsters. This stone monster on the pedestal thought that it would have killed the guy long ago, if not for the old man. This monster was behind the guy at a distance of one meter and was about to try to kill him. But then a shining blue sword flew in and came close to the monster's head. An old man appeared, which was the one who had directed this sword. He ordered the stone monster not to move. The monster froze and obeyed the old man's order. He thought he didn't stand a chance. The guy took the trident and poked the monster's body. It was not made of stone like other monsters, but of flesh and blood. Our hero took his magic mirror and blinded the monster's eyes with a bright light. The old man ordered the boy to finish his games. The old man said that it was impossible to leave this monster alive since it had killed so many people and remained alive. A decision must be made. Lu Shu took the trident and wanted to kill the red monster from purgatory. The monster raised its ugly face and grinned angrily at the guy. The monster sat there, humiliated. No human had ever insulted him like this before. He became terribly angry and glaring with his eyes, enraged, rushed at the guy, screaming that he would kill him. In the next second, the magic sword pierced through the monster's body. A fountain of blood spurted from the monster's mouth and chest. The lifeless body of the red monster with wings sprawled on the stone floor. Lu Xu engulfed the monster's body with his golden water like a bubble. Suddenly, the floor beneath their feet shook. It was like an earthquake. It looked like everything was about to crumble and collapse. The old man grabbed our hero by the collar and swiftly flew upwards. As they flew upward out of the rocky abyss, they saw piles of rocks tumbling down. They managed to get out before the collapse happened. They looked around to see what had changed and noticed that the annoying, wailing howl had disappeared. The old man flew off, saying he needed to check the whole area and ordered our hero to be careful. The guy opened his star map and noticed that some strange picture lit up on it. Now the guy could have clones appear, and he could send a copy of himself through space. Walking through the ruins, he met the Red Order men again. Seeing the guy, these fighters recognized him and screamed in fear. Lu Shu launched his flying swords at them. The Red Fire Order fighters tried their best to defend themselves, but Lu Shu was striking and preventing the Red Fire Order fighters from escaping. He provoked them with his punches and his attacks and wanted to get some backlash. The Red Order warrior launched a beam of fire flying kite at him. He ordered his warriors to run away while he himself wanted to try and delay the guy. Shouting loudly, he launched his fire kite into the battle. But our hero, skillfully doing acrobatic tricks in the air, 
skillfully dodged the jaws of the fire snake, and a sand vortex appeared around the body of the warrior from the fire order. The feet of these warriors were buried in the sand, and they could not move from the spot. Lu Xu, along with his clones flying in the air, threw his weapon at the fire warrior. There was an explosion of tremendous power, and everything around was ablaze with purple light. When the smoke cleared, a huge crater formed at the impact site. The enemy had been destroyed. He thanked his little sister Xiao Yu for her excellent teamwork. She was happy to help her brother. Judging from this battle, the abilities of all the clones were the same. They had problems with defense and resilience. The clones consumed spirit energy, which was led by the little girl Xiao Yu. Together they headed out to look for the center of the ruins. Suddenly they saw a dark cloud in the sky that consisted of flying monsters. This cloud of monsters was flying in some direction. They seemed to be heading towards the center of the ruins as well. Perhaps these monsters were heading towards the center of the ruins, where the earthquake happened. The stone monsters were aiming for the palace. Our hero watched where the monsters were flying and ran after them in the same direction. The monsters led him to the foot of the palace, at the walls of which a huge crowd of people had gathered. Perhaps this palace appeared after the collapse and earthquake. The boy hid behind a stone block and watched what was happening. The members of the Phoenix Order were heading to the palace. People from all the largest organizations in the world had gathered near this palace. Suddenly, a silhouette of a person in a blue light aura appeared in the sky. It was along with a cloud of stone monsters, Old Man Lee flew in. All the martial practitioners said hello to the master and said that they were ready to enter the palace. The black clouds hanging in the sky were actually clouds made of stone monsters. The headmaster was running towards the castle, followed by a dark cloud made up of flying monsters. The looming cloud of monsters was getting closer and closer. None of the people had ever seen so many monsters before. The headmaster was the first to run into the castle gate. The members of the Order of the Phoenix commanded everyone to run into the ruins. This palace was unfathomable in size. All the members went inside the ruins. All the fighters were deciding who would go first because they didn't know what monsters were waiting for them inside the ruins. Director Lee saw our hero among the crowd and recognized him, even though the guy disguised his face by wearing a cap and mask. Finally, someone from the Order of the Phoenix decided to go down to the palace. While walking down the stone steps, the man slipped in the water. One of the fighters heard something heavy collapse behind him. The palace was sinking and slowly submerged under the water. The men began to panic, screaming and calling for help. They didn't want to be buried alive. Several minutes had already passed. The palace kept sinking and sinking deeper and deeper. Lu Xu thought that maybe this was probably the mechanism of some kind of trap, and the palace master wanted to use their bodies as a sacrifice. The guy took out his magic mirror and illuminated the surroundings with it. Among the people in the submerging palace, he saw the beautiful blonde girl he had rescued earlier in the ruins. It was Carol. The boy was overwhelmed by the girl's beauty. She was perfect, like a goddess. Lu Xu felt the vibrations of sympathy coming from the girl and felt her gaze on him. He was embarrassed. Suddenly, one of the guys called out to all the others because he found a passage. The passageway was open. It wasn't covered with sand or rocks or flooded with water. Master Li said he would fly down there and check it out. Lu Xu pointed the beam of his mirror at one of the warriors. By this action, he caused the warrior to become aggressive. The warrior chased after the guy, but then Principal Li intervened. The warrior turned around to see who dared to attack him. Just then, he saw a fat man with tiger superpowers running at him. The fat man was unleashing his fists, preparing some kind of fight. The warrior drew his sword and shurikens. He was a very high-ranked fighter. Fatty would have to sweat a lot to deal with this warrior. The power of the fire tiger and the blue cobra met against each other. Fatty was amused by this fight and laughed, although his opponent looked very concentrated and angry. The fat man, though overweight, moved very nimbly. He was skillful at dodging punches. With a shrill cry, the man swung his sword and the aura of a blue cobra appeared around him. In response, the fat man drew his spear and prepared to repel the blow. Two silhouettes appeared in the air and attacked each other. The spirit of the blue cobra against the spirit of the fire dragon. The cobra wrapped itself tightly around the fire dragon's body, seeking to suffocate it, while the dragon bit the cobra and grabbed its torso with its claws. The power of fire and the power of water opposed each other. The entire space around was sparkling with strong, magical energy. The people gathered around watched the battle between the two high-ranked awakened ones. Suddenly, a golden glow appeared from somewhere out of the darkness. Everyone wanted to know where it was coming from. It was in the aura of golden water that our hero ran to help Director Lee. Lu Xu took a ball of golden water to absorb the warrior's shurikens and help the fatty. He launched a stream of golden water, and all the shurikens were absorbed. The fat man struck his staff directly at the warrior's head. 
The warrior lost his balance and hit his back against the castle pillar. Blood spurted from his mouth in all directions. He fell to the floor beneath the column with his sword out of his hands and pools of blood spreading around him. He realized that he was very weak. If he continued to fight, he would lose his remaining strength. The warrior realized that he needed to retreat at the first opportunity. He thought of a trick that could help him save his life. He stood up and five purple cobras emerged from his body. This warrior was like a monster. It looked like he had used a special tool to temporarily increase his strength. Although this power had a temporary effect, however, it could help. Flying high into the air, the warrior raised his sword, and the cobra spirit opened its mouth and attacked the principal. The cobra looked terrifying, its teeth glowing in the darkness, and its eyes burning with a red light. The fat man, seeing this terrifying cobra, rushed away. Fatty was the strongest warrior of the Heavenly Net organization, but he still decided to run away from this cobra. Lu Xu sat beside the gazebo and looked at his golden ball. The guy was wondering where he should head to now. The maze in front of him was just huge. Suddenly he saw a fat man running past him at a great speed. The fat man was being chased by a mad warrior and his cobra. He was ordering the fat man to stop. The warrior saw the guy trying to run away quietly and chased after him. He asked where Lu Xu had put his shurikens. The guy joked that he was doing shuriken maintenance, but the warrior didn't believe it. Sure enough, and Lu Xu ran off after the fat guy. The Cobra fighter continued to pursue our hero, seeking to destroy him. To help our hero came to the fighter organization Protos. The Cobra warrior was very angry. His eyes turned into black slits. Lu Xu didn't understand why the Protos were helping him. But taking advantage of the moment while Protos distracted the warrior, our hero escaped. The warrior kept chasing the guy through the castle labyrinths and wanted to tear him apart. Our hero, surrounded by the golden glow of his aura, kept running through the dark corridors. He turned around and saw that this guy kept chasing him. He was incredibly fast. Lu Xu had to figure out how to escape from him. The guy ran up to the entrance of the cave. The descent was too steep and seemed to be very dangerous. The warrior was already dangerously close to the guy. He almost caught up with him. Then our hero thought of a way. He took out his magic mirror and with its bright light blinded this man, Cobra. From the sharp bright light man, Cobra squeezed his eyes shut and screamed. A sharp pain pierced his eyes, which were used to darkness and could not tolerate such a bright light. Lu Xu had a chance to escape. He had received 900 points of negative emotion from the Cobra Man. The light was so bright that the road could not be seen at all. It was difficult for the Cobra Man to chase our hero under such conditions. Suddenly the flash disappeared and the warrior found himself facing a dark abyss. Lu Xu sharply pointed the light of the magic mirror, and it was like a bright flash, like from a camera. The bright light made the Cobra Man's eyes bleed. He didn't have much time left because the magic power elixir was running out. He fell to his knees, clutched his eyes, blinded by the flashes of light, and let out a terrifying roar. Lu Xu noticed that his opponent's spiritual strength had diminished, and he decided that it was a good time to fight back against his opponent. Wanting to save his life, the Cobra Man decided to run away from our hero. Lu Xu chased after him, offering to play some more. He didn't understand why his opponent was so abruptly frightened. The Cobra Man ran behind a sharp corner where the light of the magic mirror could not penetrate and decided to hide there. This was the place to wait and at the right moment to ambush and strike our hero with a fatal blow. Lu Xu closed his eyes and mentally created a clone. He saw that there was a hidden place ahead of him that was perfect for an attack. Lu Xu decided that attacking him stealthily wouldn't be that easy. He had a plan. When the Cobra Man came at him with his sword, our hero abruptly pulled out a glowing magic mirror which brightly illuminated everything around him. The Cobra Man was caught off guard. He shrieked from the light that blinded him. The Cobra Man launched his spirit cobra with red eyes at our hero. Lu Xu launched his golden water at the Cobra Man. The warrior was afraid that the golden water would swallow his magic sword. The Cobra Man was shocked by our hero's abilities. Never in his life had he ever met a warrior with so many magic weapons and magical abilities. Concentrating all his abilities, the guy said that it was better not to compete with him. The Cobra Man struggled to escape the wave of golden water that Lu Xu launched at him. Then he turned around and struck our hero with his sword, hoping that his magic water would not have time to absorb the weapon. But our hero grabbed the sword with his hands and delayed the blow. The Cobra Man was shocked that the guy intercepted the sword with his bare hands. He clutched his eyes in fear and asked Lu Xu to let him go. The golden water swallowed the Cobra Man's sword. He was terribly angry, so he took another sword and tried to kill Lu Xu once again. But suddenly, our hero's magic sword flew out of the darkness and deflected the blow. Lu Xu's second flying knife went through the Cobra Man's face through and through. He screamed in pain, but continued to chase after our hero. 
As the Cobra Man ran through the dark corridors of the cave, he felt the weapon pass through him. The Cobra Man fell on a rock, blood flowing from his head wound. A question appeared in his mind. Was he really dying from his wounds? Could he, such a strong, high-ranked warrior, really be defeated by this guy? Now his connection with the Golden Water was even tighter. Lu Xu ordered this arrogant fighter to say goodbye to his life. With his Golden Water, our hero absorbed the spirit of the Cobra. The Cobra changed its color to gold and demanded blood. Lu Xu cut his finger with a knife and drops of blood appeared on it. Our hero fed the Cobra the blood that came out of his finger. Now his bond with it was closer. Maybe after absorption, the good golden water became a magical artifact itself. Our hero continued his descent into the cave. After ten minutes, he came across the dead body of a Cobra warrior and realized that he had come to the same place he had just left. He decided to put up markers in the future so he wouldn't get lost. Walking through the maze of the cave, our hero found himself surrounded by two groups of fighters. He said that he seemed to have lost his way and needed to find another path, as he had gotten separated from the group. Gathering into a large group, the fighters all continued to search for a way out of the tunnel together. When they came across a light, they thought that the exit from the cave was somewhere close. Suddenly, a creature jumped out of the water and bit one of the men on the leg. The water was crawling with these strange bugs. The whole water was crawling with bugs, and they crawled on one of the guys and bit him. The bugs ripped one of the contestants to shreds. Seeing this, the other guys were very much frightened and tried to run away from these terrible bugs. One fighter blocked the way of the rest of the fighters with his arm, preventing them from escaping. These guys didn't realize where this power came from and what was going on. The high-ranked fighter was holding them back with his mind. He ordered these guys to deal with the bugs. These guys were thrown as cannon fodder to feed the bugs. They had to fight the bugs. The bugs spread their wings and flew right at the fighters. One of these guys used the power of fire to attack the beetles. Suddenly, the bugs crept up and attacked this fighter from behind. There were so many bugs that they knocked the guy down and fell into the water. The guy cried out in pain and fear. The bugs were crawling all over his arms, legs, and torso. There was a huge number of them. They were consuming him. The other two guys saw what the bugs did to their friend and tried to flee. A high-ranked fighter was watching the guys. He was disappointed that the fighters couldn't fight the bugs decently. This fighter instructed that everyone needed to take the fight and fight the bugs with dignity. There was no point in running away from them in the ruins. He channeled the power of his arm and crushed the beetles. He urged the other fighters to destroy the remaining bugs. The boys and girls, gathering their courage and gathering all their fortitude, jumped at the beetles with spears and hammers. Lu Xu was having fun and fearlessly crushed the beetles with his bare hands like peanuts. He thought that the beetle was also a relic creature. He wondered if his golden water could absorb these beetles. He let his golden snake see one beetle. Would it be able to devour it? But unfortunately, the beetles were not related to artifacts, and the absorption didn't work. More beetles were looming in the air like a dark cloud. All the fighters continued to desperately fight against this flying infestation. It seemed that this pest invasion would never end. After destroying some of them, new bugs immediately appeared in their place. After all, they had just gotten out of the maze. Would the bugs force everyone back into the maze? The high-ranked martial artist used the power of his telepathic arm and boldly dealt with the pests. A Fire Order fighter destroyed the bugs with his sword. A fighter with the ability to compress air created an air corridor in space for others to pass through. But he actually just ran away, leaving everyone else with the bugs. Our hero caught up to this fighter and blocked his path, preventing him from escaping. The fighter was twice the size of Lu Xu and was angry that he couldn't get free. He didn't expect the guy to be so strong. That's when he saw the fat guy running towards him. Our hero noticed that running through the bug-infested river was a very bad idea. The fighter ordered everyone to run downstream, otherwise everyone would die in this river with bugs. Lu Xu ran the fastest. He had a superpower that helped him move through space faster than the others. They ran into a dark cave, dark rocks looming over them. A swarming cloud of bugs stalked our heroes and chased after them in their wake. A team of Order of Protoss fighters fought the bugs in the dark cave. They felt the emergence of an energy fluctuation. The aura was very strong. Suddenly, the head of a little girl emerged from the ground. It was unclear where and how she appeared. All the members of the Order were surprised by her appearance. It was unexpected. This little girl was our hero's little sister. And she, thanks to the power of the Sand Spirit, could travel with him through various natural elements. She could penetrate through earth, sand, and stone. The blonde woman of the Order recognized the little girl. After all, she was in love with her brother. She started asking questions in English, but the girl only knew Chinese. The girl was looking for her brother. She scattered and jumped into the river where the bugs lived. 
The Protoss team fighters shouted to the girl to stop her and discourage her from jumping into the water. After all, the girl could have died in the water. The Order fighters saw a huge hand rising out of the water behind the girl's back. The whole team was frightened and ran away to another place, leaving Xiao Yu alone. The little girl Xiao Yu, riding a purple spirit, went to look further for her brother. Meanwhile, our hero, along with the other members, were rushing through the dark labyrinths of the cave. While running, the fat man asked Lu Xu to patronize him in front of Master Li. Suddenly, in the depths of the cave, they heard a strange sound. It was unclear where it was coming from. A cloud of bugs was chasing after the group of Order of Protos fighters. The blonde Carol ran into our hero in the cave. Their paths met. Blonde Carol looked at the guy with love and adoration. The fat man took out his spear and started chopping the bugs into pieces. The power of the fire dragon was successfully destroying the swarm of bugs. The rest of the fighters struggled against the cloud of bugs swooping down on them from the air. Our hero ordered the blonde to take care of her life and be careful. And he himself went to the aid of the director and the rest of the participants. Our hero resembled a small yellow Pikachu. He pierced the flying bugs with the power of golden rays. An incomprehensible mud mass hovered in the air. Lu Xu pierced it with a powerful golden light. The power of the golden rays was so powerful that this mass shattered apart into pieces. Lu Xu made a decision to destroy all the bugs that came his way. He directed his power of magic golden water at them so that it would devour the bugs. The golden water, which took the form of a snake, flew through the ominous cave and devoured all the bugs. The fighters gathered in the cave were intrigued by the daredevil Lu Xu. They had never seen such a reckless kid before. But the flying beetles were never ending. Their green eyes glittered in the dark cave. A warrior from the Fire Order activated his firepower and directed his strike force at the bugs. All the warriors stood and watched as our hero held back the beetles' attack with the power of his hands. The Order of the Phoenix and other warriors rushed to help our hero in the battle against the beetles. Lu Xu felt annoyed and frustrated, for he didn't need any help. By absorbing the bugs, his golden water increased its power. The guy ran away, taking the beetles with him. This was how he hoped to get them for himself. All around, all the participants thought that Lu Xu was doing this for their safety. A man from the Order of the Phoenix decided to seize the opportunity and tried to catch up with our hero to kill him. Master Li came to a lake filled with blood. In the center of this pool of blood stood a coffin. Master Li flew closer to see what was inside. Inside the coffin was the blood demon they had seen in purgatory. The blood demon hung in the air above Master Li. The master realized that the blood pool could turn ordinary monsters into blood demons. Master made the decision to destroy the demon right now. But then something strange happened. The demon sacrificed itself. Master Li looked at the bleeding demon and thought about this act of his. He came to the conclusion that the energy flow system in this place could make demonic creatures bleed. A stream of purple energy poured out from the stone tombstone. Master Li pointed his flying sword straight at the monster's bloody paw. With a second sword strike, he shattered the iron chains. Then he pointed the flying sword at the bloody skeletons that climbed out of the bloody pool. Master Li destroyed the bloody monsters with his magical destructive power. The little girl, along with the spirit, continued to wander through the labyrinths of the dark caves. She came to a stone gate, the path to which followed the stones. They were laid between streams of blood. Master Li continued his attack on the demons. His magic flying swords were smashing everything to pieces. He had awakened a terrifying demon. His eyes were sparkling. His hair was developing. He was dressed in a red canopy. A red stone burned in this demon's forehead. He squinted his eyes in anger at being awakened. This monster extended its huge hand with long, sharp claws towards Master Li, intending to kill him. The blood monster asked how the old man dared to disturb his peace. These underground caves with the blood pool were his domain that the old man had broken into. The monster wanted to inhabit the body of the murdered old man and have fun in the human world. It could transform into a clone of its victim. The bloody monster towered and hovered its body over Master Li. Its black hair was developing in the air, and its ugly paws were reaching for the old man. After a second, this monster took on the form of Master Li. It was able to copy his face. Only his red stone burned in his forehead, which was like a third eye. But Master Li said that the monster could change its appearance and even copy his voice, but it wouldn't work. Master wouldn't leave him a chance to live in this world. The monster was ready to fight the master. He hated him for disturbing his peace and daring to invade his domain. But suddenly a little girl appeared between them. She asked the grandfather if he had seen her brother. Grandpa was very angry when he saw Xiao Yu. After all, this place was very dangerous to wander around alone. Then the girl saw that the monster was copying her grandfather and looked just like her grandfather. She wanted to go look for her brother but her grandfather wouldn't let her go. 
The monster was terribly angry that his opponent didn't have an ounce of respect for him. Suddenly our hero appeared in the bloody pool. He flew on his golden water like a surfboard. The boy looked up and saw a creature floating in the air that resembled his grandfather. Then he saw his little sister Xiao Yu on the shore and waved to her. The girl was very angry with her brother because he told her to wait at the entrance of the palace and didn't come. Master Li launched a thousand levitating swords at the blood monster's body. This made the monster very angry. It roared that it would kill everyone right now. The blood monster with its eyes glowing with hatred swooped down on our heroes. The boy and his little sister looked up and saw a cloud of monsters flying at them. There were thousands of these flying monsters. It was hard to deal with them alone. The blood spirit was a very strong high-ranked opponent. There was a fierce battle going on between Master Li and this spirit. Grabbing his little sister's hand, our hero decided to escape from this scary place. The girl persuaded him to stay and help her grandfather, but he said it was too dangerous here and they should run away. Levitating in midair, the old man continued to deliver powerful blows to the ugly creature. His opponent was strong, and defeating him was not going to be easy. The group of fighters continued to walk through the labyrinth of caves. The fat man heard some sound that was familiar to him. Suddenly, they saw a boy and a little girl running towards them. The fatty got excited and waved to them in greeting. He recognized Lu Shu. Then everyone noticed a cloud of flying monsters chasing after the guys. Meanwhile, upstream of the river, the high-ranked fighters continued to fight the bugs. They noticed a fat man and the Order of the Phoenix fighters running towards them. While running, the fat man asked where in the ruins did Lu Shu manage to find so many monsters and lead the way. Lu Shu decided to go back and help Master Li fight the monster. Ordering the group to split into two and wishing them good luck, our hero jumped into the water and disappeared. One of the fighters started spitting blood. The poison from the bugs had penetrated deep into his body. In the air above them flew a dark cloud of monsters. There were a huge number of them. They could not be counted. A monster noticed the fighter who had lost his strength and attacked him. A fighter from the Order of the Phoenix rushed to the rescue. With his strike, he smashed the monsters which disintegrated into pieces of stone. Directing his power at the flying monsters, he continued to fight them, destroying them single-handedly. The monsters were falling from the heights onto the rocks. A beam of light pierced their stone bodies, and they fell down in chunks. With a battle cry, the warrior launched an attack on the remaining monsters. Directing streams of powerful energy, the warrior destroyed the flying monsters. A couple minutes passed when one of the warrior's strength ran out and he fell to the ground. The warrior said that he was holding back the stone monsters with the last strength he had left. Tears were flowing from his eyes. Meanwhile, Lu Xu and his little sister Xiao Yu flew to Old Man Li's aid. They approached the place where they left him and hid behind a rock. Two more unfamiliar silhouettes appeared next to the old man. These beings were as if they were from another world. The creature in the black cloak was looking at the demon. The second creature in iron armor with burning orange eyes and a lizard-like tail stood opposite the master. The blood spirit attacked the puppeteer that had appeared in the ruins, and he was determined to deal with the master and the puppeteer. Master Li was incredibly strong. He wanted to destroy the blood spirit. A lizard-like creature with huge paws and tail struck Master Li. Master Li sent his levitating sword straight into that lizard's body. The lizard-like creature had four orange eyes. There was no nose or mouth on its muzzle. Master Li used the levitating sword technique. He was alone against everyone. He summoned all the power of the ancient gods, and swords like raindrops rained down on that gray spiked lizard. Flying swords fell from the sky, forming a spiral with their movement. The puppeteer thought that there were still descendants of sword masters in this world. A master could transform all the specks of dust in the air into flying swords. Imbued with these magic swords, the blood spirit screamed fearfully and begged for help. Blood spurted from its head in a stream resembling a fountain. The puppeteer, extending his huge hand, reached out to Master Li. The master who was standing in a fighting stance, adopting a protective posture, continued to aim hundreds of swords at his target. The lizard-like creature put its hands together and bowed, calling its opponent master. It was ready to strike back. The lizard-like creature was simply huge compared to Grandpa Lee. It jumped at Master Lee and struck with its huge fist. The two forces fought against each other. The puppeteer saw that the master was incredibly strong, since his blood spirit goal had been achieved. He didn't need to stay here. The puppeteer launched some kind of flying object into space. It was a flying mask. It flew straight towards our hero. This mask had glowing red eyes and sharp teeth. Lu Xu managed to catch this mask in his hands. The puppeteer didn't understand how could this guy catch the intimidating mask. After that, the ruins shattered into thousands of shards. Our hero and little girl Xiao Yu flew into the unknown. Amidst the falling shards, the ruins closed. 
All the heroes finally got out of the ruins and ended up on the island. Master Li was also alive, levitating in the air. The fighters cried tears of joy after getting out of the ruins. They were glad to be alive. Our heroes tried to get off this island as soon as possible. They settled in a beautiful villa in Pattaya. Our heroes were relaxing on the couch, sipping drinks and discussing what happened to them in the ruins. Lu Xu showed the mask he got during the battle. This mask attacked everyone it met, but for some reason it didn't touch our hero. Xiao Yu was taking math and English exams. She passed these tests with very high scores as the girl turned out to be a genius. After the exams, Xiao Yu came home and found her brother singing pop songs. Lu Xu received a phone call from one person offering a deal. He did a movie with one fighter in which Lu Xu's death was faked. A little girl cried after thinking the wounds on her brother's body were real. The boy said that the Heaven Network organization had quarreled with another organization and decided to fake his death to trick him into getting the reward. His classmates came to our hero's house, but he couldn't come out and reveal the secret that he was actually alive and not dead. The classmates cried. They brought flowers to his house. They thought he was truly dead. After paying their respects, the classmates left his house. Our hero asked his little sister Xiao Yu to cover for him when he went to the new building in a couple days. The next day when the girl left for school, Lu Xu was lying on the couch watching TV series. Right from the floor of his house, a man appeared. He was there to find out who our hero was, what he would be doing now that he was presumed dead by everyone. He brought a letter with a script for the next mission. Our hero had progressed further in his abilities. He had the ability to change his personality. His new identity was an ordinary, marginalized person with no friends or co-workers. Lu Xu needed to find out what kind of person his identity was and what he was doing. The morning of a new day came. The guy still hadn't managed to find out anything decent about his new identity. The place of his new job was a warehouse with goods. A truck arrived at the warehouse. It was necessary to receive the goods and register everything in the program. His partner told Gossip that the secret organization had suffered heavy losses recently. So many positions had been vacated. There were also resources stored in warehouses that were being hidden to prevent the Celestial Network from destroying the research results. His partner left to train and left our hero alone in the warehouse. This was just what was needed to find out more information. Lu Xu needed to keep playing his role and not reveal his true identity. A few days later, while sitting at their workplace, the warehouse workers saw that a lot of cars appeared outside. Apparently something had happened. A very important man had arrived at the warehouse. He was dressed in a suit and tie. This man said that in a couple days, some very important goods would be arriving at the warehouse and would need to be unloaded at the new warehouse. He also said that at the new base, this man would get the position of Minister of Security. Our hero learned that the goods that needed to be unloaded actually meant practitioners. He knew that some organizations tried to create high-ranking masters through sacrifice, using humans for this purpose. The partner hurried our hero to go to the warehouse and unload the goods sooner rather than later. They opened the door of the truck and people poured out. Lu Xu was shocked that people were called goods and injected with anesthetics to immobilize them. Injections were given every 24 hours to keep people quiet and unable to resist. Lu Xu looked with horror and disgust at what this organization was doing to people and calling them commodities. These people were lying helplessly on the floor and could not call for help or move. Our hero couldn't watch the people from the organization bullying and beating the kidnapped people. He ran around and punched the man in the suit in the face. The blow came to his jaw and blood flowed from his mouth. Our hero continued to punch these criminals with all his might. Suddenly, a meeting was announced in the warehouse late at night. What could have happened at such a time? Lu Xu looked at the guys he beat up and thought about how they were weaklings and no fighters whatsoever. They sat meekly on the floor and waited for our hero's orders. A partner came running in and said that everyone needed to gather because the new base was being opened early. Lu Xu was glad that he had a chance to get to this base before the scheduled time. A large number of trucks with elite guards arrived at the warehouse. Our hero counted them and thought that apparently there was a very valuable commodity inside the vehicles. His partner approached the guy and said that he was summoned by Kuriyama for an important conversation. The supervisor had a proposition for our hero. They approached Kuriyama, near whom there were guards with guns. Kuriyama asked what abilities the guy had that he was good at. Our hero decided to cheat and said he was good at math and could count. But when Kuriyama asked him to solve the problem, our hero made a mistake, which irritated the supervisor. His partner said that if the guy didn't want to work for Kuriyama, he shouldn't have behaved like that. But our hero thought that he was a spy. If he switched sides, he would be exposed. His partner said that the new base was underground. Its perimeter was made of steel three meters thick. It was impossible to get inside. 
Our hero thought that his opponents did everything possible to prevent him from getting into the new base, but he managed to get in under the guise of another person. They boarded a truck and traveled to their destination. Lu Xu was jubilant because everything was going even better than he had planned. Late at night, they arrived at the armored gates of the Divine Fortress. A line of trucks lined up outside the gate. The guy was scrutinizing the new Divine base. His partner gave out the task to all the subordinates in a commanding voice. It was necessary to quickly move all the goods to the pickup point. Then the partner turned to our hero and said that later they should go underground. Inside these vans were tens of thousands of spirit stones, which were being unloaded into crates. One truck was parked separately from the others, and our hero thought it was strange. Lu Xu looked inside the truck and saw a B-rank boss inside. When the master came out, Kuriyama bowed to him. He asked what happened to the tool on the way here. Kuriyama replied that it looked like the man from the heavenly net had fallen for their bait. The master replied that the bait was pretty good. The celestial net didn't seem to know about it. Lu Xu realized that they wanted to catch him thanks to baiting him with spiritual stones, but he didn't fall for the trick. Lu Xu didn't understand why this organization was so afraid of the heavenly net and the heavenly king. The master told everyone to immediately get to work. His partner walked over and said that the person from the celestial network didn't appear here which meant that she didn't find out about the secret operation. This proved that none of the employees were spies. Our hero was amused by this conversation and his partner's naivety. After all, our hero was this secret spy of the Celestial Network who was standing right in front of him. Lu Xu walked over to the trucks that were filled with spirit stones. Our hero was drooling to pick up all these spiritual stones. It was a great temptation. His partner said he was working in an underground warehouse. It's not only a fast career advancement, but also a lot of other benefits. Kuriyama got a report that the guy refused to work underground and asked to be sent upstairs. Kuriyama was terribly angry looking at the guy. After all, the guy had refused his offer time after time, and he was the boss, and he wasn't used to that. Lu Xu walked into the office, and the employees bowed to him. They considered him their boss. Our hero didn't understand what was going on. Why did these people think he was their boss? Lu Xu, sitting in his chair, relaxed and thought about what he needed to do next. His main task was to keep his identity secret, but his thoughts kept returning to the thousands of spirit stones that were lying in the warehouse. They gave him no peace of mind. He pondered on what he should do. Perhaps he should have some fun and get those stones. After a few days, the guy managed to get close to the warehouse. Soon the stones would be his. Remember when our hero had a fight with his coworker and the latter pointed his sword at him? But Lu Xu stopped the blade with the fingers of one hand. His partner immediately realized that the guy was not who he said he was because a normal person could not stop a sword with his hand. Lu Xu knocked out his neighbor with a light punch. Then our hero, thanks to his mask, changed his identity and pretended to be his partner. After changing his identity, Lu Xu went on to the warehouse with a satisfied face. Something happened this time with the identity change. The trick didn't work and he had to find another way to get back to the city. He knocked on the door but no one opened it for him. Then the guy kicked the door with a strong punch of his hand and the light bulb turned green. The door was opened for him by a man in an unbuttoned shirt. He was busy. Lu Xu caught this man alone with a beautiful femme fatale girl. The man wearing his glasses yelled at the guy for not knowing how to knock on the door. He was angry that the guy interrupted them. The man asked why the guy came. What did he want? Lu Xu said he wanted to take a couple days off to go back to the city. The man said he didn't expect such sentimentality from the guy and asked if he had watched the novel of the Three Kingdoms. Lu Xu thought it must be some other test and replied that he hadn't watched it or heard of it. The boss said the point was that the more ruthless people are, the more they crave loyalty, devotion, and bravery. And if the guy succeeds in subduing the boss, the boss will return the favor. Lu Xu decided to piss him off and said that if the boss died, he would come to his wake for seven days. The boss laughed and thought that this guy would make him nervous with his answers. But he said they let the guy go into town for a couple days. After getting permission and a green check mark on the computer screen, our hero pointed his levitating sword at the boss. The two flying swords hit right into the boss's chest. Blood spurted out of his mouth and stomach. Lu Xu killed this boss while undercover. One of the two biggest threats in the base was gone. His path was free. The girl who had fallen to the floor and was badly frightened screamed in fear. She didn't know who this guy was. Our hero could not stand to hear this question. He was terribly annoyed by it because he did not know what he would answer it. Our hero thought and told the girl that he was a legendary, talented, handsome man. Although then he changed his mind and said that he could be called an iron fist of the working people. But the girl replied that he just hit not with his fist, but with flying swords. Therefore, the name of the labor fist of the people did not suit him well. 
Lu Xu was thrown off balance by this comment. He became angry at the girl. He didn't notice as she pulled a thin hairpin out of her hair and hit him. The guy dodged the blow and the stiletto hit the wall. The girl launched the next magic artifact at him. It looked like a butterfly made of golden threads. Lu Xu summoned the power of his golden water to absorb this artifact. The girl jumped to the side to try to escape. Lu Xu was encompassed by the power of fire. He ordered the girl not to try to escape. He held a golden water in his hand, a stream of which spilled over the room. This stream of golden water had the shape of a snake, which became simply huge, engulfing the magic weapon. Poking his finger at the golden snake, our hero said that it had become simply huge. He remembered that while traveling through the ruins, he was only able to survive because of the power of golden water. The metal door slid open and the guy walked out of the office. He went to the compartment where the magic stones were stored. Channeling his magic power, our hero was going to absorb them all. Lu Xu was anticipating how he would soon become the owner of all these magic stones. He felt tremors similar to an earthquake. It was as if some huge creature was heading towards him. Lu Xu noticed that everyone around him was rushing around in panic. An enemy attack was coming. Lu Xu asked his subordinate what was going on. He said that he had heard that two high-ranked masters had come here to kill everyone in their way. Alarms were heard. The enemy was attacking the base. The building was destroyed. Everyone was running around in panic. Who could have destroyed the warehouse? Who dared to do it? It was unclear what was happening outside. Lu Xu climbed to the surface from the underground warehouse. There was no time to delay. The order to urgently evacuate the place followed. Our hero rushed away from this place amidst the crashing explosions and flashes of light. The dark sky was filled with bright flashes of ominous lightning. People were fleeing from the warehouse in a terrible panic. The power supply to the base was abruptly interrupted. All the workers of the base were looking for their superiors. The way was blocked by a tall man with a sword. Our hero showed him a pass to leave the base signed by his superiors, and this man let him out. This man told everyone that their base was completely attacked by another faction. This faction did not understand why the Protoss clan attacked their military facilities. They would not tolerate such aggression. The person on the screen shouted that they would fight and would not surrender to the enemy. All the people in front of the screen raised their hands in agreement. Our hero realized that this attack had something to do with a girl named Carol who wanted revenge, thinking that our hero had been killed. With her power, Carol was striking with her own strength, avenging the guy's death. She didn't know that Lu Xu's death was faked and he was undercover. Channeling her energy, which was imbued with an electric force, she said that everyone must pay for what they did. They crossed their weapons, lightning struck from Carol's spear. Her opponent was unable to move after being struck by the lightning. Carol ordered her fighters to keep advancing. She was determined to win this battle and avenge her lover. Boss Takashima ordered his subordinate to finish the preparations for the sacrifice ritual as soon as possible and get the magic stones. Takashima changed his mind about releasing our hero and decided to leave him at the base. Lu Xu needed to come up with a new escape plan. One of the warehouse workers came running in with the news that all the spirit stones were gone. All 92,000 stones had been stolen. Someone had stolen them. The warehouse was empty. Takashima was beyond angry. All the stones were stored in the warehouse for the sacrifice ceremony. He sought out the minister of base security. Meanwhile, our hero managed to change his appearance and become a different personality. Everyone was looking for the guards of the valuable cargo, which were our hero and his partner, but they disappeared. One of the people assumed that they were the ones who stole the spirit stones and escaped with them from the base. Takashima wanted to use these spirit stones to perform a sacrifice ceremony to speed up the transition to the next phase. It turns out that Lu Xu prevented a new villain from appearing. Now our hero can act more cautiously or his plan won't work. Takashima was on fire with rage that his stones had been stolen. He ordered his army to act. Everyone understood his command. The army pounced on the men and started hitting everyone with swords. The rest of the people, scared that they were about to be killed too, wanted to run away. They didn't know what they should do next. Our hero looked at what was happening with judgment. He did not understand how a human life could be taken so easily. These people could not be called human beings. He stood and looked in disgust at the blood-stained floor. People stood helplessly and called out for help. It looked like this massacre was a sacrifice. Takashima was going crazy, ready to achieve his goal at any cost. Our hero resented with anger seeing this. The guy infiltrated this ceremony with an altered identity and started to find out what was going on. The man replied that this sacrifice would help Takashima attain the highest rank. The man said that he too was willing to sacrifice himself because there was no other option. The stones had been stolen. This will allow Takashima to gain the highest rank and fight back against foreign enemies. 
This is the only way to win the war, and this man was honored to sacrifice himself. Our hero thought with horror that these people were like fanatics from some cult. Our hero thought about the fact that Takashima couldn't get the highest rank, or else Carol wouldn't be able to handle him. Lushu thought about the fact that Carol is here for him, and he can't let her die. He has to do everything he can to prevent the ritual from happening and let Carol know that he is actually alive. That's when a cool idea popped into our hero's head. All the participants sat in a circle to perform the ritual. In the center of this bloody circle sat Takashima. He was concentrated and focused, but suddenly the ceremony was interrupted by our hero saying that he urgently needed to go to the restroom. Takashima was terribly angry. He pointed his red bloody hand at our hero. The guy activated his golden water magic power. Streams of water floated in the air. Takashima realized that the real enemy was right in their midst, but it was too late as he had reached the highest rank. Lushu noticed that the energy fluctuations in Takashima's body were rapidly increasing. He had already started to extract energy from the blood he received. Then he thought that his Shen Shui should absorb the blood. He directed streams of golden water directly into the ritual circle. Our hero had a feeling that this magic circle was impossible to destroy. Takashima was incredibly angry that some kid decided to disrupt his transition to another level. He sent a red dragon right into our hero's face. The kid realized that the battle was going to be tough. He channeled all of his power, which was a flying golden dragon, right into the bloodstream. This power countered the blood dragon that was chasing him. Our hero felt a strong blow, and after spreading his arms, he lost his balance and fell backwards. It seems that alone, the guy really couldn't handle a fighter of this high rank. But our hero noticed that Takashima hadn't moved since the beginning of the ritual. Maybe he couldn't do that until the ceremony was over and the circle was broken. Suddenly, there was a huge rumble of thunder from somewhere. Lu Xu thought that Carol was already here. If he teamed up with her, maybe they would be able to defeat Takashima. Takashima thought that he had very little time. Takashima realized that the conservatives had united to destroy a common enemy and ordered all his warriors to go on the attack. Meanwhile, our hero wondered if he had any weapons that could help him. He thought about the fact that the magic mirror and the vessel would not help him. That leaves only the levitating sword and spears. But then he realized that Takashima had activated the protective field, and even levitating weapons were unlikely to be able to harm him. What was there to do next? Here he turned around and saw that some warrior with a sword wanted to attack him from behind. Lu Xu flung this warrior away with one hand. It was easy for him, and he began to think how he could strengthen his abilities. Meanwhile, the blood dragon spewing flames and spinning in rings was preparing to devour Lu Xu. The boy dodged the blood dragon's teeth with deft movements, thinking about how he could break through to Takashima. Our hero's path was blocked by enemies. Mentally, Lu Xu ordered himself to focus on the dragons and ignore those warriors. He dashed through and disappeared. The warriors didn't realize how he did it and passed between them. The guy had his chance and he took his magic spear and headed towards the main enemy. Takashima and his warriors raised their swords and prepared to attack. A duel ensued between the warriors. One of them turned out to be a spy and all the others were preparing to kill him. The sword fight, the confrontation between the two forces was a bloody battle. The warriors were highly trained. They were perfectly proficient in battle techniques. Their eyes burned with a bright light. One of the warriors had bloody tears flowing from his eyes. Lu Xu flew on his golden water while a bloody battle raged beneath him. A warrior who was trying to save his life was struggling against a group of warriors. His body was illuminated with golden radiance. Standing in the center of the circle, he tried to fend off the attacks of the warriors surrounding him. But one of the warriors crept up from behind and stabbed the man in the back. More bloody tears flowed from the man's eyes. Despite his wounds, the man did not die. The warriors didn't understand how this was possible. Standing in the middle of the circle, this man smiled. His smile was terrifying. He said that all the warriors should not cross his path because he was very tough. Wiping his bloody mouth with his hand, he was going to fight alone against everyone. Looking at his talisman, he remembered how much he missed home and the fried noodles. He did not hold the talisman in his hands. The talisman fell to the floor in a pool of blood. Lu Xu didn't expect to meet his opponent from the ruins here. The person with bloody tears rolling from his eyes was familiar to him. Looking from above at the bloody ritual being conducted below, our hero said that there was no way this ritual would end or be completed. Takashima was enraged. Is a kid like our hero really going to stop him from accomplishing his goal? The flying dragon, opening its huge maw, was preparing to swallow our hero whole. It was amusing to Takashima that an ordinary soldier was so cocky that he wanted to stop him. Our hero flew straight into the jaws of the blood dragon. But flying in, the guy wasn't going to die at all. 
He took out his magic flying spear and pointed it right into the mouth of the dragon. The entire space was filled with bright flashes of light. The strike was delivered with the most powerful energy. Little girl Xiaoyu felt that her brother had summoned spirit energy. Was he really in danger? She hoped that he would return home safely. The activating sword stabbed into the dragon's body, piercing through it. Lu Xu, possessing high energy, delivered blow after blow. This was not the end. A large number of flying weapons were circling around the guy, which he ordered to strike the dragon's body. Whirlwinds of powerful energy forcefully pierced through the red matter. Lu Xu stood and watched as the blood dragon used the vortex to absorb those weapons. Takashima stood as the blows could not penetrate through the protective shell to him. He said that he would definitely kill our hero after completing the ritual. Lu Xu hoped to prevail. He needed to break through the defenses at all costs and stop this bloody madness. Standing on the crest of the golden water, our hero flew straight into the center of the bloody ritual. He hoped to break Takashima's defense, who was smiling slyly as he watched our hero's attempts. But then a crack appeared in his defense. The levitating sword broke through the defense and headed straight for Takashima's head. Blood-red threads surrounded Takashima's arms. Lu Xu's golden beam headed to break through the tangled web, straight at Takashima. Casting spells of red tangled threads, he ordered our hero away. Takashima was terribly angry that the brat had made him waste so much energy. In his bloody hand, Takashima stung his subordinates to get extra energy for the transition from their deaths. Our hero dashed between the flying bloody strands straight at Takashima. Takashima didn't expect the guy to have so many levitating swords and have his defenses breached so quickly. The room was seen with blood-red threads like a spider web, and our hero was levitating above them. Lu Xu had succeeded in interrupting the bloody sacrificial ritual. Takashima was beyond angry because his power level remained between ranks. He was so angry that he shouted at the guy that he would tear him apart. Lu Xu saw that he had launched his sword too late, and his opponent had time to dodge. It was a tough fight. Takashima was incredibly strong. His body was strong and muscular. He hit our hero with a pretty hard punch. Takashima was looming over the guy, his body surrounded by red energy. Lu Xu had the feeling that all the bones were broken and the organs had turned to mush. Our hero felt that his opponent's energy had weakened. He had probably succeeded in interrupting the ritual. Lu Xu looked at his opponent and felt regret that he didn't have enough strength to kill him. But still he felt happy that he had succeeded in interrupting the bloody ritual. Our hero mentally said goodbye to his little sister. Xiaoyu sensed his thoughts and cried. She begged the guy not to leave her. The guy remembered that he had promised the little girl to always be together. Our hero thought how could he protect his little sister if he was about to die. He mentally begged for his snow mountain to collapse. It was the last ray of hope in the battle. Takashima loomed menacingly over the boy. He was ready to kill him in a second. But then suddenly, Blonde Carol showed up. She came to avenge Lu Xu, because she thought he was dead. Suddenly, Carol saw a silhouette on the wall. She couldn't believe her eyes that Lu Xu was alive. Our hero was happy that Carol finally showed up and suggested that she kill Takashima as soon as possible. Carol drew her sword, lightning flashed from her eyes. She delivered a lightning strike to her enemy. Her sword thundered through the bloody expanse of Takashima's defense. Everything was flooded with the electric light of the glittering lightning bolts around Takashima. Carol was piercing through the bloody defense. The lightning strikes were so strong that they left holes in the stone floor. Carol was breaking through Takashima's bloody defense with incredible speed and was facing him. Takashima hit the girl hard with his fist. A bright flash followed. It was unclear if Carol was still alive. Lu Xu was afraid that Carol was dead, for dust rose where she had fallen. But the girl was a strong fighter and survived. She said she was all right. Takashima shouted furiously when he saw that the girl had survived. Throwing lightning bolts, Carol said that she unfortunately didn't have enough strength to defeat Takashima. But she was scared that she might lose her beloved Lu Xu. Takashima said that since the girl wouldn't give up, he would kill her now. But then suddenly the sky darkened and thousands of birds circled around Takashima. This fighting technique was unique. Only masters of the highest rank could use it. Takashima didn't understand how the guy was able to master such a technique because it was unique. Our hero used a unique technique that only one master possessed. It was a supreme art. Lu Xu was transported and stood on top of a crumbling snow mountain. He stood on his star map and watched the mountain collapse. He felt a surge of incredible energy inside him, but it was still chaotic. He couldn't get it under control. He saw two swirling streams of energy below him, similar to a whirlpool. One was orange and the other blue. He remembered the old man's story about when the sea opened. The magical ocean would spill into the magical cave. But he saw his seas collide with the cave and merge into one. Everything was happening the opposite of what the old man had said. 
Our hero felt that the currents of developing energy in his body were too powerful. It was hard for him to endure it. Lu Xu watched as the mountain in his star chart cracked. His energy merged with the spirit of the levitating sword. He realized that the snow mountain was actually used to increase the spiritual power in the sword. Everything became clearer now. He remembered that he needed to return to the battle happening now. Carol stood there and looked at the flow of blood. She thought that Lu Xu had died. Their enemy was full of strength and intent to kill everyone. His hands and body were glistening with blood. Surrounded by streams of blood, he grabbed his sword and was about to kill Carol. Carol saw the danger coming at her and opened her eyes in horror. She lost her balance from the impact. Her body collapsed and she fell to the rocks. Unconsciously, she lay among the debris of the rocks, breathing heavily. Their enemy, surrounded by streams of blood, towered over them. He said goodbye to his enemies, about to deliver the final blow. Carol did not want and was not going to die, for she was the offspring of a deity. Our hero couldn't move from the severe injury he had sustained, but that didn't mean he was going to give up. He ordered his levitating sword to bear forward. The enemy realized that our Carol was not an easy one and summoned a blood wall spell. But the defenses he had built could not withstand the blow of the levitating sword. The enemy caught the sword with his hands, but holding the sword was getting harder. The sword with pressure continued its movements from above. The spirit of the sword appeared. The sword pierced through Takashima's head and a look of horror came into his eyes. He lost his balance and dead fell to the floor. After this fight, our hero was badly injured and didn't know if he could recover from such injuries. If he couldn't move for a while longer, the newly arrived soldiers would definitely finish him off. He didn't want to die. Carol was also badly injured. She turned to our hero and hugged him. She cried and said that no one from the organization wanted to help her avenge his death. She was glad that the guy actually turned out to be alive. Tears sprang from her eyes. The girl helped our hero up. She took the guy on her shoulders and carried him on herself, saving him from this place. The girl said that it would not be difficult for her to do so and continued to carry our hero on her shoulders, although she also had wounds on her body. Our hero saw the bloody warrior and wanted to talk to him. He took his box and absorbed the body of this guy. He thanked the young man and mentally said goodbye to him. The girl said that she wanted to live her whole life with Lu Xu and was willing to wait as long as it took. But when they left the building, they saw enemies waiting for them. It looked like they were facing another important battle that couldn't be avoided. Carol pointed her sword at the head of the enemy clan. She asked who was behind this girl's back. Carol was very surprised that the girl knew Lu Xu. This girl's gaze read boundless love and respect. Did she really come to help Lu Xu too? The girl said her name was Sakura and she could help escape from the island. Sakura had a special armored car that they used to move around the island. Sakura was in love with our hero, so she was interested in the relationship between Lu Xu and Carol. Sakura answered that the guy didn't give in to her tricks or any temptations. He remained steadfast. The girls walked side by side. Both of them were in love with the guy. Carol carried our hero on her shoulders and he continued to sleep soundly. The girls were discussing how they met Lu Xu and agreed that he was always talking about money. Just then, Heavenly King Netan came out to meet them. He ordered Carol to hand the guy over to him. A few hours before, the head of the Heavenly Organization had received information that said Takashima had decided to use the clan members as a sacrifice. They had learned that Lu Xu was unable to evacuate from there and was now among those victims. The Heavenly King said that he would save him after learning that the guy was there. He flashed up into the sky and flew away, leaving behind a golden light. Once on the island, he asked Carol to give him the boy. The girls were surprised. Why would one of China's legendary fighters personally come to pick up this guy? The Heavenly King saw that the guy was seriously injured. What had happened during the battle with Takashima? The Heavenly King asked the girls who killed Takashima. After all, he was a warrior of the highest rank. The girls replied that they didn't know who killed that warrior. The Heavenly King thought that the girls wanted to protect the guy, so they kept their mouths shut. He took Lu Xu, who was unconscious, on his shoulders and was about to fly. He was stopped by Carol and offered to cooperate with the Heavenly Network to become allies. The Heavenly King said that after the guy recovered, he would send him to discuss the matter. He is in charge of the Heavenly Network's foreign policy. Right now, the Heavenly King will carry the guy home to help him recover from his injuries. The Heavenly King swept the golden light high into the sky, leaving only light behind him. Carol said goodbye to the boy, saying she looked forward to seeing him next time. The Heavenly King, along with Lu Xu, walked back to his home. The Heavenly King said that the guy was seriously injured, but they managed to save him. The Heavenly King said that when he flew in, Takashima was already dead. He didn't kill him. He didn't know who killed Takashima. The girl didn't say anything about what had happened, 
and Lu Xu was unconscious. Inside, there were a lot of sword marks on the walls. But what had happened there, he didn't know. The Heavenly King felt that there was a sudden surge of magical powers within a three-kilometer radius. The man with glasses thought that this was the inheritance of the levitating sword. Did Lu Xu really kill Takashima? The Heavenly King said that they would only know the answer when Lu Xu woke up. They discussed that an unknown boy who sold stinky tofu had grown to such strength so quickly. Lu Xu was lying unconscious in a beautiful wooden room in a clean bed. He was being carefully cared for. He woke up and rubbed his eyes. He wondered where he was now and what had happened. The injuries on his body were almost healed. He realized he was back home, but he didn't know who had brought him back. Master Shur brought him medicine and hot soup. He was taking care of Lu Xu. The two of them sat down at the table to eat lunch. Master Shur praised the boy for the tasks he had completed, very difficult ones, and wanted to ask more about Takashima's death. But our hero didn't want to share what had happened to him. He said he passed out and didn't remember anything. He brought medals of merit and handed them to our hero, as well as the rank of colonel and new documents. The guy opened the box and saw these medals and a new ID. The Heavenly King asked how it was possible to kill Takashima, since the guy's rank was not enough. But Lu Xu didn't want to admit that he was the one who killed Takashima. He said that his rank wasn't high enough yet. The Heavenly King didn't believe the guy, but he decided to keep his mouth shut. The leaders of the Celestial Network wanted to know the details of the guy's trip. He realized that he couldn't avoid the interrogation after all. The main problem was explaining the presence of so many spirit stones that our hero wanted to keep. The Heavenly Network was one of the highest organizations that symbolized absolute power. The higher the position, the more responsibility. The guy didn't want to be part of the organization and selflessly give his life for someone. After all, every member of this organization was willing to die for the heavenly network and their goal. He was walking alone through the snowy city, wearing only a light sweater, and he was very cold. His little sister Xiao Yu appeared. They went to eat hot soup for lunch. She asked why our hero was so sad. He replied that they wanted to promote him, but he was still thinking. They held hands and walked down the snowy cold street. The girl said she would always support her brother under any circumstances. There was snow on the street, and the sun was shining brightly. Lu Xu and Xiao Yu, happy, went to the cafe to drink the hot tea they loved so much during the cold days in the orphanage. They sat and enjoyed the very tasty soup and roasted meat, and discussed everything that had happened recently. The lunch was very expensive, and our hero didn't have any money with him. His little sister paid for the lunch. He said she hadn't wasted any time. She sold onions in his absence. A few days later, Lu Xu finally found himself at his house. There were flowers in the yard, a vegetable garden growing. Everything was native. He sat on the couch and enjoyed the quiet time at home. He noticed that in his absence, the house was shining clean. Everything was cleaned and sparkling. He thought about the fact that soon he would have to appear in front of security and say his decision whether he wanted to work there. That question was tormenting him. The situation overseas had been tense lately. The Celestial Network Organization needed a leader who would take over the affairs of foreign policy. Celestial King Netan wanted to send our hero to work in the Security Bureau. Lu Xu came to work at the Security Bureau, where he was greeted by all the staff and welcomed. The teacher said that next week all the students should go to a training camp that would last for three months. The boy came to the school. When the teacher saw him, he fainted and passed out because he thought he saw a ghost. His classmates couldn't believe their eyes either, because they all thought Lu Xu was dead. Our hero couldn't help feeling like he didn't want to go back to school anymore. The upcoming training camp was a chance to start living a normal student life again. Our hero was excited. He received a package that arrived to him from another country. He thought it was probably from Carol. This parcel contained two million euros that he had received from Carol. His little sister asked why she sent so much money. Lu Xu replied that he had saved her life in the ruins, so the parcel was a thank you. Little sis thought about how she felt awkward remembering Carol. Even though she was grateful to her, she felt jealousy. The little girl said that she too would go to the training camp and become stronger in the future and would definitely save Lu Xu too. Lu Xu was monitoring the market. He noticed that the Celestial Network had started to actively trade in the black market. Many factions were under constant scrutiny because of the conflict. He felt annoyed that it was the leaders of the Celestial Network who were playing their political games and weaving intrigue. He needed to think about how to sell his spirit stones profitably and safely. He thought about the fact that it wouldn't be long before the security system would start controlling all of the local sources of income. So he needed to proceed with caution and think about secret locations that weren't tied to the city. Thus, he decided that his connections and intelligence would be relevant right now. 
Guy asked Squirrel to see if there were any hidden black markets near Los Angeles. Our hero's little sister Xiao Yu was also going to the training camp. There were many military vehicles and seeing off people gathered at the sports field. All the students hugged their family members tightly before leaving for three months to say goodbye. Leading by the hand, Lu Xu came to see off his little sister. The little girl wanted to protect her brother, so she packed her suitcase and went to this camp. Lu Xu stood there sad. It seemed to him that it was Carol who influenced his sister's desire to become a member of the Heavenly Network, and she was jealous of Carol. Lu Xu felt great sadness, but he felt that he had to let his sister go and everything would be fine. A voice came over the loudspeaker announcing that all students should go to the bus, as departure was coming soon. The little girl boarded the bus and looked out for her brother to say goodbye to him. Lu Xu stood among the crowd and waved goodbye. The next day, our hero went to school, happy that he could devote time to a normal student life while his sister was at training camp. But at school, everyone was awaiting the news that two girls had disappeared, having never made it to the training camp. Classmates looked at our hero with admiration and considered him a god of perfection. But none of the students knew the path our hero had to travel. He was no longer the man he used to be. No one knew that the very man who killed Takashima was Lu Shu, and how many people he had to kill along the way. It was still early when our hero got out of school, and he decided to go check out the black market that the squirrel had found for him. When the guy got to the market, it was already dark. He decided that he needed to disguise himself first. Lu Shu had 90,000 spirit stones that he could sell in this black market by changing his hair and appearance. He moved on with confidence. Our hero decided to try to sell a spirit stone to the Heavenly Network, but he couldn't get through and was furious about it. The leaders of the Heavenly Network watched the guy's actions and realized that since he had found the black market, he really had quite a few spirit stones with him. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to sell them. Meanwhile, Lu Xu walked to the Iron Gate and knocked on it. A man opened the door and asked what he had come for. Lu Xu replied that he had something to sell. The man asked if our hero had a recommendation. Lu Xu did not have a recommendation. He paid the entrance fee with a spiritual stone, and the man let him in, saying that you can't sell fakes in the black market. There he met groups of people. From one woman, he felt no aura. Perhaps she had blocked it with magic. It looked like these people were going to sell something valuable on the black market. Our hero followed them. They descended the stairs to a room that looked like a bomb shelter. The man who escorted them into this building told everyone to proceed to the Buddha land. Lu Xu wondered who they were calling Buddha. Who is this person they are paying so much reverence to? Lu Xu took out his leeks and began to sell them, which made the market manager angry. After all, leeks didn't have to be sold in the black market. The guy came up and told Lu Xu that this group of people wanted to take over the black market step by step and control it. Lu Xu replied that an academy for practitioners would soon open in this place. This place will become the epicenter of the perfected ones. After a while, this city would become a battlefield. The clan girl was on the lookout to purchase spirit stones, but they were in short supply right now. These clans wanted to take over the black market over time. But this market was actually controlled by Li Xiao. When our hero saw him, he realized that he would help him. In the black market, Li Xiao met his ex-girlfriend who was very angry with him because he just disappeared one day. The girl was angry with him. A fight broke out between them. Seeing them fighting furiously, our hero decided to help his friend. This sweet couple was fighting very loudly. They risked destroying everything around them. He decided to activate and use the sword fighting pavilion art. But the principal recognized this type of martial art and was able to guess and reveal our hero's identity. Lu Xu couldn't let that happen, so he decided to just run away before the principal guessed who he was. The next morning, the principal called the guy into his office and asked him if he had been to the black market yesterday. Lu Xu realized that the principal was very guessing, so he decided to admit that it was him and tell him that he wanted to sell spirit stones there. The director said that he had some influential families who might be interested in the spirit stones. He would help Lu Xu sell them. Li Xiao made arrangements with 11 of China's most famous families to sell them the spirit stones in exchange for control on the black market. The leaders of the Celestial Network realized that our hero had taken thousands of spirit stones for himself from the base on the island. So how did the Celestial Network get the latest information about the location and pictures of the puppeteer? He was supposed to go to the Middle East next to increase his power. After a couple of days, our hero came to the black market again to meet with different influential families of China. The guy wanted to exchange spirit stones for magic weapons and artifacts. The head of the Heavenly Network gave our hero a new magic sword. The sword had amazingly strong magical energy. The guy opened his mouth in astonishment. This sword was incredibly beautiful, 
and although the heavenly network had cut off all sources of income, but it was worth it. A human spirit emerged from the sword. Was this really how the sword manifested its spirit? A man wearing a long cloak with long blue hair fluttering appeared from the sword. Lu Xu, after seeing the sword spirit, decided to ask his name. The spirit was incredibly handsome. The spirit said his name was Hai and asked our hero, is he the new sword master? But the spirit rejected the new master. He said the guy was too weak for this sword. The Sky King told his counterpart about the gift for the lad. The sword spirit had a very uneasy character, so he and Lu Xu suited each other. Otherwise, the heavenly king would have kept the sword. The sword spirit was annoyed by the guy's stubbornness. It had never met such a master before. Lu Xu realized that the sword was good at everything but its spirit. Now it was clear why the heavenly king had given it to him, to mock him. But our hero decided not to give up so easily. He took a bucket of potatoes and used his precious sword to peel them. Spirit was furious at such disrespectful treatment. After all, no one had ever used it for such a purpose. Spirit gritted his teeth as he watched the guy peel the potatoes and didn't understand how one could treat a sacred sword like that. When the potatoes were done, the boy came up with a new trick. He took the cabbage out of the house. He took the sacred sword and began to shred the cabbage with it. The spirit screamed that he couldn't take it anymore. Never before had he seen anyone insult the sword like this. The spirit took and returned his sword again, unable to watch this anymore. But Lu Xu urged it again with a drop of his blood. Thus their fight lasted for two days. Our hero endlessly summoned the sword spirit. Lu Xu returned to the house. His little sister was at the training camp. He felt sad and lonely. And besides, the New Year's holiday was coming soon. He thought about how it had been a long time since he had celebrated the holiday alone. He went outside and started practicing with his new sword. The sword spirit appeared and said that the guy's movements were too ugly. But if he sincerely asked, the spirit could teach and help. The guy was surprised that the spirit decided to come out himself and offered to help. And in response, he pulled out a potato and started peeling it with his sword again. Tired of the recalcitrance of the spirit of the sword, our hero crouched under a tree, but he would make it respect itself or be afraid. He had to figure out how to do it. Lu Xu was aware of all the sword spirits and artifacts behaving strangely with him. Perhaps it was the heavenly king that was testing him like this. After a few days of unsuccessful battles and fighting with Master Hai, our hero went to school. At school, some of the students began to speculate that perhaps Lu Xu was the master of the black market. When he got home, he looked at the purple ball he had traded in the black market. He thought about his awakening and the existence of the ancient bloodline theory. He remembered his childhood, how he, a sickly and weak orphan, had been abandoned at the gates of an orphanage. He found his spiritual practices quite by accident after an accident. Perhaps the voice in this balloon will help him learn more about his lineage and provide an opportunity to go back in time. Our hero fell into the abyss of consciousness of this purple balloon. It was as if not only his consciousness but also his entire body had entered the ball this time. This ball actually turned out to be the whole world our hero had fallen into. Suddenly the guy heard the same voice that he had heard earlier in the fog. This voice was calling him. Lu Xu asked who was calling him. He looked up into the sky, hoping to see who was calling him. Near a huge rock was a silhouette shrouded in chains, but our hero could not see it. The man asked why the boy had come here. Lu Xu replied that he had gotten the purple ball by chance and had come here to achieve enlightenment in his spiritual consciousness. That person had long hair and a strong body that had scars on it. His hands and feet were chained. He knew nothing about the balloon. Lu Xu wanted to ask this man about his lineage while he had time, but the man in chains didn't understand what the guy was talking about. Although he seemed familiar, it was a long time ago, and he couldn't say anything specific. Lu Xu asked, who was this man and how long had he been around? He wanted to know the answers. Lu Xu realized that this man was trapped in a dark place where no light penetrated. He had an idea and took out his mirror. He pointed the mirror at the man, which glowed very powerfully and blinded him. The man who was used to being in the dark cringed and screamed at such a bright light. He covered himself with his hand and asked the guy to take that mirror away. Lu Xu was glad that he was able to earn negative emotion points from this man so easily. The guy who was chained up was named Menga. At first, our hero thought he was a divine omnipotent, but he was very afraid of the bright light and asked for it to be removed. Lu Xu noticed that this dark mist, which was everywhere like a snake, enveloped his arm. Was it really dangerous to humans? Our hero looked at the guy who was chained up and saw that his blue aura was protecting him from the black mist. Following suit, the guy decided to create a protective golden aura for himself. He stood on one of the large air stones, and a golden aura that resembled a Pikachu appeared around him. 
Our hero's golden snake was absorbing all the black fog. Lu Xu realized that his golden water could not only create an aura, but also absorb this fog. This was a surprise. The man hadn't seen anyone who could absorb black chaos atomization. He asked, who was our hero? Lu Xu threatened that if this old man didn't say who he was, our hero would take out his mirror again. The old man replied that he was the Northern Celestial Emperor Ching Kong. Lu Xu blinded that man with a bright light, and the man swore heavily. But our hero wanted to know the truth. Obviously, this man was lying to him. Lu Xu thought that this manga, and perhaps the puppeteer, came from another world. The man was looking at a mirror that could easily illuminate the abyss of chaos for now. After illuminating the place with a bright beam, our hero noticed that nothing could be seen. The man said that the abyss of chaos was incredibly deep and that it was impossible to see anything in it. Lu Xu had a map, so he decided to climb up the high cliff and see what was there. Our hero could safely come and go from the chaos abyss and the man didn't want to tell him all the details. He decided to bait this man with food. When he said the word food, the man's eyes opened wide and drool flowed from his mouth. Menga, hearing about the food, said that he had been in this place for so long that he had never hoped to taste food again. The man said that if our hero gave him a chicken, he would answer any three questions. But the boy didn't believe the man because the man always told untruths. Lu Xu went back home. He realized that he could not get anything interesting from that man except negative emotion points. There was nothing useful, no sword spirit, no abyss prisoner he could not obtain. Lu Xu began to exercise his sword again. The sword spirit saw that this kid was really talented. Then he finally achieved being accepted into the Los Angeles Academy. He got a flash drive with access to the Dark Kingdom's website. He inserted it into his computer and decided to check what was going on in the world in the artifact trading market. A fat man came to visit Lu Xu with an offer to go to the ruins again. In this city, there was a graveyard for a thousand burials in the Tomb of the Sun. The fat man said that there were many unsolved mysteries there. Fatty said that not everyone gets such a cool opportunity to go abroad and not do boring things like going to the movies, going to the bazaar, going to the store. Lu Xu replied that he would think about this treasure hunt. It's always an interesting challenge. But the fatty got a call from the heavenly king and told them not to even think about the ruins and to stay in the city. With tears in his eyes, the fatty said that the heavenly king had forbidden them to go to the ruins. But Lu Xu clarified that the heavenly king had called the fat man specifically and forbade him, but not our hero. Lu Xu showed the academy's acceptance letter and that he was enrolled in the course, and all the students in the course were going on a mission to the ruins. Fatty felt betrayed and abandoned because he was forbidden to go on the mission. Lu Xu started exploring the new ruins and preparing for this assignment. He needed new items. He went shopping at the nearest mall, and there he was picked up, and he rode his motorcycle to his new assignment. The instructor told everyone about the ruins and the danger, and asked that all participants take the expedition responsibly. The students, lined up in a row, responded to the instructor accordingly. The armored car with all the students raced in the middle of the night to the borders of the ruins. All the expedition participants were checking their equipment and belongings. From excitement, they felt unsure and were shocked that our hero had fallen asleep so easily. They traveled day and night, and the next day they arrived at the place where, after checking their documents, they had to get out and continue on foot. They arrived at the camp and lined up for the ID check. Lu Xu had the highest-ranked pass signed by the Heavenly King. This pass gave access to all areas. As our hero was about to run away to explore these ruins alone, he noticed that the soldiers with sticks were rapidly running somewhere. Then he saw huge lizards with long tongues and large spikes. These lizards that lived in this desert had large, sharp teeth and red burning eyes. They were of enormous size. They noticed that there were more and more lizards, and they were all crawling towards the center of the camp. The soldiers from the camp fired their weapons at these lizards. The lizards also had different levels of strength and ranks. There were several high strength level lizards here, and the masters needed help. Lu Xu took out his blue dragon statue from the box. Magical flying spears swiftly flew at these thick skinned lizards. With a single strike to the neck, the guy killed a lizard of enormous size that exceeded the size of a human. After that, Lu Xu activated the power of his flying daggers. His classmate, greatly frightened, ran away from these lizards and called out to our hero for help. Lu Xu stood in front of those lizards and with a wave of his hand, he launched his magical energy. Then he traveled further and found himself near a cave. The guy felt slight vibrations and suspected that something might be underground. He ordered his acquaintances to stay upstairs and he would go down alone and see what it could be. His classmates told him that it could be very dangerous down there and he couldn't go alone without knowing what was down there. Then our hero offered to go together knowing that his comrades would be scared. 
Lu Xu jumped down into the crevice between the rocks to find out what was underground. Jumping down, our guy found himself in a dark space. His path was lit by a flying sword and his shining dragon box. He was racing through an underground cave and didn't notice that a giant lizard was looming over him from the cave wall. When this lizard noticed the guy, drool flowed from its mouth. Lu Xu abruptly turned around and took out his magic mirror. The giant lizard, which was used to being in total darkness, was blinded by the bright light coming from this mirror. The lizard fell from the ceiling of the cave with a great crash, blinded by this light. Our hero snake injected a special poison into its prey and devoured it. Lu Xu was pleased with his Shen Shui's new ability. The snake responded with love to the guy and showed that it didn't want to go back but wanted to help him. The boy thought it was dangerous to be alone in the cave and did not return the snake to the box, but traveled further with her alone. On the walls, he noticed huge lizard tracks. It seems that they were really coming up from somewhere from the depths of the cave upwards. Our hero traveled down the dark tunnels that were not far from the broken camp. But suddenly he saw hundreds of huge cannibal lizards on the walls of the cave. The boy thought he was too naive to think that if the lizards came out, they would destroy everything around them. It was possible to deal with them inside the caves. He decided to start by blocking their way and forcefully slammed them against a large rock. The group of Varens looked too organized. It seemed as if someone was controlling them. Lu Xu directed Shen Shui's absorbing power at the lizards. Hundreds of lizards were absorbed by Shen Shui's energy, and the little snake that lived inside the box was happily absorbing these lizards. The lizards were in this dwelling-like space with their mouths gaping helplessly. The guy aimed his flying swords directly at these lizards, but then he noticed a huge lizard moving towards him from above. It wanted to bite the guy, but he deftly dodged its huge mouth. He activated his levitating sword and pointed it straight at the lizard. Lu Xu easily defeated this huge ogre. Then he noticed that the other lizards were trying to escape up the cliff. Lu Xu thought about the fact that there was a secret leader and boss in this cave, and one should go to him first. His snake pointed the way in the opposite direction, and he followed it deep into the cave. As he descended down, he saw hundreds of glowing red eyes in the darkness. They were lizards that surrounded our hero. Lu Xu got excited and ordered his Shen Shui to attack these lizards. The Shen Shui easily devoured a huge number of lizards. The snake looked very satisfied, and the size of the magic water approached the size of a lake. Moving in the corner of the cave and feeling invincible, our hero came across something strange and incomprehensible. It turned out to be a giant lizard which opened its mouth. Seeing it, our hero was frightened because he had never seen such huge lizards. This giant was chained to the ground with pegs, its paws could not move and its tongue was crushed. Lu Xu freed this lizard that had been in a chained position for a thousand years. The lizard said that it had been chased by the enemy for a long time. When he managed to trap and imprison it, the lizard could not move and remained in that position for many years. After its release, the lizard attacked our hero. Lu Xu released his Shen Shui to devour the lizard. He was ready for a fight. The stream of Shen Shui entered the lizard's mouth and like a wave from the sea, he wanted to stroke it. The lizard begged for help and begged to be spared. The boy said it was too late to ask for mercy. He watched the lizard being devoured. Lu Xu stood on the stream of water, which was already similar in size to a large tsunami wave, and thought that his magic water had gained a lot of power during this trip. Then he suddenly noticed that his little treasure-absorbing snake had disappeared somewhere. He found his little snake that had drunk all the divine water in this lake. But it looked like the little snake had evolved. It was becoming dragon-like. The guy thought that the sword spirit might know the answer, what to do next. He drew his sword to ask the sword spirit for help and advice, what to do next. The spirit appeared and said that the snake had turned into a dragon demon. The sword spirit pulled out and held out a lotus-like flower. The dragon demon reached for this lotus flower. When the snake swallowed the lotus flower, everything around it lit up with a gleam of bright colors. Instead of the little snake, they saw a beautiful purple dragon with big paws and luxurious mustache. The boy asked the sword spirit why he helped the dragon and why help him if the demon dragon was the sword spirit's enemy. The sword spirit replied that the way of the dragons was difficult because it took courage to simply stand up to the world and humans had no right to tell the dragon spirits what was right and what was wrong. The boy asked if it was hard to turn into a dragon. He thought that this little dragon would be hard to seal in his box. He decided to name the snake that drank so much chaos divine water and give it the name Chaos. Lu Xu walked further down the dark cave and saw some sparkling artifacts. He tried to reach for one of them, but it caused a mountain of rocks to sprinkle in different directions. It was like an earthquake. He saw lightning. Perhaps it was a punishment from the dragons. 
His buddies upstairs saw lightning suddenly appear in the sky and there was thunder. They were hoping that it wasn't their buddy Lu Shu who had done something stupid. They thought that maybe their buddy needed help and decided to see what was going on. As they approached the cave, they saw a bright lightning light illuminating everything and coming from the cave. Our hero stood in the cave and saw everything around him shining with the bright glitter of lightning. And out of the air, the silhouette of a blue dragon looked at him. Suddenly, golden firebirds with long tails appeared in the sky. The boy didn't realize what was happening. The blue dragon was flying, and the firebirds were rushing around him. All around, electric lightning filled the space, and the guy was glad that the golden pillars worked as lightning rods. Our hero decided not to waste time and launched his magic vessel into the lightning. The vessel flew swiftly and hit the electric stream of bright lightning. After that, he launched his levitating swords into the dark space. Holding his sword firmly in his hands, he thought that the only way out for him was to put all his strength into a single strike. He drew it out and struck fearlessly at the lightning. A huge explosion erupted all around, rocks sprinkled from the walls of the cave. Lu Shu lay at the bottom of the cave and rejoiced that he was still alive. Our hero's classmates threw him a rope into the gorge and called his name to get him out of the cave. Lying on the rocks, the boy answered them that he was alive. The dark sky was ablaze with bright flashes of lightning. Our hero was taken out of the cave, carried to the camp and put to bed. A classmate said that our hero needed to be more careful next time and that he may have been struck by lightning. Lu Xu irritably replied that he needed to rest and sleep and escorted his classmate out of the room. The classmate didn't understand why Lu Xu didn't want to admit that he had just been struck by lightning and was hiding it. Lying in bed, the boy was glad he was still alive. He needed at least three days to recover his body. Looking into his box, he saw in it a magical vessel and a small dragon he named Chaos. Suddenly, on his energy mount, he saw a large amount of thunder sword birth energy. The boy was glad to have such a strong sword on his snowy mountain and went to bed with pleasure. The next morning, the first thing he saw were the boys from the camp gathered around him. They all said it was the first time they had ever seen a man who had survived a lightning strike and wanted to see. Then the doctors came in and kicked everyone out of the tent, saying that the patient was in shock and there was no need to spread bacteria. Two doctors entered the tent and brought medicine. Three days later, our hero was as good as new and came to his classmate. They were sitting near a campfire surrounded by rocks, and the buddy asked to take him along. After much persuasion, Lu Xu agreed to take his buddy along. They drove a jeep through the desert, approaching the ruins. They turned out to be an incredibly beautiful place. Our hero looked at the desert with admiration. He saw that the ground under his feet had a mirror image, but it was incredibly difficult to move on it. He suddenly saw his classmate who was excited to see him. The surface of the ruins resembled slippery ice, and his comrade kept losing his balance. As they moved through the ruins, they noticed a tree in the distance and a man underneath it. This man was trying to climb up the tree with all his might. Our hero suggested to come closer and see what is valuable there. Our hero made a raft to navigate the mirrored surface of the ruins. The days and nights in the ruins were too different from reality. Here time passed differently, and danger could be waiting at any moment. The boy got off the raft and noticed that the structure of the surface had changed. It was firmer and could be walked on. They needed to find a place to rest and build a shelter to survive the coming night. They saw some person flying in the sky at high speed. It was the buddy's grandfather. There was a golden aura glowing around him. The guys were happy to see the grandfather, for they hadn't seen him for a long time. The grandfather was angry at his grandson for slowly improving himself and taking the easy way out. Afterward, he got to the point and said that they were on the right path. Next, an island awaits them. At night, the mirrored surface they are standing on will become a huge ocean, and there will be strange creatures that are very aggressive. Grandpa says that it will soon get dark, and for them to hurry to get to the island, he would further search the mirror surface for the students and help them get there. Grandpa flew away. Only a golden ray on the blue sky remained from him. Our heroes had already walked for the third hour along the mirrored ruins, but the island was still nowhere to be seen. They were tired and exhausted. And then suddenly in the distance showed the green trees of the island. From afar, the island seemed very big. When they reached the island, they were stopped by a high stone wall. It seemed that the students who had landed on this island earlier had built stone fortifications here. They saw other students who had first landed on the island waving to them from the makeshift fortress. A man who introduced himself as Mo came out to greet them. He was the captain of one of the brigades and was happy to welcome our heroes to this island. The new rule of the Celestial Network was that the island was divided into a term of two parts to garrison the defense line. If a new person arrived on the island, they would be included in the unit they appeared on. Our hero apologized to the captain and said he had a couple of important things to do. He quickly ran away. 
The captain fell at the feet of the guy, begging him to stay in this fortress. They say they don't have enough combat power. Our hero tried to escape 47 times, but the captain stopped him each time, asking him to stay. But after receiving money from the captain, our hero could not refuse him and stayed. The captain told him that their enemies were fighters who were armed with tridents. Their defenses were incredibly strong. It was difficult to deal with them. They wore bronze armor on their bodies. Outwardly, these fighters had an unusual skin color was blue. And after death, the body would turn into dust and dissolve into the air. The captain told them to prepare for battle. They would fight all together against these fighters. Fatty tried to keep our hero in this camp because he liked the girl. Lu Xu asked why his buddy came up to meet the girl. Captain Mo stood on the fortification wall and gazed at the watery distance. He was admiring the place, but he also realized how dangerous it was. Suddenly the captain was caught, and our hero managed to grab him, thus he saved the captain. In the stones of the protective wall a flying trident could be seen. This trident came very close and almost hit the captain. The captain thanked our hero for saving his life. If it wasn't for the guy, he would have been dead by now. Our hero jumped on the stone wall of the fortification and pulled out his trident. An old man arrived with important news. He ordered all the brigades to strengthen their defenses. The enemy was closing in. The 42nd Brigade saw water warriors, protected by armor, appear from the sea. The brigade members looked at the warriors emerging from the sea and felt fear of battle. The captain said that they must hold the territory and by no means surrender but show their strength. Our hero took his new magical weapon, determined to test its power in action. Grabbing this weapon, he lunged at the water monster with fury. The monsters were protected by armor. Their bodies were blue in color and their eyes were missing. Lu Xu felt like he was in his native element. After all, his awakened power was of aquatic origin. He moved through the water with speed. The guy looked incredibly strong, agile, and fast. He alone ran through the water, killing the water monsters one by one. Monsters poorly reflected the attack of the guy and losing balance fell into the water and dissolved in it. A friend of our hero, seeing how he fearlessly fights with monsters, rushed to his aid. It was seen how many water monsters came out of the ocean and the whole shore was strewn with their dead bodies. Fatty, a classmate having gathered courage and watching the bravery of our hero, grabbed a stick and hit one of the monsters on the head. People surrounded our heroes. One of the team members suggested that the captain go to the aid of our heroes. The 42nd crew rushed to the aid of Lu Xu and his buddy. The warriors of the Dark Force were coming out of the sea. Their tridents towered above their armor. The men of the 42nd Brigade noticed that help was approaching them from the land. The captain of the 42nd Brigade said that their help was desperately needed elsewhere, but they could handle it here since Lu Xu was with them. Lu Xu was able to deal with the Sea Monster Clan quite quickly. The backup unit of the 43rd Brigade was retreating. They needed help. Lu Xu raised his trident above him, and called out for everyone to help the 43rd Brigade that needed help. Together with his trident, our hero headed towards these sea monsters. He hit the sea monster in the neck with a strong strike of his trident. Lu Xu handled all the sea monsters by himself. A few hours later, our hero sat on a coastal rock and looked out into the distance of the ocean. Lu Xu asked the captain how many casualties after this attack. Saying that they would give priority to rest, the rest would take turns to take up the line of defense. The guy himself stayed on shore, watching the ocean. The mate found out what regatta Lu Xu's little sister was in and suggested that our hero go and see her. The little girl stood on a high rock and looked at the sea horizon. Xiao Yu heard a familiar voice nearby. She looked over and saw her brother whom she missed so much. Lu Xu looked at the girl fondly and stretched out his arms to embrace her. After all, it had been so long since they had seen each other. Tears sprang from the girl's eyes and she threw herself into her brother's arms. She said she had been waiting for him for so long and had given up hope that she would ever get out of this place. She said she was hurt. More snacks she had brought with her were almost out. Lu Xu took out bags of delicious food and said he brought her presents. After such a long break, he bought everything especially for her, snacks, drinks, jelly, before going on the expedition. Our hero noticed that the girl had matured a lot while at the training camp. She began to think about protecting others and became responsible. He praised her a lot. Xiao Yu was very pleased with her brother's praise. She thanked him. A new troop of sea monsters with tridents emerged from the ocean. The tridents flew straight at the little girl from behind with great speed. The boy was terribly angry that someone dared to touch his little sister. His eyes flashed angrily with fire. He channeled his magic power and a vortex appeared in the ocean. The water monsters couldn't resist the guy's destructive, powerful aura. Lu Xu's strength was simply amazing. After the victory, the guys, together with Xiao Yu, sat on the ocean shore, hugging each other. 
Lu Xu towered above the defense line and saw that their camp had been bombed and destroyed, an attack and assault had happened. He left his sissy to hold the defense line on the beach and went to the aid of the 42nd Brigade himself. 42nd Brigade took a defensive position, but to cope with monsters alone was quite difficult for them. They were waiting for our hero to help. Not giving up hope that he would come to the rescue, they stood back to back to repel the attack of the water monsters. Suddenly, our hero appeared and threw all the monsters back with the magic power of his weapon. Lu Xu was determined. His posture was menacing as he towered on the stone fence, looking out for other monsters. Then the guy had an idea to try and remove the armor from the sea monsters. After taking the armor off the monsters, he ordered the others to do the same and put on the armor. Blue was first. The rest were to follow him in formation. The entire brigade followed his instructions. They fought fiercely against the water monsters. Lu Xu told everyone to kill more bronze warriors to get a full set of defense. He urged his brigade to go help the others to get as many sets of defense as possible. Lu Xu noticed that there were water monsters coming from the other side. The monsters had transparent eyes and their teeth were sharp like sharks. They opened their mouths, intending to eat our hero. The guy along with his brigade went on the attack to get as much armor as possible and take them all. When all the monsters were destroyed and the brigades manned the defenses, they still had a large amount of armor and tridents left. Lu Xu, as usual, had an idea to sell these uniforms profitably. Our hero approached the captain and offered to buy a set of protection. Lu Xu never missed a chance to make money. The captain said that he agreed to the deal and asked him to bring him 20 sets of armor, and he would give a promissory note. The crew supported Lu Xu's idea to sell the protection sets all over the island. They went around the island offering their classmates to buy armor to protect themselves from the Sea Clan. On his display, the guy noticed that he was receiving a large amount of negative emotions from somewhere. Perhaps someone was controlling the sea monsters, and that was why they were angry. But these reflections were interrupted by the appearance of a gray-haired old man. Our hero was surprised and asked why the old man was here. It was necessary to change the location and replace the mobile unit. Mobile brigades belonged to elite units, and if they were put in their place, it was a great honor. Now the guy would have to work hard, and he was glad that his brigade had protective armor. He, having gathered his strength, set out for a new battle with the sea monsters. The team in armor, led by our hero, rushed to the aid of his classmates. With his strength and dexterity, Lu Xu easily destroyed the monsters one by one. But our hero noticed that one of his classmates was wounded and called others to help him. All members of the brigade readily followed the guy's instructions, helping the wounded and destroying monsters. The man rushed to help the wounded guy who had a spear sticking out of his leg. They had fought for more than five hours, and fatigue was completely normal. Some of the brigade couldn't stand the fight. Seeing how tired his brigade members were, Lu Xu decided to finish the battle alone. He summoned his sword and magic energy to help him. Everything around him was filled with bright streams of energy. The guy folded his hands in a meditative gesture, activating all his power. The monsters fled and fell into the destroying streams of strong energy. The guy stood and looked at the sea, concentrating all his spiritual power to destroy all the monsters. The behavior of these sea monsters was strange, but so far this secret had not been solved. Our hero looked carefully into the distance of the ocean, trying to understand where the monsters appeared from and where they disappeared to. They saw that a new army of sea monsters was approaching them, but for some reason they were not wearing armor and armor. The monsters looked very ugly. They opened their mouths, making terrifying sounds and approaching Lu Xu's brigade. The monsters didn't have time to reach their goal. They were all tossed into the air by a powerful fast wave. All the monsters were single-handedly destroyed by the little girl who was Lu Xu's little sister. All the girls thanked Xiao Yu for her help. If it wasn't for her, they wouldn't have been able to deal with the monsters. Suddenly, a sharp dagger flew near the little girl's face. She grabbed this weapon that they wanted to kill her with and stabbed it into the ground with force. Xiao Yu saw a squad of sea monsters coming out of the sea who were better equipped and had their weapons on chains and more powerful armor with them. The little girl stood on the shore alone against the army of sea monsters, but our hero was rushing to her aid along with his squad. Seeing Lu Xu, the squad of monsters turned around and quickly ran back into the sea. They were very frightened of him. The guy had an idea. He decided to change his identity and disguise himself as one of the sea monsters to infiltrate behind enemy lines. Xiao Yu listened to her brother's plan carefully. The sea monsters were hiding in the depths of the sea, getting farther and farther away from the shore. Lu Xu, having changed his identity, looked exactly like one of the sea monster army. He looked like them and followed them into the depth of the sea. The girl poured magic dust from her hands into the sea 
and asked her brother to be careful. Our hero followed the seafloor behind the army of sea monsters. The army of sea monsters approached the dragon altar and bowed before it. Guy realized that thanks to the rituals that were performed at the bottom of the sea, the sea monsters could quickly revive and attack again. Therefore, their army was practically endless. The monster army stopped to rest and recover before attacking again. Suddenly, the huge burning eyes of his chaos dragon appeared behind our hero. Lu Xu didn't know the reason why the dragon woke up at such a time. Perhaps there were treasures somewhere nearby that the dragon wanted to devour. He looked around expecting to see some treasure that the dragon might be interested in. Lu Xu took out his dragon magic artifact and channeled its power upwards. A purple dragon burst out of the box and filled everything with a bright light. The dragon was huge and its power was ferocious. With its claws and long tail, it destroyed everything around it. With its powerful aura, the dragon formed something like a circle and engulfed the space. The head of the sea monsters who came to the rescue was horrified to see the extent of the destruction and didn't understand what had happened. Lu Xu ordered his dragon to go back inside the box. After it consumed the space, the altar was destroyed. After the altar was destroyed, our hero saw that the sea monster army couldn't attack normally because they all depended on the power of the dragon sacrifice. But our hero's chaos still continued to absorb energy. Perhaps there was another altar somewhere nearby. Without wasting time, the guy decided to collect all the bronze armor. There were thousands of them. The returning elder of the water monsters realized that the enemy had infiltrated them and destroyed the altar. He sent some soldiers to search for the enemy and asked to send new soldiers. Elder detained our hero and said that he would go only with him. Having found the enemy, the sea monsters had to fulfill the punishment. They themselves slapped each other, and it was humiliating. Lu Xu slapped the water monster lightly on the cheek, but it flew backwards and lost consciousness. The guy didn't realize what was wrong. It turns out that his punch was too strong, even though he tried to remove as lightly as possible. The elder, seeing this, ordered him to confess who he was. He immediately realized that someone was hiding under the mask. Lu Xu replied that he was obviously the intruder. Why is he always so easily exposed and unmasked? The guy activated his magic aura and it absorbed the water monsters. Something that looked like quicksand of gold crawled up the monster's legs, restraining their movements. The king of the monsters couldn't move. Our hero was approaching him. He said that no one could escape from here. The king of water monsters screamed with fear. Veins appeared on his eyes and drops of sweat appeared on his face. Having defeated everyone, our hero stood on the bottom with his weapons flying around him. A sandy whirlwind appeared from the seafloor. Following this vortex, a sand spirit appeared, controlled by the little girl Xiao Yu. She sent it to help her brother. Lu Xu donned a black armor that was much more powerful than the bronze armor. With this armor, he would be invincible. While walking through the Sea Kingdom, he came across another sea warrior. He took our hero for his own and wanted to know if there was any news on the capture of the enemy. A surprise happened, and our hero did not realize that his uncle had approached him. The uncle realized that instead of his nephew, someone else was hiding and got terribly angry. The guy had no choice but to summon a sand spirit, accept his sister's help, and absorb that monster. He was in an underground water realm. There were pillars and various beautiful corals standing around. He took out his chaos dragon from a casket. In the palace, there is an altar for sacrifices to the dragon. Our hero traveled to this palace, and along the way he collected and absorbed black armor. He sailed through an incredibly beautiful underwater city, the gates of which were guarded by two warriors. The warriors mistook our hero for an elder and bowed to him, letting him enter the palace. Up ahead, Lu Xu saw the palace. He took out a blue box and went inside. Inside the palace, among the tall stone columns, he saw a huge army of sea warriors. Our hero decided to continue pretending to be an elder. He walked among these warriors and they bowed to him. Then raising his hand, he ordered the entire army to follow him and find the criminal who had broken into the palace. The warriors asked their lord, who would remain in the palace to protect the god? After all, while they were gone, someone could take the chance to harm him. Lu Xu pondered that these warriors had a god, and if the god was weak now, there was nothing to fear. Then our hero in the guise of an elder shouted at his warriors that, is the god afraid of some humans? Lu Xu noticed that the army was quite cowardly. Perhaps he would be able to defeat them on his own. The warriors gathered and went in search of the enemy that had infiltrated their underwater kingdom. One of the warriors noticed that the elder was much taller than usual and realized that it was not the elder. And the warriors suddenly realized that the elder was not real and surrounded him. Lu Xu summoned Anthony's sand spirit to help. Together they powerfully attacked these vile monsters. But the flying swords ran into the armor of the water monster's shields. Our hero had no idea that this armor would have such power. 
Calling on his little sister for help, he threw his levitating sword once more. Raising their heads, the sea monsters saw a huge stream of powerful energy flying at them from above. This power shattered the sea monster's protective armor, and its shards sprinkled to the bottom. Sandy explosions rang throughout the Sea Kingdom, and the surviving monsters tried to run away as fast as possible and save their lives. The Chaos Dragon swallowed a small silver fish in the sea, and after that, everything turned into dark chaos. Darkness engulfed everything around. In this chaos, a huge dragon flew around. It turned from a small dragon into a huge 10-meter dragon. Lu Shu walked along the seabed past the palace walls and kept collecting weapons and armor. He didn't encounter a single sea warrior. A very powerful energy aura of the highest grade emerged in the sea. Someone very important had appeared here. Guy recognized this person as the puppeteer he had met in the past ruins. He was wearing a similar cloak. The puppeteer grabbed Lu Shu's head and ordered him to take him to the silverfish. Lu Shu was terribly surprised. Is the fish that his little sister caught really the god of these soldiers? He remembered that the little silver fish had been swallowed by his dragon. Could it be her that the puppeteer is referring to? Could it really be just a coincidence? The boy said he had to leave for a moment and quickly flew out of the palace. He walked into the palace where the altar stood, but no one was there. He realized that his dragon seemed to have eaten the strongest fish in these ruins. He returned to the palace where the cloaked lady was waiting for him, saying that he had news. He then ordered his warriors to kill the cloaked lady. Her cloak burst into flames with anger and the sea warriors pointed their tridents at her. The woman cast a spell and destroyed the sea monsters. She was angry that she had been disrespected and forgotten. The woman blazed with fire and threw fireballs, saying that she would defend her master's honor and that an eternity in hell awaited them all. The sea monsters created a powerful shield against this fearsome woman. This shield resembled a large balloon that created a protective field around the warriors, and the cloaked woman tried to destroy it. Her high-ranked assistant in iron armor was trying to break through this protective shield. He didn't expect the shield to be so strong. Our hero wondered, who could be the master of this puppeteer? This power looks really intimidating. The old man on the shore noticed in the distance in the sea huge waves rising high above the surface of the water. He realized that there was a battle going on under the water. The golden sword flew straight at the cloaked woman with great speed. She looked back to see who dared to strike her. The master flew, illuminating everything around with golden light, straight at that woman. She recognized his face. A powerful stream of golden aura of the strongest class hit the roof of the palace. The master recognized the guy in disguise and thought that Lu Shu was sly. The woman ordered an attack without sparing her enemies, and the lizard-like creature rushed at the warriors, along with the creatures that looked like puppets. This was the woman's army that she commanded. She raised her fingers up and cast a magic spell, and a huge number of these creatures appeared in the water column. The creatures looked like wooden human dolls. Red lasers shone from their palms. These lasers turned into long red threads and struck the master. The master defended himself and cut these red threads with his golden beam. But the master was not strong in the water element. It was hard for him to defeat those puppets. There were too many of them. The woman looked very angry. She sent her puppet straight at the master. The old man stood alone, surrounded by red threads directed at him. The wooden dolls were pulling their hands towards him. With a brush of golden magical light, he was cutting these red threads that surrounded him. The cloaked woman held the tangled red magic threads in her hands. She was controlling these wooden puppets. The red-colored matter swirled around the old man. It seemed as if he was trapped. But with a movement of one hand, he directed his golden light at this cloth and cut it like scissors. The red cloth along with the dolls were shredded to pieces by his golden beam. There was nothing left of them. The levitating sword helped the old man. After it cut the red cloth into pieces, the sword returned to the old man. The woman was terribly angry, and after pushing off from the stone bottom, she swiftly flew towards the old man. The old man took the yellow talisman in his hands and used an ancient soul technique. The yellow talisman flew towards that woman with great magical power, illuminating everything with a golden glow. The old man had a new spirit with a sword that was incredibly strong. He was preparing to attack the woman. Frightened by the golden aura emanating from that sword, the woman tried to run away. The woman, surrounded by red light, flew towards the water monsters who had placed a shield against her. Screaming that anyone who got in her way would die, she kicked the water monsters with her feet. This evil woman wanted to attack Lu Shu. The sand spirit's hand helped our hero. The little girl Xiao Yu stood on the shore and controlled the movement of the sand spirit. The master continued to fight with the red-cloaked woman. They stood in a duel, facing each other, and measured their strength. 
The woman took out a small white ball from her pocket that looked like a pearl and clasped it in her hand. In the next update, our hero along with his master saw that the woman had just disappeared. The guy said that they should move on and find an altar of light in one of the halls of the palace. But after closing the ruins, when they went outside, they found out that the woman never showed up. They discussed that the white ball in that woman's hands was a magic treasure that could change space. It looked like it would be difficult to kill her in the future. When they got out of the ruins, the old man asked to record all the error data in the report. They came to a huge mountain much larger than their height. It was all made of armor. There was a lot of this armor, and it could come in handy in battle. Our hero said that everything he had collected from the ruins were here in this pile. He didn't take anything for himself this time. The master told the students that their merits in the Battle of the Ruins were inscribed in the honor book. An armored personnel carrier would come in the afternoon to return everyone to their educational facilities. The boy and his little sister returned from the ruins. Xiao Yu asked where is the little fish she asked her to get from the sea floor. The brother replied that after he placed the fish in the seal of the mountains and rivers, someone suddenly ate it. The girl asked what was the seal of the mountains and rivers. The brother replied, that it was a kind of magical artifact of his spirit. This spirit was originally a snake that had recently turned into a dragon. The girl was very angry that her fish was eaten by the dragon. During his time in different neighborhoods and also endured trials, our hero changed a lot. He became more determined to help the outcasts, could take responsibility for other people. He felt that, in fact, there is not always a cold calculation between people. There was a thing he absolutely had to do, he felt that his little sister had also changed during this time they were apart. Xiao Yu said that she couldn't bear it if a guy died someday. He smiled and said that neither of them would die. They stood on the terrace of a beautiful building, holding hands and looking at the setting sun. When the guy was at the airport, he got a call from the director of the Sky Network. He told Lu Xu to be careful because there were actually two puppeteers. The director advised him to change his identity and go abroad. At the airport, boarding for their flight was announced. Our heroes headed for the gate. Ziyu bumped into a woman in a black suit. The woman took off her glasses, and her eyes were glowing red, just like the puppeteers. The guy recognized her and apologized very politely because the woman was very dangerous. They went to the airplane ramp and decided to be sure to discuss the incident with the members of the Celestial Network upon arrival. But a terrible thing happened. Our hero ran into this woman again on the airplane. They were seat neighbors and sat next to each other. After two hours, the guy tried to call the Heavenly King, but his number was out of range. Finally, the guy got through to the Heavenly King. The Heavenly King only said that this time the guy could keep all the rewards and loot. Lu Xu said that he was urgently going abroad. Now was not the time to think about rewards because the woman flying beside him was a puppeteer. The leaders of the Heavenly Network were shocked at the news that the puppeteer was also leaving the country. The Celestial Network set up monitoring for the flight at the same minute. Celestial Network set up the monitoring and saw that the woman looked completely like a normal person. They wondered how the guy was able to figure her out. The Heavenly King said that Lu Xu really has a lot of secrets in him. His abilities are extraordinary, and he wouldn't joke around with such serious topics. The Heavenly King said that they need to activate all the troops as soon as possible. They must find the puppeteer and not let him move around the country in peace. But the guy found out that right after arriving, this woman disappeared from sight. Where could she be now? Suddenly, she is looking for Lu Xu to kill with extreme cruelty. Our hero told his little sister that he was going abroad again in three days, but the girl needed to stay home because it was too dangerous. The enemies could kill her. A guy came to their house to tell them more about the new tasks. In three days, a team consisting of cultivated and ordinary people will leave the city. Our hero's task is to join this team to secretly protect them, especially the ordinary people who are in charge of diplomatic negotiations. Lu Xu was disguised as a new identity. The guy was a good option to keep a low profile. Lu Xu could use his identity to do anything. The man said that Lu Xu could easily head the foreign policy department of the Heavenly Network. This was a position that many people dreamed of. The temptation was great, but Lu Xu couldn't accept the offer because along with the opportunity came a huge responsibility that he wasn't ready for. The man said that Lu Xu should slap him to make sure he was not dreaming because it was impossible to refuse such a position. If the situation becomes extremely dangerous, our hero was given power over the group. If need be, he could abandon other people to protect himself. This was a prerequisite. Our hero had to return alive. 
Lu Xu conveyed to the heavenly king that he would do everything possible and impossible to ensure that all the members of the group returned alive. Late at night, he sat down to study the documents and the itinerary of his future mission. The purpose of this mission was to forge an alliance between the Celestial Network Organization and the Protoss Clan. The map showed the endpoint. Lu Xu wrote to Li Xiao. The headmaster of their school, who had been around for all the missions in all the districts, had built an inn together with a girl and invited our hero to come in to take a look. Li Xiao happily greeted Lu Xu and invited him to take a look at the building. The inn was located quite high up. This allowed the aura to be concentrated in one place. A very beautiful woman walked up to the reception desk of the inn. The aura around her was glowing. The guy recognized her immediately. He asked to lay low because this woman was a puppeteer. The woman was checked in at the front desk and she went to check into the room. Our hero immediately called the heavenly king and told him that the puppeteer was reappearing in their world in a couple days and had checked into the hotel. The heavenly king said that perhaps the puppeteer recognized the guy and therefore followed him everywhere, at the airport, on the plane, and even in the hotel. Our hero ordered the rescue squad to be brought up immediately because if the puppeteer recognized him, things were bad. There was a very strong aura around the inn. The heavenly king said that he would definitely put his people in the same inn and they would keep a close eye on the puppeteer and monitor her actions. This time, Lu Xu had to leave in a hurry. He needed to leave the country urgently. The Heavenly King assumed that the puppeteer knew our hero's true identity and was deliberately following him all along the route. The Heavenly King watched all the monitors while sitting in front of his big screen. The train was rushing over a bridge over a deep river. Lu Xu was riding on this train. His new identity was that of an ordinary guy. He was easily able to pretend to be one. Our hero was checking his star map. Our hero's little sister came to see Li Xiao. She wanted to know where her brother was going. The fat man replied that Lu Xu would have a small tour of Europe and he would end his journey in Sweden to meet the Protoss clan and make a friendly alliance with them. He would return back in about half a year or so. Xiao Yu was shocked to learn that her brother had abandoned her for such a long period of time. In Russia, there were two organizations called White Bear and Cardinal. And although the White Bear organization was weaker, but they would be the main associates to successfully conduct a trade or exchange. The main objective was to accumulate resources, improve international status, and support smaller organizations. This was the Heavenly King's goal. News came that the White Bear organization had just been defeated by an organization called Cardinal. Almost all of the people from White Bear were dead, and their leader was on the run. It was discovered that their clansmen were to organize a trip to South Africa to negotiate a deal to control special mines. This trip was to be about trade, not war. There was a need to go global. The team was ready to go to Africa and take on this task to get all the information. The whole team boarded an airplane and flew to sunny and hot Africa. A little girl, Xiao Yu, decided to travel secretly and followed her brother, but she got lost in Mongolia and decided to ask the way forward. She decided to approach a man she met and ask where the white bear's headquarters was. This man was just about to take revenge on an organization called Cardinal. Maybe the little girl could help him with that. The man wanted to kill Xiao Yu and blame it on the Cardinal organization. But the little girl felt the spirit of her heart and realized that the man wanted to kill her. She activated her magic power. Anthony's spirit appeared and easily threw away the attacker's axe. The man launched his axe straight at the little girl and her spirit. Anthony's sand spirit launched shards of rocks and the man fell to the floor unarmed. The head of the white bears, who was on the run, tried to deal with the little girl's spirits by wrestling with them. The second spirit launched its purple birds and they started pecking the man. Xiao Yu had the golden power of an awakened person and she wasn't going to give up. Their duel continued. The girl stood surrounded by a protective golden aura and her spirits protected her. Anthony's fist powerfully struck the leader of the organization. He fell to the ground. Then a group of purple birds led by a second spirit attacked and they began pecking at the man. The golden sand began to engulf the man, and he begged for mercy. He didn't want to die, but they killed him. The girl took a small purple bead from Anthony's mouth. This bead absorbed the spirit energy from the dead man and sucked it in. Then Anthony swallowed this bead, and the girl realized that thanks to this, her spirit became even stronger and moved to a new rank. They decided to watch fragments of the movie, memories of the dead man, everything that happened to him during his life, all the last events. The girl realized that this man was the leader of the White Bear organization, and it turned out that she had killed the last surviving person of this organization. 
The girl was angry at this man because he had wasted her time and she needed to urgently look for her brother who wasn't here. Xiao Yu had to decide whether to stay behind to keep looking for Lu Xu or go back home. But the thought of her brother meeting Carol made her incredibly angry. The little girl decided to follow her brother to Europe as well. A man in a suit and tie stepped in front of the team to tell them about the upcoming negotiation process. Currently, the members of the large organizations were arriving one after another. The cultivator's job was simply to keep an eye on what was happening and ensure the safety of the negotiation team. The negotiation team needed to formulate a plan for the discussion in order to finish the mission satisfactorily. The Sky Network should arrive with support in three days. Until the reinforcements arrived, everyone should do their best to avoid the appearance of conflicts with other organizations and keep the peace. The team of negotiators, our hero among them, drove up to a city built in the middle of the desert. Lu Xu was disguised as a new identity and observed the gathered people. Here, he could sense that the level of the people present was high. Their aura was simply off the charts. Our undercover hero was spying on an organization called Logos. They were the worst enemies of the Celestial Network. Then he saw that the Phoenix organization was also here. These two organizations were in opposition to each other and did not have a good relationship. Lu Xu was expecting a great show. The Order of Logos welcomed the participants from the Order of Phoenix and made fun of yesterday's incident where the Order of Phoenix participants mistook Stinky Tofu for a biological weapon. A verbal altercation occurred between the two organizations. Raising their weapons, the Logos clan ran into the doors of a building that had a horrible odor coming from it. They thought that this building contained a biological weapon and rushed to disarm it, raising their swords high. But once inside, all they saw was a box containing stinky tofu. They covered their mouths and noses to avoid hearing that nightmarish, unpleasant odor. The members of the Order of the Phoenix laughed at them because their competitors had fallen into the same trap they were laughing at a moment ago. The head of the Order of the Phoenix ordered everyone to find the guy so he wouldn't dare sabotage their attempt to take over the EO. At this time, our hero checked his star chart and saw that thanks to his new negative emotion goggles, he could nucleate his seventh star. He was holding a small altering fruit that he had gotten thanks to the stinky tofu. Our hero ran into his room and started spinning and jumping for joy, anticipating the possibilities he would get thanks to the new altering fruit. He closed his eyes in pleasure and took a small bite of this fruit. His star galaxy was incredibly beautiful. Constellations and planets with stars were burning against the dark space. Our hero took a meditative pose, closed his eyes and felt streams of blue energy in his body, which he directed to his star map. He mentally ordered the seventh star to light up. But the unexpected happened, and the seventh star went out. This unpleasantness had already happened to our hero in the discovery of the second nebula. The seven little swords corresponded to joy, anger, grief, fear, love, and attraction. Each sword was responsible for one human emotion. Deciding that this time he should experience the emotion of grief, our hero took and broke one of his artifacts. As he broke the treasure, tears flowed from his eyes. But unfortunately, nothing happened. It wasn't enough. Even though the guy was sad, the emotion wasn't strong enough. He decided to give it another try and break a few of his relics, feeling incredibly sad. But again, nothing happened. Although our hero screamed and cried with grief, but the opening of the third nebula failed. Having broken a huge amount of his weapons and treasures, having achieved nothing, our hero fell on the bed. He was very sad and lonely. He did not understand what the problem was. He was called to go to the negotiations, but not to some building, but to the desert. The group walked across the hot terrain between rocks and hot sand. Our undercover hero went to a store where he met a scout of the South American group that the Sky King was cooperating with. Lu Xu changed his identity and pretended to be Bennett. He decided to interfere with the deal and disrupt it. The main thing was that the Heavenly King didn't figure out our hero's plans. The night air was pleasant, and our hero set off in his new guise on a new mission. Lu Xu approached Lord Howard's palace to meet and talk with him. Lord Howard thought that Bennett wanted to make a deal in partnership with him. After leaving the Order of the Phoenix building, our hero decided to check how many negative emotion points he had earned. Thanks to the new altering fruits that our hero had traded, he was completing his second snow mountain. Very soon, the second sword spirit was going to appear, and our hero couldn't wait to meet him. Acting undercover, the guy managed to disrupt all the negotiations, and he was walking incredibly satisfied, having accomplished his mission. Sitting in the living room, all members of the expedition heard a piercingly loud sound that was deafening in its power. The rising puffs of smoke that appeared after the explosions that rang out could be seen outside. 
These sounds that everyone heard were the sounds of the explosion and the shockwave that came from the residents of the German organization. Our hero realized that his undercover actions yesterday were to blame for everything. His actions had caused misunderstandings among the major organizations, and now everyone refused to negotiate. A very powerful aura of red and white countering each other shone in the sky. Meditating in his room, Lu Xu felt the fluctuations of this powerful aura. It was urgent for him to find out what was happening outside. He left his room and went up to the roof. The fire phoenix bird opened its beak and flew high into the sky. The flames of fire were heading straight for the group of people in white. The two clans, the Order of the Phoenix and the Order of the Logos of Faith, were attacking and fighting. Having disguised himself and changed his identity, our hero was watching this battle from on high. It promised to be very interesting. The Firebird flew straight at the Order of the Logos. The Phoenix Firebird circled around the Logos Order. Its power was so destructive that the stone on the surface of the earth cracked. The head of the Logos organization raised his hand and created a white energy shield. The Logos commander stood within this illuminated white ball, as if in a protective capsule, and the Phoenix flames could not reach him. One man from the Order of the Phoenix was terribly angry with the Logos. He said that they were too much intertwined in this collaboration of theirs. But the head of the Logos didn't understand what he was talking about. The man from the Order of the Phoenix took out a very powerful magic weapon that unleashed the Phoenix flame. The Flame Order was ready for another attack and launched the next strike at the man from the Order of Logos. This time he launched a fiery serpent with his terrifying teeth at him, but the white-cloaked man easily dealt with the fire serpents. Suddenly a guy that no one knew appeared from nowhere and grabbed a weapon, a magic scepter. Towering over the members of the Logos organization, the head of the Order of the Phoenix was burning with fire. He was going to destroy this organization. In the next minute, he raised his hands, and after casting an incantation, he directed the power of fire directly at them. Fire droplets fell from the sky, igniting everything around him. The sky was ablaze with a red glow. The Order of Logos, having taken up battle positions, was repelling the enemy's attack, which was incredibly strong. The best and safest thing the members of the Order of Logos could do was to create a protective field around them in which they could preserve their lives. Creating white balls of protective energy, the head of the organization tried to hold out, but he needed help. The protective dome was struggling to contain the fiery sparks. The phoenix bird grew bigger and brighter from the explosions it created with clubs of fire, engulfing everything around it. The balls of flame continued to fly, shattering White's defenses. He asked for help. People in white cloaks and armor rushed towards the man with the power of fire, breaking through his phoenix defense. Deafening explosions rang out. Everything was ablaze with fire and visibility was zero. Suddenly, an unknown man in a black cloak appeared and took the sword from one of the members of the Order of Logos. That person was left without his weapon. After that, the unknown man hurriedly fled. The man in fire laughed at the man in white, because now they were in the same conditions. Both of them had their magical weapons stolen. Left without their status weapons, the two enemies began to discuss the situation in which they both found themselves as equals. They decided to forget about their conflict for the time being, and to start by finding the thief and reclaiming their magical weapons. Lu Xu changed his mask to that of the head of the Order of the Phoenix and turned into Lord Howard. Our hero, under the guise of a lord, made an alliance to hand over the mine to the Order of the Phoenix. This was all seen and read in the phone spy who worked for the Celestial Network and received information from our hero. In the morning, all this news was seen by the members of the various organs of the Order, and one of the Logos was especially upset. They became very angry after reading this news and decided to deal with the whole thing. Lord Howard noticed the switch and became wary. At the sight of one stranger, he suspected he was not who he said he was and surrounded him with a ring of fire. Lord Howard realized that this was not his subordinate and aimed the fireball directly at our hero. He wanted to know who this stranger was. Our hero put on his magical cloak and created a protective field so that the power of the fire could not destroy him. Lord Howard raised his finger high up and ordered the Phoenix Firebird to attack the enemy. The Fire Phoenix Bird soared into the sky, flapping its wings. It floated with bright flames high above our hero. Lord Howard of the Order of the Phoenix, along with other members of the Order, stood in front of the guy in threatening poses, preparing to attack at any second. Seeing this fiery Phoenix Bird, Lu Xu drew his magic sword and concentrated all his energy for a successful counterattack. The next moment, the guy felt a burning sensation in his chest. A small heart flame started inside him. The fiery phoenix bird, folding its wings 
and pointing its beak downwards, swiftly carried from the heights directly at our hero. The unexpected happened, and instead of killing the guy, the bird landed on the ground and clucked. Lord was out of his mind with anger. He didn't understand why the bird didn't attack our hero. Lord Howard was beyond angry and annoyed. He had yet to meet someone in his entire life who could suppress his firepower and turn the flaming phoenix bird into an ordinary chicken. Lu Xu felt that his heart flame could control fire. He couldn't believe that he had reached such a high rank. After all, this technique was possessed by fighters of the highest level. Our hero liked the feeling of power. After all, nothing so satisfies the ego as knowing that you have complete control over your opponent. Lu Xu smiled and launched all of his flying weapons straight at the head of the Order of the Phoenix. The game had begun. Our hero's magic sword flew through the air, made a circle and gained speed, piercing through one of the members of the Order of the Phoenix. Blood splattered in different directions. The two flying swords, flying through space with great precision, pierced through the Order of Phoenix soldiers one by one. Lord Howard couldn't strike back at our hero because the element of fire was not obeying him and couldn't be controlled. And then Howard realized that all the incidents that had happened the day before with the stinky tofu, the defeated headquarters, the stolen magical weapons, and the fake agreement were all the work of this guy. Lord Howard no longer had the power of fire. He couldn't rely on his superpowers. He realized he couldn't handle our hero alone. He came up with a way that could help win the fight. This was the last method he could use. Lu Xu noticed a red vial with an incomprehensible liquid inside in his opponent's hands. He raised his hand and directed a stream of blue energy at his enemy. The sword flew into the flames of fire that surrounded the Lord. Howard opened the lid of the vial and the liquid poured out. Flames and hatred burned in his eyes, so strong was his rage. In the blazing flames inside stood Lord Howard. Our hero attacked him with two levitating swords. Suddenly, the Lord succeeded in summoning a fiery phoenix. He stood with his hands up, and the firebird blazed above him. Lord Howard realized that he had used up his energy to summon this power, and this battle would be his last. But he had no regrets because he had a chance to kill his opponent. Lord Howard ordered the Phoenix Bird to go on the attack, to destroy all those who had infringed on his life. Lu Xu realized that after that strange liquid that poured out of the vial, the Lord could control the power of fire again. Our hero realized that it was time to gather his strength. He sprinted hard, raised his sword, and headed straight towards the Firebird. But the guy's heart flame was so strong that it was able to suppress even the phoenix's energy. They stood there and watched as the phoenix became smaller and smaller from a huge firebird. Lord Howard bowed to the guy and apologized. But our hero said it was too late. He wasn't going to spare the Lord and pointed his sword right at him. The Lord threw fiery sparks straight at Lu Xu. Our hero's power, breaking through the fire defense and streams of blue energy, pierced the Lord like lightning. Lord Howard fell to the pavement from his opponent's strong kick. He was unable to move. As he fell to the ground, he couldn't believe that he could die. After all, he was the strongest lord of the Great Order of Phoenix, and he couldn't just die. The lord activated the power of his spiritual armor and covered himself all over with a protective field. After the lord's protective field appeared, the sword swept past him at a rapid speed. But a second later, his spiritual armor shattered into a thousand red little shards. As he fell to the floor, he couldn't believe that this was his end. Lu Xu approached the Lord lying on the ground, intending to fulfill his mission to the end. Lord Howard tried to trade information about the puppeteer for his life. He asked the guy to let him go in exchange for telling him about the puppeteer. He said that only a close member of the Order of the Phoenix knows the secret of the puppeteer. Knowing this secret would kill the puppeteer. Our hero offered to play and not only let Howard go, but also escort him to his final resting place. Lord Howard, from humiliation of humiliation, flamed with anger, and threw himself at our hero. But the guy easily defeated him, and from Lord Howard and his power remained only burning feathers that flew in the air. Lu Xu raised his hand and saw a crack on his palm from which a bright light was emanating. He wondered what his past was and who his parents were. He closed his eyes and felt he needed to think about his next step. He had already learned a lot, but he needed to concentrate on the future. He put on Howard's ring and changed his appearance, taking on his guise again. No one guessed the switched identities. Our hero's goal was to make the situation on the African continent even more chaotic. He saw the fighters from the Logos organization walking towards him. They were approaching him. The head of Logos said that Howard should be punished for his deception. Pretending to cooperate with them, he secretly made a deal with Bennett. The order surrounded our hero, thinking he was Lord Howard. Lu Xu regretted that he had decided to pretend to be Howard. 
There were many opponents, and they were all high-ranked, and he was alone. He realized that the Order of Logos wanted to kill Howard. Our hero thought of nothing better than to concentrate and try to escape from the opponents with a quick dash. But Logos' army was strong. They used a force field. This force field became a wall, preventing our hero from moving a single step further. The head of the organization raised both hands up and addressed his last words to Howard. Lu Xu realized that if he didn't break free from the force field, he would soon die. He no longer cared whether the secret identity was revealed or not. Raising his head and looking up into the sky, he saw a confrontation between two forces of A-rank opponents. In the sky, surrounded by sparkling flashes of light, two opposing forces could be seen opposing each other. The shockwave threw our hero to the floor and blinded him with a bright light. Before them stood the Bishop of the Logos of Faith and a saint from the Order of the Phoenix. These were the highest heads and representatives of these orders. The saint from the Order of the Phoenix ordered Howard to flee, and our hero gladly seized this opportunity to save his life. After jumping over a tall brick fence, Lu Xu went on the run. The saint of the Order of the Phoenix told the bishop that they could finally fight in peace. The saint of the Order of the Phoenix launched a stream of fire at the bishop. The bishop was enraged, his face contorted in a horribly ugly grimace. He was going to kill the head of the Order of the Phoenix. Running away through the hot desert, Lu Xu noticed that there was a chase following him. Running under the scorching sun was very hot, and to escape, our hero needed a plan. He came up with the idea of running away to the port, to the water, assuming that the enemy's power in the water aura would weaken. But then the guy realized that he was running the other way. The sea was in the opposite direction. Gathering all his strength, Lu Xu ran along the sand, realizing that he didn't have enough strength for the last maneuver. Suddenly a sandstorm appeared, hindering the opponents in their pursuit of our hero. Waving his sticks, our hero created a sandstorm around him for protection. A man in a white cloak rushed forward to kill our hero. He got too close. Our hero urgently needed to find the sea to increase his strength and weaken the enemy. He kept running, escaping from the chasing fighters of the Order of Logos. The Logos fighters were tired of chasing the guy and swallowing dust and dirt. Their clothes were stained. They were counting on a beautiful fight in the air using magic. Our hero threw some big pile of brown mass right in their faces. The smell was nightmarish and horrible. The man realized that he was hit by shit because they were in a pasture where animals were grazing. The poop was raining down directly on the Logos fighters. They didn't understand how their opponent was using such attacks. After all, they should be fighting normally using magic. Their dignity had been hurt. Lu Xu heard the sound of the sea nearby. It was very close to him. The guy was extremely happy about it because on the water he could use his power. The Logos warriors noticed that the guy wanted to lure them closer to the water. None of their clan knew how to control the element of water. Maybe there was a trap waiting for them there. Our hero realized he had no choice. The only salvation was to jump into the sea, because the warriors had driven him into a dead end and he had no other choice. But the warriors stood still and were unwilling to capture him. The warriors replied that Lord Howard had led them straight into an ambush, and they had figured out his plan. Our hero thought to himself that if he jumped into the sea now, his life would be saved. Next time, he should better choose an object for reincarnation. At that moment, he remembered his little sister and the promise he had made to her. He must by all means stay alive and return to her. Lu Xu walked to a high cliff and jumped into the water. In flight, his mask disappeared and he regained his appearance. He rejoiced that he had saved his life. The warriors noticed that as he jumped into the water, the fellow was smiling and suspected that this was his plan. So when the chief commanded, everyone jumped into the water to catch up with the guy. In the water, Lu Xu noticed that the Logos warriors jumped right behind him. He decided to play with them. Lu Xu directed his magical energy directly at the opponents. They were very surprised. The current hit the Logos warriors, and their bodies became immobilized and paralyzed. But by using Thunderbolt energy, our hero injured himself by not calculating the effects of the two forces. His water-type energy and Thunderbolt energy collided, and he was injured. One of the warriors felt that he could move his arm, and the effect of the lightning bolt was already weakening. The other warriors were also already able to move as well. The warrior headed over to kill the guy. But our hero was still paralyzed. He couldn't move. He needed more time to regain his strength. The hands of the warriors were reaching straight for our hero, going to pay him back for all the humiliation he had caused today. Lu Xu had nothing left but to once again use the lightning and current power he used to stun these warriors. With curses, the warriors flew back. They were paralyzed once more. But when activating this power... Our hero also struck himself, but there was nothing else left for him to do to immobilize his opponents. 
The warriors did not understand how Howard could stay in the water for so long, if water was destructive to him, because his element was fire. They didn't know that instead of Lord Howard using his appearance, it was Lu Shu. Our hero used thunder and lightning so many times that the shoes on his feet were torn. Moving across the water, he struck the thunder lightning at the warriors, hoping that their breath holding would end soon. Having recovered their strength and regained the ability to move again, the warriors of Logos prepared to attack our hero, but saw the lightning bolt bearing down on them again. But the desire for revenge was very great, and the clan leader rushed forward to deliver a fatal blow to the boy. Lushu remembered that he had a spirit bursting out from within, a tool that could save him until he gained the ability to move. Although the spirits were very small, they could deal very powerful blows to enemies. The Logos warriors were insulted and humiliated. They didn't understand why a small spirit was just beaten up. After regaining their strength, the Logos warriors decided not to continue the battle, but to simply run away. When the warriors had almost reached the surface of the water and were close to escape, they saw that someone else had attacked them. Shrouded in a water vortex, our hero flew swiftly from the seafloor, surrounded by sparkling lightning. Suddenly, the water became viscous for the Logos warriors, and their movement became difficult. They didn't understand why an opponent using the power of fire could control the power of water. Lu Xu, on the contrary, moved with ease in the water element. Within a couple of seconds, he caught up with the warriors. They aimed sharp pieces of metal, surrounding our hero. These shards flew with great force, threatening to cut the guy to pieces. But Lu Xu could move very fast in the water and was able to dodge all the metal shards flying at him. The power of the water activated, and the wave began to choke the Logos clan warriors. The Logos clan warriors dealt a very powerful blow to our hero, but he was invincible in the water. Thousands of metal shards flew at the guy like small ice flakes, but by putting his hand forward, he created a powerful water defense. The force of the water pushed those metal shards away. They flew in the opposite direction and hit the people who launched them. Lu Xu stood with his eyes closed and concentrated his strength, feeling satisfied that he had managed to escape. The warriors from Logos who managed to escape, exhausted, crawled out onto the shore. They felt that this was the most exciting battle in recent times. Now the Logos military decided to proceed more cautiously to avoid falling into a new trap. They launched surveillance pods into the water to see what Howard was up to. The huge capsule plunged into the ocean column. It descended to the bottom, to the deepest depths. On the seabed, Lu Xu examined the shards of sharp metal and wondered if he could use them. The warriors watching through the screen didn't understand why the guy was collecting pieces of metal. This trash? Perhaps he was trying to study their abilities. A few hours later, our hero came ashore. The office received urgent news that high-ranking fighters had been detected 500 meters away, and they were heading straight for the office. The next second, they saw huge blocks of rock being carried straight into the glass of the building they were in. Shards of glass flew inside the room and took all the people by surprise. Master Li and his girlfriend were carried amongst the flying rocks. Around Li Xiao, fire was blazing around him. He was acting with great passion and excitement as usual. A military squad from Bennett's team spotted the two fighters. They didn't know if they would be able to resist. The pair of Li Xiao and his girlfriend were very strong and brave. They loved colorful fights and brawls and were ready for any fight. They urged their opponents to strike. Indeed, their level of training and deadly strength were astonishingly high. They carried out various complicated techniques and methods, striking Bennett and his comrades with ease. Bennett launched some strange gray balls with a strong aura. The girl managed to throw the gray ball away and saved her life. Li Xiao launched his fire spear directly at his opponent, but he managed to dodge. The fire spear turned into a beautiful red dragon with a mustache. This dragon wrapped around Bennett's body like a rope and he couldn't move. The girl picked up the headmaster in her arms. They felt their triumph and victory. But Bennett did not want to die. Bound, he broke through the glass and threw himself down from the window of a very tall skyscraper. A girl in a tracksuit jumped out after him. The two of them fell from a great height downwards amidst shards of glass and stones. From the impact of their fall, the asphalt on the ground split and cracked. The girl in the tracksuit survived. She got to her feet and held onto her bruised wrist. Bennett lay unconscious among the shards of asphalt, and the headmaster applauded his girlfriend. He marveled at her triumph and skill in the fight and congratulated her on her victory. The headmaster, folding his arms and smiling reproachfully, said that his girl was very beautiful, and the trick she used was also very beautiful. They took the ring that was on Bennett's finger with them. On entering Bennett's warehouse, our hero found nothing but bottles of essential oil, which was very plentiful in Africa. The Sky King contacted one of his allies in Africa, saying that Lu Xu needed to be found. 
He didn't seem to have sailed aboard the freighter back. Then on one of the cameras, the contact noticed a man approaching his hideout down a dark, abandoned alleyway. He recognized him and realized his identity had been revealed. Drops of sweat appeared on his face. This meant that he had already been revealed. Bright lightning illuminated the dark sky with its flashes. The Heavenly King allowed this person to escape and reveal his identity. At this, their connection was cut off, and a heavy, torrential rain fell. The man lit a cigar, tears streaming from his eyes. He pressed the send message button on his computer, and the 60-second countdown began. Next, this man set his entire station on fire with computers, transmission points, and servers, drew his sword, and marched towards the enemy. He had to protect everyone else. He drew his sword and heard a knock on the door. Rising through the air and blazing with fire, the liaison lunged at his enemy. His enemy stood, squinting his eyes and gnashing his teeth angrily in front of his hiding place. That man with the beard was praying because he had a very strong aura with the power of water. He had put up a defense and the fire couldn't reach him. He stood there with his hands calmly in his pockets, and water rushed out of his chest and flooded everything around him. The sword in the hands of the star spy moved swiftly and surely, but the man with water power easily dodged those blows. He was fluid and flexible, and the flow of water protected him from the sharp sword. Suddenly, the sword broke through the magical water aura and wounded his opponent. Wiping away the drops of blood, the humiliated opponent said that he had had enough of playing. He was ready to kill him. The water aura warrior laughed at his opponent. Did he really hope to win? The scout spy replied that his opponent knew too little of his abilities. Colliding in battle, streams of water surrounded the two opponents and splashed around them. The fight was bloody and powerful. The warrior with the water aura pinned his opponent's throat with his sword. The flying sword reflected the blow and threw the enemy back. The man with the water aura used the technique, kicking and throwing the warrior with the sword to the floor. The blow was deafeningly powerful and the sword man flew far backwards. His golden sword was broken in two and blood was pouring out of his mouth. The man with the water aura said that he would soon break the entire heavenly net. From his last strength, the man threw the sword shard at his enemy. But the enemy raised his hand and began to grow in the air. The defense circle broke the sword into shards. Then the warrior from the celestial net grabbed his second sword and rushed at his enemy with renewed vigor. The man realized that he wouldn't have time to dodge the strike of this sword. After the red sword hit him, his body turned into a blue puddle. But the enemy wasn't destroyed. It turned into water that took the form of that man. The Heaven's Net warrior shouted that he must win at all costs. The streams of water that accumulated due to the rain revitalized the opponent, and he rose up after being wounded. The Heavenly Net intelligence warrior was severely injured, his body with deep wounds. He fell on the asphalt and a pool of blood spread out beneath him while his opponent remained alive despite his wounds. Suddenly, this stranger felt that the rain had become very cold. He turned his head and saw a man behind him. Surrounded by a strong aura, head down and hooded, Lu Xu was walking down the street. When he saw his friend lying dead on the pavement, he cried out and tears flowed from his eyes. He felt deep pain and sorrow at the death of his friend. Then the chains that bound his body broke, and he was transported to his star galaxy. He felt the appearance of a new shining star on his star chart. Our hero was approaching his friend's killer with lightning accompanying him behind him. The guy looked devastated, tears flowing from his eyes. He was going to kill this man. Raising his hand up, he activated his flying sword. There were bright flashes on his star map, and the stars began to rotate around one planet. Then a huge stream of stellar energy descended from the sky and connected to our hero like a cosmic portal. The assassin felt fear and sadness and tried to escape from Lu Xu, but the guy swung his hand and the killer's water control was weakened. The assassin was surprised that the guy was higher ranked than him. Making the water very sharp, Lu Xu wounded the assassin. From the pain, the guy fell to the ground. Our hero transferred his energy to the raindrops and they turned into weapons. The assassin didn't want to give up so easily and tried to completely merge with the water element to defeat Lu Xu. Turning into water, he pounced on the guy standing in the middle of the street. Lu Xu was able to stealthily attack the assassin and a huge wound appeared on his body. Our hero said that the killer would face a long, painful death, just like what happened to his friend. As he was dying, the assassin said that there were hundreds of mercenaries hunting for the heavenly net. His death won't change anything. But then the guy suddenly noticed that his scout friend was still alive and lifted his broken head from the pavement. Lu Xu ran to his friend and helped him up. At this time, the assassin took a chance and tried to escape. After helping his friend up from the ground, Lu Xu said that there was no way for the assassin to escape death. When the assassin had already thought that he had managed to escape, he saw a flying water dragon with burning red eyes following him. 
Lu Xu helped his friend home and dressed the wounds he had received during the battle. And after that, he had a plan to find two more mercenaries who were hunting the members of the Heavenly Network and kill them. Our hero went, and his friend wished him luck. They knew they would never see each other again. It was a dark night outside, and it was pouring rain. Putting on his hood, our hero walked away. He realized that he had unlocked a new level. Lu Xu received a message telling him where his target would be, and he promptly ran there. In a dark alleyway, wearing a hood, our hero waited for two assassins who were hunting for members of the Celestial Network. One of the mercenaries took out a sharp knife and ran towards the guy. The mercenary was strong, and his movements were very fast. Lu Xu managed to dodge the blow. The blow was so strong that the stones on the pavement shattered into pieces. Lu Xu pulled out his magic sword and put a block against the opponent's blows. Our hero moved very fast. He skillfully dodged the mercenary's blows. The guy pulled out his invisible sword and struck the mercenary. This sword was very sharp. Its power was devastating. The mercenary felt this weapon penetrate his body. Our hero was hitting the enemy and he had little chance to escape. Although the mercenary was huge in size and had a strong muscular body, our hero felled him to the ground with a few punches. Lu Xu killed one of the mercenaries and following that, the second assassin used his strength. The second assassin joined the fight. His attacks were more powerful, but our hero jumped high up and easily avoided damage. In response to his opponent's strike, the guy used the power of magic threads. The assassin, holding a fireball in his hands, pounced on our hero again. The guy pulled out his magic weapon and said that dire consequences awaited anyone who dared to hunt the members of the Heavenly Net. It rained heavily. The two assassins stood in battle poses and prepared to strike our hero. Their task was complicated by the fact that the water element did not belong to them. They saw that the guy was strong, but he was one against two. They decided on a new strong attack and used their magic power. Hundreds of metal sticks flew towards our hero, but he remained calm and unperturbed. He only repeated his question. His eyes squinted and his lips stretched into a thin line. He asked again, were they willing to die? Lu Xu said that there would always be evil and murderous bastards like these mercenaries in the world. For 18 years of his life, he had been constantly protected and defended, and now it was his turn to be protected. The assassin raised his hands and with his magical power launched new metal bars at our hero. But our hero drew his sword and activated his water power. Invoking the water blade, he cut the metal sticks into pieces. The mercenaries were terribly angry at the guy because he looked small and weak. There was a great power hidden in him, and they received a rebuff they didn't expect to receive. Therefore, their desire to kill became even stronger. The mercenary swung his weapon at Lu Xu, but he blocked with his invisible sword. Two opposing forces were opposing each other. Our hero had great willpower to kill his enemy. He who fights always wins. The water element was controlled by our hero. He pointed his sword at the enemy. The mercenary's weapon broke into small pieces and fell into a puddle. The second mercenary said that he would deal with the guy and clenching his fists rushed at him. Metal sticks flew into the air and the mercenary raised his hands and directed this attack towards our hero. Lu Xu raised his magic sword and was ready to repel all the metal particles. Lu Xu realized his opponent's plan and directed his energy towards him. The assassin froze in place. The mercenary managed to put up a protective shield and the metal sticks that rained down on him froze in midair. The attack was incredibly strong, but he managed to get back up. After this attack, the mercenaries realized that they couldn't defeat our hero. They wanted to run away to save themselves. Lu Xu released a magic flying sword from his chest and pointed it at the mercenaries. The sword hit one of the two assassins and pierced through his chest. That one fell to the ground and blood spurted out of his chest. The second assassin saw his colleague fall to the ground and screamed in terror. The mercenary realized that the only chance for salvation was to fight to the end and aimed flying energy balls at the guy. But the balls hit the electric field with lightning and our hero created a protective field in the shape of a ball. Thunder rumbled and lightning flashed around. The mercenary fell to his knees in front of our hero, struck by the thunder and lightning. Lu Xu was ruthless. He directed the power of the thunder and lightning at the mercenary. It killed him. The next day, our hero received his new assignment from the leaders of the Celestial Network. He was to travel to the island of Sardinia directly from Africa. To get to the destination, the guy had to pass through the entire desert. But he was not going to give up so easily. Thus, the Heavenly King wanted to force him to join the Celestial Network. The area was patrolled by the military in a car. As they drove along one of the roads, they noticed some person. His clothes were similar to their uniforms, so they decided to stop and check his ID. 
The man standing on the road turned out to be our hero, who was wearing a new mask for disguise. After getting out of the car, the military went towards the guy to check his papers and see if he was a spy. They pointed their guns at him and ordered him to confess everything. Upon seeing the car, our hero asked for a ride to the beach, but the uniformed men didn't understand why they had to agree. The military men got angry with the guy. They didn't understand the reason why they should agree and drive him, so they opened fire on him. Lu Xu jumped up on the hood of the car and cleverly dodged all the bullets fired at him. He pulled out his magic weapon, an artifact he had kept after fighting in the underwater kingdom, and repelled the military's attack. Telling the military that he had already killed a few people a few days ago and was tired of the deaths, he offered to make peace with them. Except that friends don't attack with guns and live ammunition, so our hero got angry. Seeing his strength, the two military men suddenly became kind and accommodating. They were willing to do anything because they were scared of the guy. Finally, Lu Xu got into the car, and the driver asked where our hero should be taken. The car brought Lu Xu to a rocky shore. Finally, they reached the seashore. Lu Xu jumped from a high rock straight into the water. His story in Africa had come to an end, and a new story in Europe was beginning. It was time for him to move on. Spreading his arms out in flight, Lu Xu felt the freedom and thirst for the new adventures that awaited him in Sardinia. He was anticipating his meeting with Carol. The coast of sunny Sardinia was incredibly beautiful. Many colorful houses adorned the rocky shore, and the palm trees and other trees that grew there created a picturesque landscape. After swimming to the shore of this island, Lu Xu was amazed by the beauty of the coastal city. Walking through the streets, he saw artists performing at the festival. One of the awakened ones was seen on the stage, showing off his strength at the performance. A lot of fans clapped for him and sent air kisses. Lu Xu felt the fluctuations of another strong awakened energy. Turning his head, he saw one of the members of the Logos Order. Walking in a cloak was Francisco. He too had come to this island. Looking carefully in the crowd, our hero noticed a huge number of awakened ones. He wrote a message to his curator. Why are there so many awakened ones on the island? The curator replied that everyone had gathered on this island for an auction where a sample of the world tree would be sold. The Order of Protos, which was led by Carol, disembarked from a large liner on the shore. The Order of Logos began tracking the Order of Protos. Our hero saw that the Order of Logos was following Carol and decided to follow them to find out what was going on and to warn of danger. Carol was walking through the narrow streets of Sardinia and sensed that someone was following her. Carol had a clear goal. She needed to get her hands on the world tree. With that energy, she could clean the spear of eternity, and then her powers would be restored. But Carol's thoughts were occupied with memories of Lu Xu. She missed him and didn't understand why he didn't contact her. Our hero saw Carol walking through the alleys and noticed that she had changed since their last meeting. She now looked very tired. Perhaps she never recovered from the last battle. Sitting on the roof of one of the buildings, the boy admired Carol and felt sadness in his heart. He did not understand the feelings he was experiencing now. Our hero had never known or understood the feeling of love, and what he was experiencing now was both frightening and exciting at the same time. He looked at his palm and saw a crack from which blue energy was glowing. Lu Xu decided that he should protect Carol anyway, because last time the girl risked her life and protected him. Our hero decided to check into one of the hotels so he could easily watch Carol and ask for rooms on the fourth floor. The doors of the hotel opened abruptly and a group of people appeared, who also asked for a room on the fourth floor. Lu Xu took his room key, but he was stopped by the strangers and blocked his way. Our hero could hide his aura perfectly and the strangers couldn't sense his power. The guy was able to pretend to be a simple tourist and calmly go to his room. But this group of awakened people were suspicious and wary of our hero. They decided to check him out. The group of awakened tried to find out information from the receptionists because our hero was traveling alone. Usually Chinese tourists travel in groups, and if he was a student, he must be studying now because there was no vacation at this time. From the window of his room, our hero watched Carol. The location of the hotel was very convenient. Looking out the window, the guy saw Carol sitting even more tired but still working. Lu Xu noticed the shakiness in the girl's gait and that she had twisted her leg and almost fell and could barely stay on her feet. He didn't understand how a fighter of such a high rank with incredible strength could just slip like that. He stood staring out the window wondering what could have happened to Carol during their separation. Our hero received information that the group of assassins who lived in the next room was called the Black Hands Organization. Lu Xu realized that two different organizations were watching Carol. 
The Logos clan and the Black Hands organization were hunting the girl and seemed to want to get hold of the Spear of Eternity. It turns out that the leader of the Black Hand was in love with Carol and wanted to marry her, but Carol wasn't paying attention to him, so he sent his men to follow her. A motorcade of cars pulled up outside, and the man who was in love with Carol got out of the car. It was the head of the Black Hand organization. He was walking to the palace to see Carol, but his path was blocked by guards. Carol was standing by the window of her room, looking out into the street where the party was going on. Suddenly, among the people in the crowd of passers-by, she saw Lu Xu walking down the street. The guy was walking down the street and watched the logos of Faith, Black Hand Organization, and Cartel fighting among themselves. Our hero was checking his display of earned negative emotion points. Carol approached him from behind. He turned his head and saw the girl. Carol was asking why the guy had never called her once in all this time. She was highly offended and was crying. Our hero didn't know what to do, so he treated the girl to some delicious fruit to make her stop crying. The girl wanted to know the answer. Did our hero need her, or was there no room for her in his life? Lu Xu replied that he was keeping an eye on the people from the Logos of Faith because those people were after her, and she had to be careful. Carol went back to the room and was happy that our hero had not only come to Sardinia because of her, but was guarding her. She sat at the table and dreamed of meeting her boyfriend again. She was very pleased that he was thinking of her. She took a taste of one cheating fruit that Lu Xu had given her. It was very tasty. After she ate this fruit, she felt very strong inside. It was as if she had received an incredible amount of energy. The absorption of spiritual energy was over, and the girl felt much stronger. She was pleased that Lu Xu had given her such valuable fruits to sell, and he gave her eight pieces. Lu Xu was walking through the streets. It was already dark, but the bright colors of the carnival were burning everywhere. He ate the changing fruit and thought, why did the girl leave so quickly? Near one of the houses, our hero felt a huge flow of energy and thought that it was Carol who ate one of the altering fruit. He was afraid that the energy flow was too strong and people with the ability to pick up energy fluctuations would get suspicious. Back in the hotel to his room, Lu Xu was glad to relax a little and collapsed on his bed. Meanwhile, he was being watched through binoculars by the Logos clan's military men. They had set up a stakeout in the same building. Lu Xu remembered his hard childhood, how he survived with his little sister Xiao Yu, trading in the market, and thought about the difference with Carol's childhood. But the boy's thoughts were interrupted by a phone call. The caller said that our hero should be careful and be alert all the time, because the girl is being watched. More additional organizations were watching. British, Icelandic, and German organizations. As he walked down the street, he pondered, could he protect Carol at the risk of his life? Did he have a chance, or did he need to escape from this place? Lu Xu decided that he still wanted to take the risk even if he couldn't win and would get hurt badly. He remembered how earlier Carol had the courage to help him and save him. He couldn't be more cowardly than the girl. Carol sat at the table in a meeting with her Protos organization. It was reported to her that many organizations had arrived on the island and were watching them closely. Had they all really come for the Spear of Eternity? But Carol sat with a sad look and dreamily thought of Lu Xu. All her thoughts were preoccupied with their meeting. She felt Lu Xu's aura nearby. Looking out the window, she saw a guy standing smiling and waving at her. Her face lit up with joy. She came alive and a blush appeared on her cheeks as soon as she saw the guy. The girl interrupted the meeting, causing her subordinates to be displeased. She ran down the stairs, ran out into the street, and met our hero. She dreamed of him asking her out to a movie or on a date. Lu Xu shocked her by telling her that the Logos of Faith had come to kill her and that the girl was in danger. Carol froze in place. Carol said that their organization had guessed this, but they still needed the World Tree. That's why she had come here. She was pleased that Lu Xu cared about her. Lu Xu suggested that maybe it was all a trap to lure the girl to this island that there was no world tree or it was fake, and this whole auction was a trap. The girl's gaze drooped. She was aware of the fact that it might be a trap, but she still had no other choice. Lu Xu realized that the girl's wound was very serious and his altering fruit didn't help. It looked like only the world tree could save her. The girl wanted to share the information about the broken eternity spear with him, but changed her mind. After all, thanks to this spear, she was able to save our hero. Finding out about it would make him feel guilty. She didn't want to put that burden on him. Our hero realized that Carol was hiding something. His eyes followed her closely. He was left with only one option. He listed a number of organizations that had already landed on the island and reiterated that the girl was in great danger. He suggested that she run away, 
He didn't know where to run to, but he felt he had to help the girl. Carol took his hand and hugged him, saying that she agreed to run away with him together. Holding Lu Xu's hands, Carol was happy. She was ready to go anywhere with our hero. The angry members of the Protoss organization were watching them through the window. They saw the boy and the girl holding hands and walking away. The entire Protoss organization rushed after them. The girl was happy to run away with Lu Xu. It was like an adventure from a novel. She felt very happy around him. It was possible to forget about everything for a while. Lu Xu bought her an ice cream. Carol was very pleased. It was like a real date. Meanwhile, the spies of all organizations were closely watching them. Our hero guessed about the surveillance that was being conducted on them and thought of taking Carol to a safe place. A cool plan came to his mind as to how he could save the girl. Carol, along with Lu Xu, boarded a train and headed to another city. For the girl, the trip was unusual and new. Suddenly, the girl felt a sharp, intense pain in her chest and felt another crack appear inside. The guy noticed that the girl felt sharply ill. He ran up to her, worried about her condition. He was scared. They rode on the train and told each other about their childhood. In the south of China, among the mountains, a master lived in a lost cabin. He had been instructed by the Celestial Network that it was necessary to protect a boy, and he set out on this mission. When he came out of his house on the roof, he noticed a girl. It was the puppeteer. The puppeteer said that the old man should not go to Europe because there was enough chaos there already, and he could provoke a war that could destroy the whole world. The old man pointed his golden sword at her and wanted to know what significance this had to the puppeteers. Since when do they keep this world? The girl replied that this world must be kept intact. They cannot allow it to be destroyed. This world must be ready for the return of their king. The old man pointed his golden sword at her, and the girl jumped aside. She said they have no enemies. They only destroy those who get in the way. She ordered her puppets to surround the old man with their red threads and attacked him. Dozens of puppet arms with red threads headed for the master. The master cut all the puppets with his golden sword. Their remains fell to the ground. The puppeteer said that even if the master killed her, their king would only lose one subject, so they would not be left with a loss. She told the master that they shouldn't worry about the boy. She could guarantee that Bishop Logos wouldn't be able to kill him. The master didn't understand why the puppeteer talked so much about protecting the world and saving people. After all, he believed that the puppeteers wanted to destroy and kill them. The girl waved her hand and magical red threads spun around her. At the same time, our hero was walking through the carriages in search of pursuers and spies. He sensed nearby the approach of a familiar enemy he had met before. He noticed the familiar person. It was the Bishop of Logos Faith. The Bishop was not alone. He had another puppeteer with him. The puppeteer ordered the Bishop of Logos to stop all business in this city. The world was fragile, and until the king returns, it must be kept intact. The puppeteer's words infuriated the bishop. He glared his eyes and was angry at this treatment of him. The old bishop looked like a coward, and the puppeteer really looked intimidating. Lu Xu decided to stay out of his sight. Our hero shared the information with the girl that the bishop had stopped chasing them, and there would be no need to fight him. This news pleased the girl. But they should not relax, as other organizations are hanging around and waiting for a convenient moment to attack them. The girl was a little tired and laid down on the guy's shoulder to sleep and rest a little. Meanwhile, several people ran into the train and chased our heroes. Lu Xu spotted them and hugged Carol, telling her that everything would be okay. He pulled out his flying weapon. The bandit leader, clutching his clack and squinting his eyes, lunged at our hero. But in a second, he was lying on the floor of the train car, covered in blood. His accomplices did not realize what had happened to him. Lu Xu threatened that if anyone woke up the girl, he would kill everyone else as well. The spies saw something gray hanging in the air. They were terrified. They realized that the boy, who dared to escape with the boss of the Protoss, was very powerful. There was a discussion going on in the Order of Logos that the German tanks were not arriving in time, and other organizations were not to be feared. So the Spear of Eternity was already in their hands. The bishop said that the spear should go to them and Carol should be destroyed. Everyone who has been to the sacred garden knows that gods, as monsters, can control life. There should be no gods in their world, so Carol must be killed. Francisco got into the car and ordered him to drive faster so that he could intercept and kill Carol. But suddenly, all of a sudden, the car was attacked by some man jumping on the roof. There was a massive crash. Several cars were damaged. The damaged cars stopped their movement and blocked the road. The Protoss clan blocked their way, saying that their goddess was finally happy and no one could disturb her. Golden lightning flashed and a bright yellow beam lit up the sky amidst the pouring rain. In the train, the spies stood near our heroes and didn't dare to attack the guy. 
It was raining heavily and heavy thunderclaps were heard. Lightning flashed across the sky. Lu Xu had an idea. He asked Carol to electrocute him to try to recharge his sword. They went into the restroom where Carol tried electrocuting him a few times. There were strange sounds and screams coming from there. The spies stood outside the door and eavesdropped on what was going on in there. They could not understand what the young men were doing. The spies waited outside the door for half an hour. They did not understand what the boy and girl were doing and felt confused. After all, they had come to kill them. But the spies were afraid to go inside the toilet and kill our heroes. They saw how the guy had already killed many people. They wanted to join forces to deal with him. When the guy and the girl finished, his hair was standing on end and he was all electrified but satisfied. His sword energy had now turned into thunder sword energy. This was useful. It was like the more electric shocks the guy got, the stronger the thunder energy would be. When our heroes came out of the restroom, there was a crowd of spies waiting in the train car waiting for them to get out. The train station was ambushed by a large number of different organizations. The spies were smirking slyly, hoping that the guy would be dead in a couple minutes and would answer for all the shame he had inflicted on them. Lu Xu affectionately asked Carol if he could kill them. Carol replied in agreement. Lu Xu thanked the spies for escorting them their way and said it was time to say goodbye. In a second, the whole wagon was in blood spatters. The guy had killed all the opponents. When the train arrived at the final station, the military men waiting on the platform noticed blood pouring out of the carriage doors. The crowd, made up of groups from different organizations, was retreating. A helicopter flew in the air above the train. The doors opened and there showed our heroes they stepped outside. Activating his power, our hero shot down the helicopter. The helicopter burst into flames. It was hit and fell through the clouds to the ground. Surrounded by an aura of water, our heroes exited the train where a crowd of angry warriors of the Order of Logos waited. Our hero revealed that he had met two fighters in Africa. One of them had the element of strength and the other had the element of metal. Their strength matched well, and the guy suggested that the girl join their efforts too. Lu Xu offered to stand in front of the girl as a shield. He walked forward taking his magic sword and put Carol to stand behind him. Carol said that her wish had come true and the god had sent her the real hero she had been waiting for. Lu Xu was ready to be a hero for Carol and grabbed his flying sword and moved on his opponents. A crowd of enraged warriors from the Logos of Faith rushed at the guy. He summoned the power of his thunder sword. Thanks to the power of the thunder rain and the rolling thunder, everything around him was billowing with smoke from the explosions. Every single warrior from the Logos organization lay on the ground struck by the thunder strike. Just as our hero finished off the Logos warriors, a new group of fighters suddenly appeared. They all gathered together to attack our heroes. Taking his magic sword, which was now endowed with the power of 800 lightning bolts, our hero fought the fighters. There was a mighty roll of thunder. It was Carol who helped our hero to fight the opponents. They acted together. With each new attack, the Logos warriors became fewer and fewer, though at first they were countless in number. The head of Logos ordered that our heroes be surrounded and not attacked one at a time. The head of the order decided to use the faith renewal trick, and hundreds of feet moved towards our heroes. The entire sky glowed from the thunderbolt strikes. Cracks appeared all over the ground from the lightning strikes. The chief of the Order of Logos suggested our hero surrender, for their target was only Carol. They would spare him. Our hero was angered by such an offer and his feelings were hurt. He became angry and activated his sword, shattering the Logos warrior's defenses. Shattering the invisible dome of defense, the sword flew through and wounded the warriors from that order. Seeing the dead warriors on the floor, the Logos commander ordered the boy and girl to be killed. The space became so viscous, the pressure increased. Lu Xu found it difficult to move in this space. He couldn't even call for Carol's help. Suddenly, this viscous mass was pierced through by the Eternity Spear with a huge, powerful, thunderous strike. Lu Xu saw many cracks on the Eternity Spear that were not there before. At this moment, our hero realized that the cracks on the spear happened during the last battle when Carol saved his life and realized that Carol was feeling bad because of him. The cracks on the spear were appearing more and more, and Carol looked very tired and exhausted. After saying that she was fine, the girl fainted and fell to the ground. Lu Xu saw the girl lying on the ground and rushed to her aid. He didn't know how to help Carol. Lu Xu saw a crack on his hand that was glowing brightly. Our hero raised his hand, holding a blue ball of energy in it. This ball he pointed forward and made a protective ball of energy around the girl. Tears flowed from the guy's eyes. He was grieving greatly. Lu Xu took the girl in his arms and carried her away. He promised to save her. They walked in the rain with a ball of blue protective aura glowing around them. 
The commander of the Logo Squad reported to the bishop about yesterday's failed mission, that all the fighters had been wiped out by the young boy, and he had fled with Carol to an unknown destination. He didn't understand how this was possible. After all, they had sent hundreds of assassins and high-ranking fighters to the station. How could a child like that deal with them? Francisco suggested that the bishop cooperate with other organizations. That way, they could recover their strength and replenish the ranks of the warriors, the bishop said, but told them to remember that they were not the servants of the heavenly network and would sooner or later destroy them once they regained their strength. The leaders of the celestial network watched the guy's action on the big screen and couldn't believe that he had saved Carol. The heavenly king didn't believe that a boy could fall in love with someone and make sacrifices. He didn't expect that such strong potential lurked within him. The Heavenly King realized that Logos's fighting forces had been defeated. Right now, they were out of the game. The guy's main opponent was still only Satan from the European organization. The Heavenly King ordered to send reinforcements to our hero, as well as keep a close watch on the puppeteers. The participants of the Heavenly Network talked about the fact that there was no news about the guy lately. The informants were also hiding from them. Netton ordered the European intelligence to continue monitoring the island. Report the information to the Celestial Network as soon as Lu Xu showed up. They would need help as soon as possible. Lu Xu could force the cartel that had always remained neutral to help him hide them. The Celestial Network organization hoped that the guy was all right. Lu Xu and Carol were hiding in one of the small resort towns. They got lost among the crowd of other tourists. Carol was still very weak. Lu Xu carried her in a wheelchair. The girl wanted to eat ice cream. There was a Turkish ice cream stall nearby. Buying ice cream from a Turkish sweet seller, our hero did not know that he was in for a joke. Traditionally, the Turkish ice cream seller jokes on his customers by putting up a little show. The ice cream seller held out an appetizing ice cream cone to our hero. When Lu Xu reached out to take it, the vendor showed great skill and fooled the guy. He finally succeeded in grabbing the waffle ice cream cone, but the vendor masterfully snatched the ice cream from the guy's hands. Lu Xu was familiar with Turkish culture, so he didn't understand why it was so difficult to buy ice cream. Therefore, the guy just took and ate the cone of one cup. The Turkish ice cream vendor and Carol were very surprised that the guy just took and ate the ice cream cone. The Turkish ice cream vendor noticed how happy the couple was and gave them the ice cream cone, treating them to ice cream and a few waffle cones. The girl took the ice cream and said that Lu Xu was acting weird as usual and different from others. His reaction to the ice cream seller's jokes was unusual. Suddenly, Lu Xu noticed that the girl went from cheerful to sad and lowered her eyes. He asked Carol what happened. She replied that everything was fine and asked him to take her to the beach to the sea. Carol dreamed of seeing the sea. She had heard that in these parts it was incredibly beautiful and like a clear sky. Rolling the stroller with Carol, Lu Xu realized that every day she was getting worse and weaker. This was after she helped him fight in yesterday's battle. At the beach, the girl asked him to take her wheelchair to the cliff. Lu Xu lifted the girl out of the wheelchair and carried her in his arms. Carol wanted to go on a trip with a young man. It would be her last journey, and then, when she couldn't stand it any longer, she would jump off the cliff. But now the girl realized she couldn't do that. Lu Xu understood Carol. Holding her hand, he asked her not to lose hope. Carol realized that the only thing that could save her was the world tree that was being auctioned. But now the girl realized that the whole story was just a trap to lure her in. But without the tree, she didn't stand a chance. Lu Xu hugged the girl and said that there was still a chance. Carol couldn't believe his words. He showed a crack on his palm that was shaped like a tree. Carol saw it and asked what was this sign and why could it help her? The guy replied that it was a gift of fate, but he didn't know what it meant or how it could be used. Lu Xu felt warmth in his hand yesterday when the girl used her eternity spear in battle. Lu Xu suddenly thought, could this sign be a world tree? If that was the case, he could save the girl. The legend said that the world tree was so big that it reached up to the sun. A huge number of animals could dance in its branches. How could it fit in the palm of one man's hand? Carol had a hard time believing the story. Carol realized that the boy wanted to help her. It made her feel good, but she wished Lu Xu would just be by her side. Our hero stood his ground. He believed that there must be a connection between this sign and the Spear of Eternity. When he realizes what the secret is, he will definitely be able to save the girl. Carol said that she didn't eat all the fruits Lu Xu gave her. She had decided to save them, but now she felt very weak. She needed to make use of them. After learning that Carol was saving and saving the fruits, the guy ordered her to eat them quickly to replenish her strength. 
Lu Xu took out a large amount of fruit and handed it to the girl to replenish her strength. Carol continued to marvel at the guy's riddles. After all, with these fruits, it was possible to build an organization with super strong fighters. He treated his treasures so lightly, as if they were worthless. The two of them sat on the cliff edge and looked out at the sea. Rays of golden energy swirled over them after Carol had eaten the fruit. The girl felt a rush of strength and energy, feeling better and better inside her. Sitting the two of them and looking at the sea surface in the distance, Carol asked if the guy felt hatred towards this world. Lu Xu felt very little hatred at all. After all, in this world, you couldn't defeat a dragon or make a wish to a genie to resurrect the dead. All of these things the guy would immediately do to save Carol if it was possible. Carol was very pleased that the guy wanted to save more. She asked to be taken to St. Paul's Church. The girl longed to see it. Lu Xu agreed to do anything for the girl and take her even to the end of the world and defeat all enemies for her. This journey could be dangerous. The girl was getting weaker and weaker, but they set out on the road. Suddenly they saw a large number of cars on the road heading in their direction. The man driving the Jeep offered to take our heroes to their destination. The boy along with the girl decided to accept the offer and travel with these people. Lu Xu saw that the road was very difficult for Carol. She was breathing harder and harder. Could it be that her spear was deteriorating so fast? As they were driving down the road, a chase happened behind them. Bandits began to chase their car. They came to the town that was their destination. The bandits chasing them thought that Lu Xu and Carol would hide in the town and use the residents as human shields. There was a huge number of people in the town welcoming in the car with our heroes. It looked like some kind of festival was being held there. The bandits began to worry that they would lose the car among the crowd of people and lose sight of it. The crowd of people blocked the bandits' way, shielding our heroes and making a human shield. They had come to a music festival. The crowd of people parted in front of them. People wanted Lu Xu and Carol to follow to a certain place and guide them. The killer tracking down our heroes knew that Satan was getting close. Is the cartel really here to confront them? The students of the Heavenly Network sailed to the island to help Lu Xu. Lu Xu, along with Carol, were sent to the car and put wreaths on their heads. The road to the killers was blocked by the cartel and the crowd. They prevented the bandits from getting to the guy and the girl. The cartel driver thought that the guy and the girl were going to the church to get married there. After all, St. Paul's Cathedral was the best place for weddings, and hundreds of couples from all over the world came there to say their vows. Lu Xu thought about the fact that the girl dreamed of doing so much in this life, and she had little time left. He asked the driver to go faster. They pulled up to St. Paul's Cathedral. It looked very grand. There was a crowd of people gathered outside the cathedral waiting for the arrival of the car with our heroes. Lu Xu got out of the car in a beautiful suit and carried his bride in his arms. She was dressed in a long dress, and on her head was a beautiful festive wreath. The girl was very weak. She was practically falling asleep, but her dream of seeing this beautiful cathedral had come true. Lu Xu brought Carol up to this majestic cathedral and she saw how beautiful it was. The boy said that the cartel had prepared this ceremony for them and he hadn't realized it himself. He carried the girl inside this cathedral. This beautiful ceremony was tried to be prevented by the bandits who jumped into the crowd. But the members of the Heavenly Network said they would help our hero deal with them. They blocked the way of the bandits so that they could not prevent the guy from entering the church. From above, from the roof of the cathedral, new assassins flew. There were too many of them. Members of the Celestial Network and other organizations fought off the swarm of enemies. Our heroes entered the church where the bishop was waiting for them inside. The bishop welcomed the lovers who had been together through many hardships and trials. He said that the wedding ceremony was about to begin. The bishop asked the groom's consent to take this girl as his wife, to love, protect, and respect her in health and sickness for the rest of his life. Lu Xu looked fondly at Carol and said he agreed. When the bishop asked the girl if she agreed to take the guy as her husband, tears flowed from Carol's eyes. She apologized to the guy and, removing her hand, said she didn't agree. Carol said she had dreamed of someone loving her so much, but she didn't want to burden him with her future death. At this point, they would have to say goodbye. The eternity spear was broken into small pieces. Lu Xu screamed and called out for Carol, but she slipped away from him, dissolving into the golden light. Tears rolled from her eyes. She was saying goodbye to her love. Lu Xu was on his knees, stretching his hands into the air. His heart was bursting with pain. The spear of eternity shattered into small shards. At this moment, Lu Xu realized that Carol no longer existed. She had slipped away from him. Our hero's heart was bursting with pain and his chest was short of breath. Kneeling beside the girl's body, Lu Xu grieved greatly. While hugging her and feeling the sorrow and pain of loss, Lu Xu felt a blue light pouring out from his crack on his arm. 
A shard from Carol's body hung in the air. It was a piece of the Eternity Spear that flew onto our hero's arm. A new era had dawned. The splinter from the spear connected with the Tree of Eternity. Lu Xu was transported to a large shining tree woven with many branches and roots. It was the World Tree. There was one person waiting for our hero there. It was a legendary tree that could cover the sky and block the sun. Looking at this tree, Lu Xu realized that Carol was telling the truth. The person who lived in this tree said that she only liked our hero out of boredom. This man, standing on the branches of the tree, said that he would reveal another secret to our hero. In fact, the girl could still be saved, but the price of saving her was the world tree that belonged to Lu Xu. Hearing this, tears appeared in the guy's eyes. Lu Xu was willing to do anything to save the girl. To begin with, the man living in that tree asked one question. Did our hero think that the girl was so pure and that she was a true goddess? And since she is a goddess, could she have fallen in love with an ordinary mortal? Then this man said that the Spear of Eternity was just a branch of it, which is why Carol was so attached to the World Tree, and the World Tree was attached to our hero. That's why Carol thought she had feelings for Lu Xu. The man said that truly Carol was not in love with him. Lu Xu didn't understand how the World Tree was attached to him. He looked at his mark on his hand. That crack on his palm resembled a small glowing tree. Lu Xu was saddened by the realization that Carol was only drawn to him because she was attracted to the World Tree connection not himself. The boy thought about the fact that other than his little sister Xiao Yu, no one truly loves him. The man in the world tree asked if our hero still wanted to save Carol or had changed his mind. The guy thought that he didn't really want to see Carol die, and the days gone by were still filled with happiness. He wanted to believe it was all true. Sitting by the world tree, Lu Xu realized that he wanted to save the girl. The man in the world tree said he would do as Lu Xu wanted and save the girl. The man on the world tree waved his hand and magical glowing petals flew into the air. The next moment, our hero was transported back to the church, and all around him magical petals and glowing flowers fell from the tree. He raised his hand and saw his little world tree separate from him. Then it flew up, lay on the girl's chest, and glowed. The next instant, he felt Carol's aura glow. He felt that she was alive. He took the ring off the tin can and said it brought good luck. He put it on the girl's finger. Carol kissed his hand. The guy said his battle was yet to come and he was leaving. After saying goodbye to his love, he left the girl alone in the cathedral and walked away. The girl seemed to be lying unconscious, but faintly she asked Lu Xu not to leave. Carol's soul was in a dark space tangled with black threads. The girl was frightened. Reaching out her hand for the golden light moving away from her, she asked not to be left alone. It seemed to the girl that she was losing something very important, something she should remember. She didn't know what it was, and she didn't want it to disappear. Finding herself in nothingness, she reached for that ray of light. But she couldn't reach it because she hit an invisible restriction. She banged on that wall and tried to stop the ray of light from moving away from her. Carol cried and begged for her life, but not to take her most precious possession. Everything around her was flooded with bright light. The girl was transported and saw the outline of a shining golden tree. Suddenly, she remembered that she had died. She did not realize where she was. She saw a huge golden tree in front of her. A man appeared in front of her who said that he had wandered around the world for a long time. He had been parted from people many times, but no one had ever left him first. The girl asked who was this man. She was scared, but the man said it was okay and asked her to answer a few questions. Did she remember the Spear of Eternity? Did she remember the Protos? Carol, standing near the huge roots of the golden tree, said she remembered it all. Then the man asked one last question. Did she remember Lu Xu? The name seemed familiar to her and some memories flashed through her mind, but she couldn't remember anything exactly. Carol had a feeling that she had forgotten a lot from her past life. She asked who this guy named Lu Xu was. The man said for her to memorize that name because Lu Xu would soon create a new era. The man said the girl should memorize that name because the guy gave up the most precious thing in the world to save her life. The man from the Tree of Eternity said that the girl should go back again. The next moment her soul went back into the void that was dark. Carol's soul needed to rest. Soon she would return to her body. Looking at her hand, the girl saw a small glowing tree in the palm of her hand. Looking at the stars, the girl said that she would repeat Lu Xu's name and would never forget it. At this time, a strong battle was taking place on the doorstep of St. Paul's Cathedral. The bandits were fighting with the disciples of the Heavenly Network. The boss of the organization, Satan, had arrived. He offered everyone to surrender because he thought they were invincible. Boss Satan ordered his gang to kill everyone, sparing no one. The boss had a snake tattooed on his face. Chao Qingzi attacked one of the fighters with her spear. It hit him in the chest, 
Blood spurted out of his heart. The man fell unconscious. After seeing her technique, Boss Satan said that the girl was good at fighting. She wouldn't be able to kill him anyway. From St. Paul's Church, someone's footsteps were heard. Boss Satan turned around. Our hero stood there and said that he would kill this boss. The head of the German organization offered to show our hero his abilities. Lu Shu activated the power of his Eternity Spear, and the bandits started to fall one by one. He was incredibly strong, and no matter how many people attacked him, he could handle them all. His classmates were amazed at the heights the guy had reached. With just one move, he could kill all the enemies. The head of the Satan Tank organization could stop weapons with his bare hands, so Chao Ching Chu decided to attack him from the back. The girl's strength and assassin abilities were legendary on the internet. She acted amazingly. Boss Satan really liked the girl. He was fascinated by her strength and persistence. Lu Shu asked her to be careful because her opponent was a strong air element fighter. Satan created a powerful protective aura around him. Arthur, the head of the cartel, appeared to help them. He had the power of fire. He wanted to protect the lovers. If Satan attacked them, the cartel would also retaliate. The cartel leader and Chao Qingzi joined forces against Satan. It was difficult for Satan to face two fighters who were strong at once. The head of the tank organization decided to just run away instead of fighting them. But our hero appeared and said that he would not let him escape so easily. A few minutes ago, the number of swords that served the guy had increased, but he was still waiting for his second spirit sword to appear. Lu Shu attacked the ranks with his flying sword. Two sword spirits that looked very funny pounced on the head of the gang. One of the small sword spirits flew up and hit the bandit between his legs. The bandit crossed his arms in pain and screamed. Those watching the battle were astonished. How could a guy use such low techniques in such a serious fight? Lu Xu himself didn't expect a sword spirit to use such low techniques in a battle. Folding his hands, he asked for an apology from Master Satan. Satan replied that the heavenly net had made him too angry. There were many people in the tank organization who possessed the earth element, and they could leave. But Lu Xu didn't chase after them to kill them. It was strange and unlike him. His friends noticed that Lu Xu's condition had changed since he left the church. They asked how was his wedding. Lu Xu said that his wedding didn't take place. There is a saying that first love is needed for experience. It was strange to have a wedding only to realize that he wanted to be single. He wouldn't tell the whole truth about what happened there. But on the guy's hand, glittered a ring made from a Coca-Cola can. His friend realized that the ceremony had to be over. He felt sorry for his friend. As he walked out, everything around him shone with a bright golden light. Pink flower petals sprinkled from the sky. A tree with beautiful big pink flowers bloomed. These flowers floated through the air and fell all over the city. It was very unusual. Lu Xu's friend was surprised by these flowers, not understanding what kind of anomaly was going on. The guy realized that it had something to do with Carol. Carol returned to her Protoss clan. She didn't remember anything at all, only some snippets. But even though she had lost her memory, she asked to track down the guy she had met when she came out of the cathedral from a photograph. She liked him very much. Even after talking to him for a while, the girl fell in love at first sight. That guy was Lu Xu. When the tree spirit erased all of Carol's memories, he thought her feelings for the guy weren't real, but apparently they were strong. Seeing our hero in the picture, the girl realized that she had fallen in love with him. In another world, the spirit of the Tree of Eternity watching Carol realized that she really loved Lu Xu. The spirit who appeared in the Eternity Tree was named Trick. He was a puppeteer. Trick was visited by Yuni, who was looking for him and asked why he didn't respond when they called him. He replied that the others had died too, and he was with them. He didn't answer because he didn't know who was a traitor and who wasn't. Trick said that of the seven puppeteers, only three were alive. One was a traitor, and that's why the other puppeteers were ambushed. Another puppeteer said there were no traitors. Trick said that he used to think so too, but now he had changed his mind. Another puppeteer came to join them. They were all waiting for the new king to appear. They said that when the king is reborn, Trick will be in charge of the world tree as he is now. Trick said he had already chatted with the new king. All that is left of him is his spirit, and he continues to serve. The other puppeteer said, too, that their future king was a bit odd, but they even liked it. The other puppeteers were angry that Trick had given the king's world tree to a girl, and now he couldn't use it himself. Trick said that he always served the king's will and couldn't cross him so he gave the eternity tree to that girl. The puppeteer said they must follow the king and be able to kneel before him and die for him. No one but they would be so loyal to the king. Trick said he wanted to see how events would unfold. If the other puppeteers betray the king, he will kill them all. Meanwhile, our hero and his classmates from the Sky Network boarded a ship. 
The ship left the island and sailed on the open sea back to China. After a long journey, our hero returned home. Waiting for him at home was his little sister Xiao Yu, who missed him. She told about all her trips and adventures while her brother was away. Xiao Yu told what countries she had been to and what kind of world she had seen. The little girl said that she was amazed to see the vast world that awaited her outside the borders of China. She felt very lonely in such a big world. They went to their school to pick up their graduation diploma. There, they met many classmates. Lu Xu realized how much he had changed during his absence and how much he had matured. At school, our hero met Principal Li, whom he was very happy to see and suggested that he go to a restaurant, have a drink and talk. Principal Li also had some news he wanted to share. He shared that something strange was happening in the city. Recently, altered places with a strong aura had appeared in the world. The mutation rate of animals and plants had increased several times. There was news that high-ranked animals in the Middle East had killed hundreds of people and escaped into the desert. Their whereabouts were unknown. Elsewhere, thousands of spiders appeared in a city in Australia. The number of victims was enormous. The mutation of animals and plants was reduced by times. The inhabitants of ordinary cities suffered from this. When our hero was walking home from a restaurant, he saw large termites crawling along the street. There were so many of them that they were destroying houses. Lu Xu decided to report this to the Heavenly Network. The next day, a meeting was held at the school in a special class. The special class was to carry out daily patrols, eliminate mutant animals, and protect ordinary people. In the evening, while sitting at home, Lu Xu and Xiao Yu were eating altering fruits when they heard a strange sound. That sound was from a huge building collapsing. It had just collapsed. They rushed across the rooftops to rescue the survivors in this collapsed building. They had to act quickly or the people under the rubble would die. The little girl activated her sand spirit to put out the fire, but the supporting armature of the building was about to collapse. The little girl activated her sand power and broke up the rubble a little at a time. Activating his magic power, he held huge concrete blocks on top of him. Under their weight, he was all bowed down, but he wasn't going to give up. The girl felt the spirit of living people and ordered the sand spirit to lift them out of the rubble. The sand spirit in the form of huge hands made of sand lifted the wounded people from under the rubble. The help arrived and thanked the boy and his little sister for their invaluable contribution to the rescue of the injured people. The cause of the building collapse was a mutant ant found underground. Lu Xu remembered the spirit he met at the World Tree who told him that a new era was coming. Lu Xu thought, is this new era an era of uncontrollable mutant animals? Was this world threatened and the whole world order would be shaken? Lu Xu ordered the sand spirit and the little squirrel to patrol the city territory and kill all the mutant animals. Meanwhile, our hero decided to enroll in the Department of Animal Species Research. Walking into the new classroom, Lu Xu met his classmates from the past special class. It was a big surprise to see them in his new class he enrolled in. Lu Xu was counting on being able to enroll in an unpopular specialty and meet new people to get through the regular college years. Their instructor walked into the classroom. His name was Ronan, and for the next four years, he would be teaching the students new species. The instructor said that in this department, the students would study the specimens of the new species that they would find themselves. Lu Xu realized that they would have to hunt mutant animals. He was angry because he realized that the Celestial Network had built all of this. But there were no more mutant animals left in their town because Anthony the Sand Spirit and the little squirrel and his rats had killed all the mutant insects. Their teacher gave advice that he knew a secret place that no one had explored. It was mysterious and there were a large number of animal species there that had not yet been explored. This place was called the City of Ancestors. After the revival of spiritual energy, the Heavenly Network would establish a base there, so the students needed to find information. The teacher said that a couple of months ago, the organization's communication with a station that was on the outskirts of the Death Valley was lost. The expert of that station disappeared. Since then, no one knows what happened there. The next day, Lu Xu was on a train that was taking him to the Valley of Death. Along the way, he studied all the information he could find about this place. Some legends said that demons first appeared in this place for the first time in history, and there were many more different rumors and stories. The train was approaching the final station. Our hero got into a conversation with a traveler who had been to different parts of the world. Lu Xu asked him about the Valley of Death. The traveler said that now the entrance to the valley is strictly forbidden, but if you want to get there, because the border is very long and there is no way to guard its entire length. This man offered to take Lu Xu into his company, and the lad could join their traveling team. Late at night, 
Lu Xu arrived at a city that was located among the Rocky Mountains. This was the place where the most famous climbers in the city gathered. Lu Xu met a man among the travelers with whom he was traveling on a train. The guy offered money to join the team and travel with them to the Valley of Death. However, one of the travelers was suspicious of our hero's identity. He wanted to test him and follow him and ferret out his secrets. They gathered around a campfire in the evening. They wanted to get the guy drunk and learn all his secrets from him. But everyone was drunk and lying on the ground, and Lu Xu kept drinking beer. After two days, the team was ready to travel. Lu Xu was asked to buy clothes and equipment for the trek through the Long Mountains. They didn't know about his abilities. He was even in the freezing cold wearing only a t-shirt, so they were worried that he wouldn't do well in his clothes. The group set off on their hike. The rocks covered in snow looked very impressive. The group progressed through a gorge between high cliffs. They had mountaineering equipment. They followed their route, and their first resting place was a pumping station. There they were met by a man who did not expect to meet tourists, for it was a rarity in these parts. He offered them to eat soup and warm up. Then the group followed its own route. Many were tired and asked to camp, but the head of the group said that soon the rocks would end and there would be a clear field ahead. There they would make their camp. Suddenly a huge black yak jumped out of the snowy peaks to meet them. The yak was unusually large, its eyes glowing red and saliva flowing from its open mouth. One of the awakened who was accompanying the group rushed at the yak to protect the group. He hit the yak's face with a shovel. The animal howled in pain. Lu Xu watched the awakened man and the entire group thanked their bodyguard. With him, they could move through these dangerous terrains with peace of mind. The whole group came over to look at the huge yak that was lying bloody in the snow. They hurried to move on because the smell of blood could attract other dangerous predators. Finally, the group stopped for a rest and set up their tents. Protective netting was placed around the camp. Moving on for five days of travel, they did not meet a single animal, mutant except for a large yak. Along the way, our hero collected animal specimens for his research class. As they climbed one high mountain, their guide sensed some danger ahead. He ordered the whole group to lie low. Directly in front of them was a giant-sized mutant bear that was devouring its prey. Some members of the expedition were terrified, panicked, and wanted to run away. They acted carelessly and made a lot of noise. The bear heard the noise and noticed the expedition group. He rushed at them. The awakened one, who was accompanying the group and was a guard, was frightened by such a huge bear and rushed to escape. Lu Xu told the traveler who was leading the group that he would protect them all. The bear raised its huge paw with claws and wanted to kill the practitioner. The man who had promised to protect the group sat cornered and shaking with fear. The bear was huge in size and intimidating in appearance, and the awakened man was too weak to fight him. He began to beat the bear with a shovel. When the bear fell to the ground, the awakened man himself was surprised that he was able to kill such a huge bear. A valley was visible from which a blue light, similar to the northern lights, was pouring down. The group's guide, who was the awakened one and was protecting the group, went to the Valley of Death to find the treasure there, leaving the group behind. Lu Xu also went to the Valley of Death. The rest of the expedition also wanted to go there. They didn't want to be alone. Lu Xu went inside the base that the people disappeared from earlier and started looking for information that could help. He found a journal, but other than that, there was nothing else left. The last entry in that log was four months ago. At night, pouring himself a cup of warming drink, the guy stood admiring the beauty of nature and the stars. A member of the expedition came up to him, and they stood together admiring the beautiful starry sky. Lu Xu called his little sister Xiao Yu and told her that he had been to the Heaven's Web Base on the outskirts of Death Valley and found pictures of Ron and other staff there. He had a suspicion that something was wrong with Ron. The boy didn't understand the purpose of his teacher sending him to that base. He asked his little sister for help. Together with the others, she had to arrive at the base, but not to let the teachers know what was going on. The little girl Xiao Yu came to the teachers and told them that her brother and the campers were in danger. She asked permission to go to the rescue of their team. The teacher said that it was their direct duty to protect the common people. He would pack up and they would all go there together. Lu Xu promised his tour group that reinforcements would come to the base in a few days and they would get all the tourists out of that valley alive. The tourists waited at the base for reinforcements and soon they saw silhouettes of people approaching the base through the window. They called others to look out the window. There they saw people running in the shape of a Skynet. They were our hero's classmates. The Skynet team looked very young. They were just kids and the members of the tour group waiting inside were greatly surprised. Suddenly, a strange sound was heard from somewhere. 
Someone said it was wolves. The next moment they noticed that the base was surrounded by wolves. There were very many of them. A huge number of wolves that looked angry and hungry were coming closer and closer. The little girl Xiaoyu possessed a magical power to tame beasts. Just by thinking of keeping them still, the little girl forced them to lie down. The students were studying the animal species. Finally, they all came together. The teacher of the class told them that his twin brother had gone missing on this base, and his goal was to search for his brother and find out what happened. They decided to go to the Valley of Death and find out what happened there. The tourists were afraid that they would be left alone and eaten by mutant animals. They didn't know how to defend themselves. The group split up, and some of the students of the class went to the Valley of Death. There was no communication signal in this valley. Lu Xu walked through the valley and suddenly felt something strange behind him. He turned his head and saw a huge paw with claws that wanted to grab him. Our hero stopped and became silent. He did not react to the sounds and what was happening. His classmates called out to him, but he remained silent. The teacher said he had a case against Lu Xu. He must kill him. Our hero activated his magic power. He called his little sister Xiao Yu and asked her to create his double. Their plan was to arrange for Lu Xu to be switched with his clone without anyone noticing. That way, the real Lu Xu could follow Ronan's every move and reveal his true identity. Lu Xu was happy that his plan worked, however, his classmate was injured. Our hero thought that they couldn't stay in this place for too long, or else the blue light from the Valley of Death might return. Our hero started asking questions, why is the teacher hunting him? The blue light appeared behind our hero. Ronan said that the dragon was already here, and it would be impossible for the boy not to escape. A huge blue paw with claws glittered high in the sky. Golden light appeared around the dragon's paws. The heavenly king attacked. Netin was a heavenly king and flew in the air to kill the dragon. Lu Xu was very surprised to see the director of the heavenly Netin appearing out of nowhere. The heavenly king attacked the dragon with his weapon, and our hero was angry at him for using him as bait. Lu Xu threw his classmate on his shoulders and rushed to escape from the place. The heavenly king directed the power of the golden light at a rock covered in snow. The snow cracked, and beneath its deep layer, an entrance under the ground was revealed where a staircase could be seen. Lu Xu asked the heavenly king what he was doing in the Valley of Death. Netan beckoned them all to follow him down into the underground passage he had opened. On the walls of the cave were drawings of a dragon and people who worshipped the king. The members of the celestial network walked down the steps of the cave, looking at the rock paintings. Lu Xu shone her mirror and saw the image of the Dragon King. The murals looked very old and depicted different scenes of people's lives. On one mural, the guy noticed an image of a girl and she reminded him of someone. As the hero was walking down the steps to the bottom, he felt that his dragon, which was in the box, woke up. The spirit of the dragon became huge. The boy thought that there was a treasure in the cave that he was ready to devour. The cave was very deep and they walked down the narrow steps farther and farther until they saw something strange. They came to a very old, beautiful door that had images of a dragon on it. The Heavenly King ordered the guy to take out his magic sword and insert it into this door. The high sword spirit that lived within him appeared, and the guy had met before. Lu Xu didn't understand. If the sword spirit was previously a dragon, why did it seal the true dragon? The Heavenly King ordered that the guy should use the sword spirit to open those doors and destroy the dragon. Our hero took out a mirror that had a very bright light and illuminated the cave that was behind the door. In this cave, they saw an altar in the center that looked like an altar for sacrifices. The sword spirit recognized his uncle who was sealed in the cave. Once upon a time, he had killed dragons and humans in exchange for longevity. The uncle replied that in that long ago time, the aura was depleting more and more, and the number of dragons was getting smaller and smaller. They would have died anyway. The sword spirit replied that everyone was mortal, but he could not forgive the killing of dragons. The spirit sealed in the cave said that the recovery of spiritual energy showed that the barrier between the land of exile and this world was gradually breaking down, so one should save up spiritual energy. Lu Xu released his little chaos dragon that lived in his seal box. The little chaos dragon emerged from the seal box and devoured artifacts and treasures. The dragon surrounded the old man. This little dragon restored his bones using golden light and divine water. It replaced its flesh and blood with chaotic black mist. The heavenly king attacked the spirit that lived in the dark cave. The dragon's clawed paw grabbed the yellow light. Meanwhile, the puppeteers flew to the valley of death. They wove a net-like weave of red threads that seemed to protect, but no one yet knew what exactly it was protecting against. In the depths of the cave, the celestial king continued to fight the huge dragon. He was striking with his golden sword. The heavenly king was very strong and was not afraid of the head of the dragon clan in the slightest. Lu Xu, 
along with his little dragon Chaos, got close to the altar where the big dragon spirit was sitting. The old dragon only laughed at the fact that they wanted to destroy it because the altar was strong and unrivaled even among the gods. The little purple dragon Chaos took a bite out of the stone altar. In order to be big and strong, it needed to absorb artifacts and treasures. Then it would become huge. Seeing that the little purple dragon had bitten off the altar, the old dragon spirit rushed towards him. Meanwhile, our heroes took cover behind a large rock. The large dragon spirit approached the altar itself and began to cast a spell in an ancient, incomprehensible language. The sword spirit, who was also previously a dragon, shouted for the old dragon to be stopped. He could not be allowed to finish the spell to the end. The heavenly king once again flew towards the huge dragon spirit in order to stop it. It was a battle between divine beings. Their strength was incredible. The stones of the cave shattered and fell down. Lu Xu noticed that his little chaos dragon had evolved as well. Its intelligence was growing and it was becoming stronger due to the powerful aura that was there. He noticed that the Heavenly King's attacks didn't damage the altar in the slightest, while his little dragon was able to break it the first time. Chaos's main ability and power was to absorb surrounding objects. In the future, he could be more powerful when he mastered the dragon language. The Heavenly King folded his arms, bowed with a respectful gesture, and said that the deed was done and he was leaving first. The next moment, charged with golden light, he was ascending through the gorges with great speed. Left alone at the bottom of the cave, Lu Xu's classmate asked what they were going to do next when the Heavenly King escaped. Lu Xu asked his little dragon to return to the seal of the mountains and rivers. Soon Lu Xu and his classmate made their way out of the dark cave. The next step was to return to the base in the Valley of Death. Lu Xu's little sister was very happy to see her brother back alive. She missed him a lot. Xiao Yu told her that the puppeteers had come here. The puppeteers had built a magic red net in the Valley of Death to protect them, so the valley wasn't destroyed during the underground battle. This was very strange because it was previously believed that the puppeteers came from the Land of Exile. Lu Xu was curious to know the purpose of the puppeteers and what happened while they were gone. Also, the Heavenly King had taken the teacher away. This was revealed by a member of the Celestial Network. The Heavenly King flew here to take away Ronan's body and suitcase. Then he said that it was actually Ronan's doppelganger who had been bewitched by the remains of the evil dragon soul in the Valley of Death, and he wanted to kill Lu Xu. To accomplish his goal, he planned his disappearance to lure his brother, who was worried about him, and took all the students to the Valley of Death. At the hotel, the doppelganger killed his older brother and then used his identity. Two days later, all the students returned to the city. They were very happy about it. Lu Xu was cooking dinner for his classmates. The dishes looked very appetizing when they were served on the table. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. It was a surprise. Standing outside the door was Carol, who had just moved in next door. She came by to meet her and brought a small gift. The girl had lost her memory, so she didn't remember the whole love story between her and Lu Xu. After that, she said goodbye. Carol said that they would definitely see each other again. Lu Xu stood there, confused, and saw the girl off with a look. He realized that she really didn't remember anything. He felt sad that Carol had forgotten him. He had hoped to stop thinking about the past and move on without remembering Carol, but the girl was here again. It was a marvelous sign of fate. The little sister was greatly affected by it all. She felt unpleasant emotions and a dark aura was growing around her. Lu Xu hid the candy that Carol gave him in the cupboard and continued cooking. The lights were on in the big house, where people were packing things into boxes for the move. Carol returned to the house, there waiting for her was her subject, who was supervising the packing for the move. The girl felt joy. She was pleased that she was able to have a little talk with her lover. She hoped that she had made a good impression on him. Xiao Yu sat on the rooftop and looked at the starry night sky. She thought back to the time when the two of them lived together in the orphanage, and Lu Xu brought her to taste chocolate for the first time. She remembered her dreams that when she became an adult, she would buy the best things for Lu Xu. Clothes, the best candies and chocolates. The little girl felt useless. She sat on the roof and cried bitterly. Squirrel came home and saw the little girl on the roof and asked why she looked so sad. The girl said that the world without Lu Xu would be empty to her. She had no one in this world but him. She felt that he was the most important to her in her life and wanted to be important to him. Lu Xu went outside and called Xiao Yu home to sleep. The next day, early in the morning, our hero went to the academy. In the corridors of the building, all the students were only talking about the beautiful foreign girl. He realized that all the students were discussing Carol. She really fit the description. He wondered why she wanted to be a student. When he entered the classroom, the number of students in the classroom had increased. 
Usually there were five students in the classroom, but now I was a whole crowd. Lu Xu was very surprised by this. An announcement was written that since their teacher had died, the two classes were being merged into one. The class started, and the teacher introduced a new exchange student from Europe to the class. The girl was very beautiful and immediately caught the boy's attention. The Heavenly Network organization had received information about the appearance of the puppeteers again, and they were behaving rather strangely. No one knew what purpose they were pursuing. They seemed to have long disappeared. According to the records that were available, there had been a battle long ago in which four puppeteers had died and a few had survived. During the battle, one had escaped with a huge crate on his back. Netton had always thought the crate contained some sort of key, but he didn't know exactly what was in it. It was always thought that the crate contained an item that could break the barrier and help the king return. That was why Master Lee had been searching for the box, reviewing and rereading the report of the night the battle with the puppeteers happened. The celestial king remembered that at the time he thought he heard a baby cry. Neaton thought about the notes in the report and remembered that night. He had a hunch in his head that someone might have had an infant in the box. It might have been the king or a royal descendant. Then the heavenly king remembered our hero and wanted to know how old he was and when he was sent to the orphanage. A guess appeared in his mind. The man from the heavenly net asked, Did the heavenly king really think the guy was a demon king just because the heavenly king didn't like him much? At the same time, in the biology lab, students were studying mutated animals. Suddenly, Lu Xu saw Principal Lee from school in the college corridor. He was running somewhere. His face was all bruised and he had a band-aided wound on his nose. He was very battered. Principal Lee said that the plants in the city had mutated and we had to be careful. They were eating everything they could get their hands on. What they had talked about once in the cafe came true. Back home, Lu Xu took out his seal of mountains and rivers. Our hero concentrated and a blue light poured out of the seal. He was transported through space, his body floating above the city. Flying in the sky, he looked down at the city below him. By concentrating all his energy, he could push the boundaries of that energy further and further. His spiritual power could increase the boundary to a distance of over a dozen kilometers. He took his seal of mountains and rivers and tried to gather aura in a large area. But gathering so much spiritual energy required a large amount of star power, so our hero didn't have much success so far. Lu Xu got a call from the Heavenly King and told the guy to take up the study of motivated creatures and to be careful about sealing mountains and rivers. Our hero got the idea in his head to take all the spiritual aura from the Heavenly King, thus obtaining a large amount of negative emotions. A few days later, the guy sat in his house and took the seal of mountains and rivers. He tried to use it again. After realizing how the seal worked and expanded the boundaries along a given line, he was able to cover more and more area to absorb the aura. Learning to mentally control the flow of the absorbing aura, our hero found the dwelling of the Heavenly King. He ordered the water energy to cover the entire courtyard for him. The Heavenly King was furious. His negative emotion points were off the charts. The Heavenly King took out his sword, flew up and swooped down on the guy's spiritual consciousness. Lu Xu was transported back home to his couch. He succeeded in taking away the spiritual aura. The Heavenly King had the idea of selling the nets that the guy had set with his seal of mountains and rivers. But the barrier created was so strong that it couldn't be pushed away or destroyed. It enveloped everything in a blue light. The Heavenly King used his golden aura to break the protective barrier. He was putting in more and more strength because he didn't want to lose to the young lad. His efforts made the entire surroundings shake as if an earthquake was taking place. A golden aura funneled around the courtyard, but the courtyard couldn't withstand the pressure and everything collapsed and shattered into pieces. The Heavenly King had an epiphany and made a discovery. Fighters of the highest ranks should form their own world, but this was tantamount to changing fate, so it entailed heaven's punishment and disaster. Heavy lightning flashed in the sky and houses were destroyed. A real disaster was about to break out. It was necessary to find Lu Xu to try and stop it. The Heavenly King's aide called and told him that the Heavenly King had realized the true meaning of high-ranked fighters. Our hero had helped him in this, and now he was the only person who could stop this disaster. The Heavenly King's aide said that they were acting like children, constantly putting up battles, and now even the house had collapsed. Somewhere in the north, a golden-colored aura appeared, which illuminated the surroundings. This was followed by a purple thunder that awakened all the birds. The animals, horses, wolves, ran in herds forward. A vortex appeared in the rocky area, which flashed with bright lightning. Old Man Lee and his master arrived at this place. It wasn't often that an A-rank fighter would break through here. Master looked very stern. A strong fight could soon break out. The Heavenly King stood near a huge purple funnel with the most powerful aura. 
The two masters and puppeteers were going to that place, flying together. The bishop and other high-spirited fighters were also heading there. The heavenly king was trying to break the last barrier with his magic sword. The heavenly king was incredibly strong, his golden sword breaking through the last defense. Levitating in space, he fearlessly approached the purple thunder. The puppeteers approached Old Man Lee. They were preparing revenge. They had a thirst to kill him. Old Man Lee said that he was not so easy to kill, and after casting incantations, he summoned his magic weapon. The magic power awoke and attacked the puppeteers. But the puppeteers were not going to give up so easily. One of the puppeteers cast a red thread spell and sent his little puppets to attack. The Heavenly King closed his eyes and focused his thoughts on breaking through the defense shield. Carol joined this battle of the strongest fighters and gods. She was the goddess of the Protos. She noticed all the high-ranked fighters who had started to figure out each other's relationship with each other. The puppeteer surrounded Old Man Lee, who was taking care of Lu Shu and teaching him. Carol saw this and rushed to the old man's aid. The girl was very furious and swiftly flew towards the puppeteers. Seeing her, the puppeteers wanted to retreat back. Old Man Lee was confused. He didn't understand why the puppeteers left and changed their minds about fighting once they saw Carol approaching. He realized that the girl liked Lu Shu so much that she was even willing to join the fight because of him. The thundercloud, flashing with lightning, seemed about to split. Netan was at the very epicenter and was striking with his magic sword with golden light. The crack was getting stronger and stronger and nothing could stop the heavenly king from raising his rank. He felt so much power in his hands, as if he could chop the entire world with a single strike, but he needed to be careful. He saw Master Lee, another master, and Carol standing in the distance. The Heavenly King thanked them for protecting him from the puppeteer and the bishop. Netan was congratulated for being the first to reach this space, so he got to name it. He named this space Shengenzio. The star map that Lu Xu practiced stopped absorbing aura, and he became aware of the new space above the A rank. A few hours later, the Celestial Network workers were dismantling the destroyed debris of the building after the Heavenly King had stayed there. Now their home was destroyed. They needed to go to the hotel. Back at the destroyed house, the Heavenly King looked dissatisfied. They were transported to the headquarters of the Celestial Network. The Heavenly King admitted that he could no longer fight because of his promotion. He felt that the world might split apart. His new power was against all laws. He feared that it could change and split space. Now the Heavenly King was like a bomb and at any moment could explode and change this world. They had concerns about the further use of force. His assistant said that they had time for now, as the other fighters would focus on increasing their abilities after yesterday's battle. The Heavenly King wondered why the puppeteers could help him with his entry into the realm of the gods. Meanwhile, Lu Xu confronted the Heavenly King and got ready to go to Changbai Mountain. Something great and significant had to be done to anger the Heavenly King. Little Sis asked to go with Lu Xu to the mountain, but our hero asked to cover for him here. The guy used his ability to change his appearance and took a new mask so that no one would expose him. Xiao Yu asked him to be careful, take care of himself and take care and said goodbye to her brother. When he was leaving his house, his classmates were walking towards him. They wanted to ask the boy to take the mountain with them. They were very persistent. As they approached the house, they saw some strange old man coming out of there. Then the old man suddenly fell down theatrically and made a play. Then he got up and ran away briskly. One of the buddies shouted to the old man to stop because he realized that under that mask was their friend. They didn't know how the guy could have changed his appearance, but his demeanor and the tin can ring on his finger gave him away. One of the buddies said that since his failed wedding on the island of Sardinia, the guy had been wearing a tin can ring on his finger. And another hunch struck the fat man. He realized that their new classmate was Carol, Lu Xu's fiance. Our hero, hiding under the guise of an old man with a balding head, wearing glasses and a yellow jacket, came to the bus stop to wait for the bus. He opened the news and read that the Skynet had blocked the entire area of the mountain trying to hide something. Traveling there alone was becoming dangerous. The guy was confused, not knowing what to do. He just wanted to make life difficult for the Heavenly King. But now, everything suddenly changed. His journey could be too dangerous. Our hero received a call from Mr. Schur, telling him that his status had changed. He was now becoming a teacher of a special martial arts class in college. Lu Xu was shocked by this news, for he was now becoming the teacher in the class that Carol was in. It looked like the Celestial Network was trying to restrict him with the teacher position. It was obvious that there was something interesting on Changbai Mountain, so the Heavenly King was trying to make the guy sit still and restrict his movement. It was also a mystery to our hero why the Heavenly King was quiet and didn't do any aggressive behavior. At the same time, in the Logos of Faith organization, the bishop was sitting on his wooden throne. 
It was reported to him that a new report had come in about Changbai Mountain. Francisco wanted to send a detachment there to investigate. The bishop saw that the heavenly king was laying low and doing nothing after being promoted. With such superpowers, the heavenly king would have killed everyone long ago, but he didn't do it. Perhaps the celestial king needed to stabilize space, or perhaps he was busy training the members of the celestial network. The puppeteers had said the last word at the meetings to the bishop that this world was in a very fragile state. The bishop sent his men to the Changbai Mountain to scout the situation and find out what was happening to the heavenly king. The classmates noticed Lu Xu's quick return. They were surprised because he was going to visit Changbai Mountain. Back home, Lu Xu told his little sister that he got a call from the school principal saying that he would now be a teacher. The little sister felt very excited. She said that he should definitely buy himself some new clothes and stick to a more formal style. Walking around in t-shirts was now impossible. Lu Xu tried on beautiful, elegant suits, shirts, and ties. Creating new looks and trying them on, our hero chose his perfect look. He chose a pair of glasses, a white shirt and pants that suited him very well. The suit was too expensive, but Xiao Yu wanted to buy the most beautiful suit for her brother. In the college, all the students were discussing about the new teacher's appointment and the new course. Carol was very curious about what the discussion was about. But who would be their new teacher? Carol felt very happy. Then she realized a very important thing. If Lu Xu became her teacher, they couldn't be together. After all, a teacher couldn't have a relationship with a student. The girl felt regret because she refused to be a teacher. But if she agreed, the two of them could be teachers. Lu Xu found his class where he was supposed to teach martial arts. He realized that the leaders of the Heavenly Network had specifically offered him to be a teacher, thus removing him from the competition. But our hero had an idea on how he could still earn negative emotion points. All the students in the class wanted to see how Lu Xu's first lesson as a teacher would go. A huge number of students gathered for this performance, and our hero walked around collecting negative emotion points. The moment came when he approached Carol with the document. He recognized her and wanted to talk to her, but realized that their relationship was over. He collected himself, calmed down, and suggested she scan the QR code to become friends. Class started and Lu Xu invited one of his classmates to demonstrate attack and defense techniques. His classmate didn't want to participate in the experiment, but he had no choice and Lu Xu easily tossed him in the air like a toy. After teaching the first lesson and telling the students that enemies don't attack like this, he advised them to never be merciful in battle and to think of themselves. The second rule was to never be kind to your enemies because they will not be kind to you. In the first lesson, the new teacher wanted to share the theoretical rules of combat. The main weapon in battle is wisdom, not a long sword in the hand, so students need to study hard. This was the third lesson. Lu Xu remembered how he had killed a spy in the first ruins. At that moment, he realized the law. Either you kill, or they will kill you. The next question was, if the teacher has a girlfriend, how long has he been single? The most popular quote of the new teacher's speech was, where did you see saints in the war? If they were there, they would have died immediately. After the first martial arts lesson, everyone gathered in the courtyard of Lu Xu's house to celebrate his first day as a teacher. Late at night at his home, Lu Xu was preparing lessons for tomorrow. Since he was now a teacher, he must know the subject well. He wanted to tell the students about the ruins and analyze the mechanism of the ruins, but remove the name of the organization from the story. Little Sis came to see what her brother was up to. She suggested a correction in the lecture plan. It should be said that relic creatures can have higher intelligence. Our hero spent half the night making corrections and additions to the lesson. He came to college in the morning sleepy and sleep deprived. He notices the students in the class who called him to look at something. They ranked the most beautiful girls of the college. Late at night, Lu Xu took his little sister to Baymag Mountain. He took her because with the increase in rank and perfection, Natural disasters could happen again. Thus, our hero wanted to protect the little girl from being negatively criticized by others. He took out a small purple ball and offered it to his little sister to test. There was a burst of tremendous magical energy. It attracted the other animals. The little girl's breakthrough also attracted visions of heaven and earth. Her skills were very powerful and special. These visions of heaven and earth that the little girl had summoned did not work on Lu Xu. Perhaps because of his exercises and training. The little girl was standing in the middle of a forest clearing. She had succeeded in summoning a black stream of energy. But suddenly this energy flew at Lu Xu and hit his chest. He felt that this energy turned into star power and lit a new star for him. 
The little girl's ability was to control dead souls. She already had two souls that she controlled, and a third should appear. Lu Xu suggested they go back and check how the new ability would work. They were walking through the dark night forest and felt some kind of attack behind them. It was getting unsafe in these forests as plants all over the city started attacking people. Under the roots of a huge tree, they noticed a pile of dead animal remains. They returned to their house, and Lu Xu took out the seal of the mountains and rivers. He concentrated his energy and activated a power that could absorb aura. Levitating above the forest, he noticed that the aura concentration in the academy on Changbai Mountain was much stronger than before. No wonder mutants had appeared here. Lu Xu used his magic power and absorbed the aura of this place. He transferred the excess aura to the mountains and transferred the rest to the academy, where there were many awakened people. He looked down at the city from above and was satisfied with his work. Now both the awakened would be comfortable and there wouldn't be any mutated creatures in the city. It was a great option. The guy imagined that he was probably definitely from the lineage of emperors and great generals. Suddenly, out of the blue, he noticed sparkling lights and some activity in one of the houses. Bright sparks were flying around the neighborhood. It was the house of his former classmates who were currently fighting amongst themselves. Lu Xu went down to find out what was going on and prevent his friends from destroying the house. He ordered them to stop and stop fighting. He saw his friends kicking each other and called out to him for help. The classmates were acting like children spitting at each other and competing with each other. Lu Xu shouted at them to both of them to stop. The classmates, Lu Xu's friends, didn't realize what had happened and how they were divided. One of them got a superpower after the fruit he ate. When he sang his silly song, the birds that were sitting on the branches singing heard his song and fell down from the tree. They saw that this song really worked when two sparrows fell to the ground. Chen's friend possessed an interesting ability. Lu Xu pondered whether it might come in handy in the future. While they were fighting, a guest came to our hero's house and knocked on the door. Unexpectedly, it turned out to be a counterfeit seller. He told us that he had already recovered from his injury and had come to become a teacher at the academy. He told us that after his injury, he could no longer fight. Now his usefulness would only be as a teacher. Our hero listened to him attentively. Suddenly, Lu Xu realized that he wanted to be like him. Even though the counterfeit seller was badly injured, he still wanted to be useful to people. They hadn't seen each other for a long time and hugged each other and went to talk. The salesman offered to open a big supermarket like the one he had in Africa. He recalled his small store and wanted to restart that business. Here, he needed help. Lu Xu realized that this man wanted to use him to sell fakes together, and he thought his friend wanted to find him. Disappointed in their friendship, he walked out and closed the door. Lu Xu took out a glass of water and told him he didn't want to hear any more business ideas. They said goodbye, and behind his back our hero hid the active power of water. He wanted to do something to help this man, and added half of the altering fruit to it. Meanwhile, the teams for the competition were arriving at the academy. Lu Xu was not allowed to participate in them, tricking him into becoming a teacher. Young students were coming out of the van ready to participate. Lu Xu noticed that the teacher of these guys was also very young. Lu Xu headed to the college principal's office. In the principal's office was his friend from Africa, who was acting unusually. The principal said to ignore him and asked our hero which department should be sent to the competition from the academy. Lu Xu replied that the species research department should be invited to participate. The principal replied that he hates the species research department. Lu Xu said that he would not participate in this competition anyway, so he insisted that his department should participate. The director finally agreed and told Lu Xu to send the list of participants. Lu Xu pondered that the competition was a great chance to earn negative emotion points. His little sister would participate in this competition and all the negative emotion points our hero could take away. His friends had another fight at school to test each other's raises. While they were running around the auditorium and fighting, our hero began his lecture on the organizations of the gods. He told how he once met a wizard in the ruins and the wizard helped him survive. Carol sat in the audience and listened to this lecture. Memories began to come back to her. She realized that that person in the ruins was her. The girl longed to remember all their stories with Lu Xu, but she couldn't yet. She made a promise to herself that she would definitely bring back those memories. After class, the girl went back home to talk to her cousin. He said he had some urgent news from Changbai Mountain and led the girl to follow him. Sitting at the computer screen, he started looking through all the documents and photos. It said that the Celestial Network had always withheld information about this mountain. According to legend, a long time ago, a fire demon killed people on this mountain. Since then, every year since then, Fire burst out on this land, burning forests, plants, and houses. 
It was now believed that a great treasure existed on this mountain. The legend of the treasure there began to spread on the internet and cause problems. Carol said she would try to find out as much information as she could about the case. She needed to keep attending college. Through monitoring the forum, they saw that there was a new post about this mountain. Lu Xu also monitored the new information on the forum. He called the old man. Our hero told him that people on the forum are distributing a route map to Chiang Bai Mountain. The director of the foundation should know what to do about it and how to control the situation. The old man replied that it is impossible to track the accounts and forum activity, but he will do his best. Today, he will go to meet with the heavenly king to clarify the matter. There was unusual magical activity on Chiang Bai Mountain. The foundation director called the heavenly king to get permission to enter Chiang Bai Mountain to investigate the recent rumors. The foundation director said that this trip was a secret. He is the only one who will go there. It will not be easy to determine his location. The Heavenly King said that he had created a special weapon on the mountain. After the old man enters that mountain, he needs to be careful. The Heavenly King created a sword defense system on this mountain against uninvited guests, but it has nothing to do with the ancients. The old man walked to the foot of the mountain. He was ready to face the obstacles that awaited him there. He saw a group of grazing deer on the mountain. The deer were intently watching the man rushing through the sky, surrounded by a blue aura. The deer had special built-in cameras in their eyes that transmitted the image to a large screen. The people sitting at the monitor recorded the image of the old man. They wanted to publish these pictures. And all over the planet in a second, news spread about the director of the foundation that appeared on the mountain. The news said that the treasure was about to be found. Celestial Network studied all the hot news and reports that appeared on the screen. The Heavenly King was sure that the foundation had just been set up and some unknown person had purposely leaked all the information to the network. The Heavenly King was sure that all the rumors about Mount Chiang Bai and the conflict between the Heavenly Network and the Foundation was deliberately created to lure the Foundation's director to the mountain. The real purpose was to use the Foundation's authority to convince the world that there was a treasure on the mountain. The other party's actions made the whole world hate the Heavenly Net. The Heavenly King pondered over the true purpose of his opponents. It seemed that it consisted of destroying the Heavenly Net organization. Mr. Shur pondered, how could the information about Old Man Lee's stay on Chiang Bai Mountain have gotten into the network if it was classified? The Heavenly King said that there were two possibilities of what happened. The other party knew that the Foundation people would come to Chiang Bai Mountain. Therefore, they had set up cameras there in advance. The other option was that there might be a spy in the Foundation Neaton told his assistant that he was going to find out what was going on. Master Schur said he would announce an emergency message to all the members of the Celestial Network to be ready to go to Chiang Bai Mountain at any time. A new message appeared on the network. The breaking news said that the Celestial Network was using forbidden means. Some members of the Celestial Network were controlling the souls of the dead. The Heavenly King and his assistant thought about who in their organization could have such an ability. The idea came to them that perhaps someone in their organization was hiding their real abilities. They immediately thought of our hero. He fit the description perfectly. Lu Xu heard the latest news that published information about his little sister's ability to control the souls of the dead, which they were carefully hiding from the organization. Lu Xu thought about what would happen if the organization not only found out about the ability, but saw the power of the soul in her hand. It turns out that someone was constantly watching the little girl. Nurse ran into the room to our hero, showing the latest news. They said that someone unknown had posted a picture with Anthony's spirit on the Foundation's forum. They saw the picture, which was taken in the ivory ruins. It turns out that already then someone unknown was following them, but the photo had been photoshopped. It made it look like it was not the girl, but Lu Xu, who was controlling Anthony's soul. Lu Xu said that it looked like everything was set up on purpose to frame him. Someone unknown was acting very secretive, not daring to do something without proof. It might happen that the Celestial Network will exclude our hero from its ranks after the information about the banned techniques is made public. After that, the guy would become more vulnerable. The little girl walked over to her brother and took his hand. She supported him and told him not to worry about anything. Lu Xu replied that whoever published this information should be found and killed. It was already very late. Lu Xu told his little sister to go to bed and from tomorrow they would start browsing the forum. But our hero still couldn't sleep. He thought about what if all the information and abilities they were hiding were revealed, in which case they would have to run away. But what if they were to be chased by the Celestial Net? What if the Celestial Net is actually on their side and will protect them? 
All these thoughts in his head and memories tormented our hero. He remembered how once long ago in the beginning, he was reluctant to join the Heavenly Net. But as time passed, their bond grew stronger and stronger. He felt the thread that bound him to this organization. Already lying in bed, our hero was checking the information that appeared on the forum. The opponent was very talented. They seemed to be someone very dangerous, who played people like chess and pushed different organizations against each other. Lu Xu's main goal was to get out of this game and not let the opponent fool himself. He would kill anyone who wanted to manipulate him. He felt that this world was becoming more and more dangerous. One must become stronger to protect all that is dear, the lives of his loved ones. The next morning, he got up very sleepy and sleep-deprived because he'd been thinking about the forum and the news all night. Lu Xu came out of his room with huge dark circles under his eyes. He said he had been reading the forums all night trying to figure out that person. Little Sis and her squirrel were lying on the kitchen table and wanted to sleep too. The two of them had been looking at the forum all night and were terribly tired. Lu Xu realized that his little sister was also worried and trying to help him find information. He realized how important it was to have family and loved ones around for support in times of need. They were discussing the incidents of the previous night when they heard a knock on the door. They weren't expecting visitors so early. They were members of the Heavenly Network, one of whom was a new teacher. They had come after the forum had reported about members who could control dead souls in order to test our heroes. Lu Xu replied that of course they know about it because they also read the forum and saw the news, but he didn't reveal the truth. The college principal said that his superiors had ordered a squad in intelligence to block all information about the ruins of the island and hand it over for verification. Lu Xu was surprised to hear this news. That's why he realized that the Celestial Network was keeping it secret. The director said that this ability is not such a big problem. There's a lot of forbidden sorcery in Southeast Asia except soul control. Our hero asked his guests to stop playing spies and tell the reason for their visit. The reason they came was because something had happened on Chiang Bai Mountain. A group of people had gathered in the forest to go on a treasure hunt. The head of the group gave instructions and said that there was good pay for this task. In case of an emergency, everyone would gather on the hill. But suddenly they saw members of the Heavenly Net rushing towards them. The man called out for the Earth Element, awakened ones to attack the Heaven Net warriors. The boss saw that the Heavenly Net warriors were close and tried to escape, leaving his group behind. The Celestial Net warriors captured the man, pointing their swords at him. He raised his hands and shouted that he would surrender to tell everything. This result of the interrogation with the report was sent to the intelligence director's phone. The report said that these people were hired to investigate the location of the Heavenly King's swords. It was speculated that the employer who hired them might be involved in the information that appeared on the forum. Lu Xu thought about why the Heavenly King hadn't made a single move to solve this problem. After all, he is the strongest in the world right now. Perhaps something is going on with his body. The people who came to see Lu Xu talked about how the eyes of the entire world were now fixed on Mount Cheng Bai. The situation is getting more and more serious. No one knows when and where the battle will take place. They offered Lu Xu to go to that mountain, but our hero refused. He didn't want to go there. He said that if the organization really wanted to start a war, the team should be led by the Heavenly King. Lu Xu didn't understand why exactly he should go there. He was told that everyone else would also go there, but it would be much more effective if Lu Xu was put in the lead. After his adventure in Sardinia, he was considered an extremely dangerous person. Lu Xu was not so easy to deceive, and they decided to attract him with the offer that he could take all the treasures found on the mountain for himself. But even this offer could not attract our hero. He refused to go to the mountain. He wanted to be a simple teacher and stay with his class. Lu Xu replied that if all the awakened ones from different organizations in the world attacked, it would be the biggest battle since the creation of the Heavenly Network. He doesn't think they will win it. It's impossible to fight the entire world alone. Meanwhile, the warriors of the Heavenly Network surveyed the area of Chiang Bai Mountain. Spiritual power fluctuations were noticed, but they couldn't figure out where they were coming from. They heard some noise and pointed their swords in that direction. The energy, as they later saw, was coming from the battle of two mutated animals. On this mountain, the mutation of species was happening too fast, and the beasts had a lot of energy. They noticed a huge mutated bear struck in the battle. After examining its body, they went on to look for a place with a suspicious fluctuation in spiritual power to find the gang boss. Meanwhile, the boss they were looking for managed to hide under the skin of the slain bear. His name was Eric, 
and he was an awakened with the power of the earth elemental. There was an attack on the heaven's net warriors who were guarding the canyon. A huge rock, entangled with thorny plant stems, rolled at them. It rolled with tremendous force and the heaven's net warriors activated their swords and stabbed into that stone. This shield was made by the awakened Eric, his hands blazing with fire. The Awakened One was inside this stone defense. He created a stone shell around himself, entangled with spiked vines. While inside this ball, Eric sought to get inside the canyon that was guarded by the warriors of the Celestial Network. The Heaven's Net warriors were trying to delay the Awakened Man and prevent him from breaking through. Eric activated his power, transformed into a stone man, and broke through inside. Not Ting Heavenly King forbade his men to go into the canyon, otherwise his sword formation might be harmed. Master Shur asked the Heavenly King, what would they do next? After all, this breakthrough to the mountain would also lure everyone else. The Heavenly King ordered a squad to be set up to monitor the news on the forum and inform the members of the Heavenly Network that everyone was going to Chang Bai Mountain. Eric was excited to be able to go to this mountain. But then something strange happened. He heard some sound and saw a bright light. One second later, the bright golden light cut him in two. But Eric took special drops and his body was created from sand and stone. Thanks to this, he remained alive. He saw a formation of swords hanging in the canyon. Eric realized that the people who directed him to that mountain had a personal score to settle with the Heavenly Network. The flames of the swords shone and blazed all over the canyon. Eric, dodging those bright rays, remembered that he needed to take pictures. It was too difficult to get here to leave empty-handed. He pointed his camera lens at a formation of swords that looked like a bright sun with long rays. Eric was running away from the flying knives that were chasing him. He managed to run behind a high cliff and found shelter there. This place protected him from the fire knives flying from above. Eric was already running out of strength to dodge them. Having completed his task, he proceeded for further instructions. The man who hired him gave him a box containing a gray metal ball. The instructions said that it was to be filled with spiritual power after completing his tasks. The awakened Eric concentrated on the small ball. The next moment he was transported to some other space. He found himself in an unfamiliar place. He didn't realize where he was, and then suddenly he felt a strong prick in his chest. He froze in place and blood flowed from his chest. Eric got to some place where someone in a dark long cloak with long claws was waiting for him. This person impaled Eric. This cloaked man tricked the awakened man to lure him in. Then he took the metal bead. Meanwhile, our hero was finishing giving a lecture to the students in the large auditorium. After wishing everyone a good day, he walked out of the classroom. Headmaster Lee and his girlfriend, another awakened one, were walking towards him. They said they had come to say goodbye. They were all going to Chang Bai Mountain. Someone had infiltrated the canyon at night and posted pictures on the forum. The public was now against the Sky Network. Our hero was upset when he heard this news. They lastly offered the guy to go with them. But Lu Xu refused again. His class would host his students' competition tomorrow and he would cheer for them. His friends said goodbye to him and left, wishing him good luck. Our hero left and thought about the fact that more and more people were going into battle one by one. It seemed to him that the First World War of the Awakened might be about to happen. The Director of Intelligence showed up with the breaking news that war was about to break out. The man who hid his identity and stabbed a knife right into the heart of the Celestial Network prepared a real show. He posted new information on the network. It spoke of a god realm. It was a formation of an extraterrestrial world with its own rules that were very close to the source of power. All the organizations read the new message on the forum. The next message said that the whole world was broken. It said that no one knows what reaction can happen when the Force encounters a broken world. The new message revealed the secret of the Heavenly King's inaction. It said that a Heavenly King who had ascended to the realm of gods could die at the first opportunity. All the people around were glued to the monitors of their devices. Everyone was reading the news posted on the forum. The airport had been taken over by the Order of the Phoenix. The loudspeaker was telling all passengers to leave the building. Panic broke out inside the building. People were frantically running away. They were terrified. It looked like the Order of the Phoenix was going to go to Chang Bai Mountain. The latest news said that the Logos organization had also arrived at the airport building to go to the mountain. Likewise, an organization called Saints and German Tanks were also aiming for the mountain. Everyone was going to this mountain. It looked like someone was using these organizations for their own purposes. Sitting on board the plane, Bishop thought that it might be a trap, but the person who lured them to the mountain was weak and was using all the organizations to achieve the goal. This cooperation was beneficial for and Bishop Faith because this way he could suppress and defeat the Heavenly King.
this was a great opportunity. Due to the emergency, the competition that had been arranged between the colleges was canceled. Carol heard the news that the Celestial Network was in trouble and swiftly flew to the rescue. The organization Celestial Network sent a squad to the mountain to mop up the awakened who had fallen through the mountain. Next, the Celestial Network found a spy within its ranks and neutralized him. The Spirit Network announced a reward for surrendering spies. One spiritual stone could be obtained for one spy, but there had to be solid evidence. Lu Xu lay down and read the news that appeared on the network. Events were unfolding very quickly, and he remembered the conversation that had happened the day before. When Director of Intelligence Ming Yu had recommended him to go to Mount, information had come in that many organizations had climbed Mount Changbai yesterday. The awakened ones from the Celestial Network had killed the high-level experts on the mountain who were hiding in the mountains. After this conversation, Ming Yu left. Lu Xu recalled the words of the Director of Intelligence and realized that he had judged and rebuked our hero for not going to the mountain with everyone. Our hero couldn't make a decision whether to stay at home further or go there. He went to the internet to see what they wrote, and there were more than a thousand messages from people that the organization of the Heavenly Network has become a threat to the whole world. He invited his little sister to go out on the roof and think about what to do next. He was scared. His little sister told of a scary dream she had had. The dream was about old man Lee being killed on the mountain. In the dream, she saw as if he had been killed by one of the puppeteers. She asked her brother to go to the mountain to get to the old man or else he would scatter. The girl cried hard. She didn't want anything bad to happen to old man Lee. After all, she loved him and became attached to him. Lu Xu remembered how the old man helped in Xiao Yu's training. He thought that in the whole world it was just the two of them. But it turned out that more people were in their lives. It was old man Lee, friends from school, colleagues in the heavenly network. They didn't feel as alone as they used to when it was just the two of them. Our hero thought, if he left these people in trouble, what would he need his strength for? So he decided to improve his skills and perfect himself and take revenge on the bishop from Logosphere. He got the little fruits of awakening to give to his little sister, but she ran away and didn't want to eat his strange fruit anymore. Our hero sat alone on the roof and ate those fruits by himself. The next day he came to give his last lesson at school and afterward to go to Changbai Mountain. In his lecture, our hero said that you can't solve a problem by avoiding it. One must meet it face to face. We will always face obstacles in our path. We need to face them without fear or running away. It will be the right choice. In the courtyard of the house where the heavenly king and the masters lived, there was a large walnut tree. The heavenly king ordered it to be cut down. But the tree was very strong, and it was very hard to cut it down. The masters of the heavenly net tried hard and long to cut it down. After they managed to cut it down, a red box appeared in the trunk and was blazing with fire. It was unknown what was inside this beautiful ancient box. The heavenly king told his subordinates that this was something that should be kept secret. He took this long box in his hands and said that he felt sorry for the tree that had been cut down. The heavenly king said that tomorrow the warriors should go to the mountain, and as soon as they met our hero there, they should tell him about it. But the unexpected happened. It turns out that our hero was in the courtyard of the heavenly king. He, thanks to his superpower, simply changed his appearance and pretended to be one of the warriors of the heavenly network. The heavenly king noticed that the young lad had changed. He became different. He is now ready to take responsibility for other people. He has grown up and is ready for responsibility. The trip to the mountains will be a test and a test. The leaders of all the major organizations gathered in one of the towns. They were following the news on the internet related to the Heavenly Network organization. The Bishop of the Faith suggested attacking the Celestial Network in small groups to slowly drain the power of the organization and prevent a global war. The other heads of the organization liked this idea. It appeared that they would not engage in open combat with the Heavenly King, but would simply weaken him. The Bishop of Faith suggested that as long as they attacked the Celestial Network, they would have full access to the treasures they would find on the mountain. Especially, the number of masters in their organizations was more than the number of masters in the Celestial Network. When everyone gained access to the treasures that were in the mountain, a real war would break out. The members of the different organizations tried to bypass the mountain range and the Heavenly Network's units to break through the guarded border. They camped in the forest to rest and continue their journey the next day. But someone unknown appeared and began kidnapping one by one the members of this camp and dragging them into the forest. 
They gazed into the darkness of the forest, trying to see who was hiding there and where the danger lurked, but nothing could be seen. There were some strange sounds coming from deep in the forest. The Awakened went into the dark forest to find out where the people in their group were disappearing to and saw some flying gray streaks. They met a man. It was Lu Shu. He ordered them to tell them about the camp on the Tiger Ridge. Our hero was determined to kill all the fighters, but he needed information first. The assassin wanted to call for help from another organization, but our hero said he had already killed them and there was no one to call for help. The group members were frightened. They did not know that the other team had already been killed. Our hero repeated his question. He was waiting for an answer. Lu Xu lightly broke through his enemy's defense field and came very close to him. The guy raised his hand and told his enemy to send his greetings to all his acquaintances in the other world and said that he would avenge them. Meanwhile, the heavenly king left his home and friend and went on a long journey. Lu Xu sat in the forest by the fire and warmed himself. He had defeated many warriors of enemy organizations and was resting. He heard some footsteps approaching from the forest. He saw a group of people wearing the Heaven's Net uniform. Lu Xu rejoiced at them, but the faces of these people looked evil and strange, which was suspicious. And then he realized that they were disguised enemies who were pretending to be the organization of the Celestial Net. A battle had begun. This team was fake and our hero started destroying them one by one. There were a couple strong fighters in this team, but the rest were ordinary awakened ones, so it wasn't difficult for the guy to fight. But these brigands were very many, and if they decided to escape, they would be a danger to the real warriors of the Celestial Network organization. Therefore, our hero decided to lure them to the river. He ran through the dark forest. The mercenaries kept chasing after him. Like this, they ran for over an hour. Lu Xu tied up the trunk of a huge tree and threw it at the mercenaries, chasing him with a quick movement. The mercenaries froze in place. The splinters of the tree flew at them. In a second, they lost the trail. Lu Xu grabbed one of the awakened ones by the neck and squeezed it hard. The mercenary's eyes popped out from the pain, his face turned white, and the veins in his neck protruded. There was a scream. It felt like the spines inside were about to crack. The rest of the mercenaries with a shout rushed to attack our hero. But the guy was strong and fast, and in a second he disappeared into the dark forest, continuing to lure the mercenaries deep into this forest. The mercenaries were terribly angry with him because it was unclear who was after whom. They should be the ones to kill him, but it looked like the real hunter was Lu Xu. No one understood what abilities our hero had or what techniques he used. They crouched over the body of the dead man and decided to examine it. After opening the map, the mercenaries noticed that the guy was running in the opposite direction from the Heaven's Net camp. It looked like he had no intention of going back there. While they were looking at the map, our hero came back and jumped at them from a tree, attacking the enemies. With one blow, the guy broke his enemy's spine. The mercenary boss ordered his men to grab the guy, seeing the guy running away once more. They activated their superpower abilities and launched electric current and fire comets at our hero, but Lu Xu was used to the electric shocks in past battles. The mercenary was terribly angry. They had only managed to kill two people from the Celestial Network in one night. If they went back with this result, the other organizations would ridicule them. After many hours, the mercenary squad finally made it out of the forest. Everyone was tired and exhausted, but they never caught up with our hero. They considered him a real devil. They came to a river where danger lurked. Water was Lu Xu's element, and he succeeded in ambushing them by the river. When the mercenaries approached the river to wash themselves, they saw the active power of the water that wanted to swallow them. The boss of the mercenaries ordered everyone to retreat away from the water. He had the elements of earth and sand and tried to resist the power of water, but the mercenaries could not escape. The strong water caught one of the assassins. Then the boss of the mercenaries activated the sand dragon power to fight our hero. In response, Lu Xu used the power of the water dragon, which grabbed the sand dragon with its mighty paws. The two dragons fought a ferocious battle. Our hero's water dragon was simply huge in size. He opened his giant jaw and with one bite, he melted the sand dragon's wing. After a couple minutes, it became visible as shards from the sand dragon scattered from the sky. It shattered into small pieces. In the water, Lu Xu grabbed the two mercenaries and wrapped his arms around their necks. Their boss saw that the guy not only possessed incredible strength, but also controlled the water element. Could it be that experts of this level existed in the heavenly net? The mercenaries drew their swords and prepared for another battle. Lu Xu levitated on the water, preparing to finish this fight. He was ready to fight them all at the same time. And a second later, 
A terrifying blow fell on the mercenaries. They didn't understand how one man could lead an attack on his own against all of them. When alone our hero coped with a whole group of mercenaries, they realized that they had to flee. The boss of the mercenaries, abandoning his team, tried to save his life. But it was impossible to escape from Lu Xu. He activated his magic power. The mercenary boss was electrocuted. He froze in place before he could escape. Lu Xu wanted to play with them next. He activated his levitating sword and pointed it at them. A small sword spirit that was an exact replica of our hero flew out of the sword and started beating up the mercenaries. After dealing with all the mercenaries, our hero tried to send information to the Celestial Network. Meanwhile, the Celestial Network's camp was well fortified and protected. Two of our hero's friends arrived at this camp to help him. The headmaster asked after meeting them if they had the courage and strength to fight because there was a real war ahead. Lu Xu planned to go further to search for other organization camps to find some clues there. He called the intelligence director and told him that he had destroyed an enemy organization that was masquerading as a celestial network. As night fell, the warriors of the celestial network attacked a squad of awakened who were sneaking around the dark forest. It became known that the heavenly king had arrived at the camp in person. The warriors of the heavenly net welcomed the heavenly king with joy. He was the backbone of the celestial network. Even if he was unable to fight, he would give faith and victory and support to this organization. The Heavenly King personally thanked the warriors of the organization for fighting this war. Netan opened the reports and noticed an anomaly in them. He immediately realized that it was Lu Xu's work. Only he could create such a crushing effect. The Heavenly King asked for a warrior named Eugene to be brought to him. His report mentioned that he had once met a mysterious person. The Heavenly King was interested in this information. This soldier came. He was asked to tell about his encounter with the mysterious man. He told that that night they had discovered some kind of light. When they approached, they saw a boy in ordinary clothes sitting by a fire, and beside him were countless corpses of foreign awakened men. This stranger told them to leave because it was very dangerous. Neaton immediately realized that this person was Lu Xu. He was finally ready to take responsibility for the celestial net and his comrades. This moment had arrived. Next, the Heavenly King ordered all the soldiers to gather in the main square. He threw one of his aides a magic ring that held weapons and defenses. From the ring, a huge amount of armored suits and armor that had been collected by Lu Xu earlier in the ruins appeared. On that day, all of the Awakened Heaven's Net, Awakened Ones, put aside their fears. They were going to engage in battle and show what their organization was capable of. They gathered in the center of the camp and tried on the bronze armor that Lu Xu had obtained in the trial in the Sea Ruins. The warriors put on the armor and lined up in front of the Heavenly King. In their hearts lurked a fire of such power that it could burn everything around them. Netan stood before the army and gave a speech. After all, the warriors had trained for so long to defend their homeland with sword in hand in times of danger. The warriors will fight for their family, for their ancestors who sleep eternal sleep. After all, the enemy has come to their land and must be fought back. The Heavenly King has sent them into battle saying he will await their triumphant return. Raising their swords and putting on their armor, the warriors were ready to fight and defend their homeland. The warriors ran through the forest and attacked a squad of Awakened that was lurking in one of the lawns. The Awakened Ones activated their powers and attacked the Celestial Net. The Awakened Ones used the powers of water, fire, and earth to fight the Celestial Net. The battle was very powerful. The forces of different elements collided in one place and there was an explosion but the magic armor absorbed these magical attacks. The heavenly net warrior jumped high in the air, raised his sword, and rushed at the enemy with force. The mercenaries didn't expect the heaven's net warriors to be so well prepared. It was time for a new battle. The heavenly net warriors fought fiercely, displaying their strength. From afar, the heavenly king watched the battles taking place in different places on the mountain. Couching Chi flew to the heavenly king and said that she wanted to go to the mountain to help the others. The Heavenly King gave her a ring that was supposed to help the girl. She took it and put it on her finger. A moment later, a magical weapon appeared in her hand. The Awakened, who were camped out and drinking tea by the fire, heard footsteps approaching. The sounds grew closer and closer with each passing minute. They saw a troop of Heaven's Net warriors in armor bearing down on them. The Awakened people rushed in different directions upon seeing the Heaven's Net warriors. They didn't understand how the Celestial Net could break through the energy barrier they had created to protect themselves. Thanks to their magic armor, the Celestial Net was able to break through the magic barrier. Panic gripped the Awakened people as they tried to escape. The high-ranked Awakened One gathered all his strength in his hand and attacked the Celestial Net with his superpower. 
His superpower was the creation of coldness. A cold, flame-like energy emerged between the rocks. The Heaven's Net warriors felt everything freezing inside. Their hands froze. They were shaking from the cold. Fatty tried to eat that cold aura. He was glad that his abilities had improved and he could absorb this aura. The other Heaven's Net warriors froze in surprise. They didn't know that their classmate had such an ability. The fatty had obtained this ability in the ruins when he and the dragon Lu Shu had absorbed the altar together. Awakened with his coldness ability, he saw his magical aura being absorbed by someone standing on a rock. He had never seen such power before. The fatty said that these enhancements and ability had improved because of Lu Shu's gifts. Next, the celestial net continued their battle. They lined up back to back and made a circle. The awakened of other organizations grabbed their swords and were ready to kill the warriors of the celestial network. A fierce battle began. Each group used all their strength and fury to harm their opponent. The Heaven's Net warriors used enhanced attacks, so the Awakened Ones had a very hard time and suffered a lot of damage. There was nothing left for them but to try and escape. The strongest Awakened One tried to create ice blocks and attack the warriors. He was the one who possessed the power of cold and ice. The icy huge stones flew into the Heaven's Net warriors. Fatty opened his mouth and tried to absorb this ice crystal that flew at them. His insides became very cold. Awakened saw that his ice crystal attack had been defeated. He realized that the Celestial Net was winning. He saw that the guys from the Celestial Net were very strong, and he needed to escape. In this battle, when the leader of the Awakened Ones was trying to escape, Chao Ching Chi suddenly appeared. She had the Neaton sword in her hands. She swung her sword to strike the Awakened One, but he activated his ice aura. But his ice wall was easily destroyed thanks to the magic sword. The girl easily dealt with the enemy. After that, she also mysteriously disappeared as she appeared. All the enemies in the camp were defeated by the heavenly net. In the middle of the night, our hero approached the second enemy camp. He went into the tent to take a break and found a lot of delicious food left for him by a squirrel. Sitting in the tent, he heard the sound of footsteps approaching. He looked out and saw warriors running in the armor he had collected from the ruins. But our hero did not want to reveal his identity and preferred to run away from his colleagues. He was offended that they want to kill him and they are wearing the armor he collected in the ruins, but there was no other way out. Lu Xu had a plan. By disguising himself, infiltrate the enemy organization and infiltrate the port of Artyom with them. After running past his enemies, the guy pretended to be one of them and urged everyone to run away because they were under attack. But the Awakened Ones did not believe the Celestial Net attack, and in a minute the Celestial Net tore into the camp and killed them. The warriors looked through the camp and found a tent with pictures. They recognized who was in them and realized that Lu Xu had just been in the camp. He had managed to play a joke on them again and fooled them by changing his identity. The camp at Tiger Ridge was completely defeated and defeated. The enemy had been knocked completely out of the camp's boundaries. Everyone was celebrating the victory and resting after the hard fighting. The warriors had done a great job and could now get some rest. Medical aid arrived at the camp to help the wounded soldiers. They were with varying degrees of damage. After this battle, the Celestial Network had lost 1,800 people with more than 5,000 injured. The number of enemies killed was difficult to count. A group of experts arrived at the scene of the battle to assess the losses and provide the necessary assistance to the injured. Overnight, the Sky Net Camp had been incredibly transformed. Construction equipment was now working in place of the tents. When the Celestial Net warriors woke up in the morning, they saw that small buildings had appeared at the site of the battle. The intelligence director came over to them and said that a few hours ago, the Heavenly King had designated the Tiger Ridge area as the site of a decisive battle with large organizations. Therefore, the technicians were building a military fortress that would be the decisive line of defense. After the Celestial Network's military captured the Tiger Ridge, the only enemy base left was Artyom Port. Yesterday's bronze armor attack had made a great impression on the Awakened Ones. Lu Xu's sister Lu Xu has returned to the camp. At his request, she would protect this camp. The Heavenly King, while at the base, felt an energy fluctuation. Carol appeared in the air. The Sky King thanked her Protoss organization for supporting and helping the Celestial Network. She said that her memories hadn't come back to her yet, but she was sure to remember everything. She had flown here to help Lu Xu. The heads of various organizations arrived at Port Artem. They had all been gathered by the Bishop of Faith to discuss the situation on the battlefield and offer them an idea. Sitting at a large table, the Bishop listened to the reports from the other heads of organizations and suggested that they should take full responsibility for the withdrawal of the mercenaries. This suggestion was rather strange and unusual. 
because the Logos faith usually stood aside. The awakened, who were trying to reach the port of Artyom, were sitting by the fire and dreaming of food. Changing his appearance, our hero disguised himself as one of the awakened who managed to survive the attack of the celestial net. The surviving awakened fought over the fish caught in the river, not knowing how to divide it. Suddenly, they heard some footsteps. Warriors from the Logos of Faith in their white robes were approaching them. They brought food to the mercenaries, who were very hungry and exhausted from fighting the heaven's net, and said that the mercenaries should stay in the forest to continue fighting. The mercenaries did not want to stay here at any cost. They wanted to return to the port of Artyom. One of them got a dagger. The Logos member raised his hands, used magic power, and stabbed that mercenary. The mercenary threw himself with all his anger at the Logos warrior. He didn't want to go back to the battle. He had managed to survive the last fight, and he didn't want to be sent back to die again. Our hero arrived at the port of Artyom in disguise. When he arrived there, the port was very quiet. No tens of thousands of mercenaries, as intelligence said, he did not find. But the guards saw him and put guns to his chest, trying to find out who he was and what he was doing here. But Lu Xu killed that guard with his magic weapon at the same second. Our hero was ruthless. He was disappointed that his plan had failed, and here was just a supply base with guards. Lately, all his plans had been failing. Next, he moved to the port of Artyom, where large cargo ships were parked and everything was lit up with large searchlights. In this port, he saw a large number of warriors from the Logos of Faith. Lu Xu sat on the deck of one of the ships and thought, how should he proceed? He realized that he possessed water element practice and could take advantage of this opportunity. He snuck up on one of the Logos of Faith's warriors, and after killing him, he took his identity. Changing his appearance, our hero infiltrated one of the warehouses under the guise of a Logos of Faith warrior. After sneaking into the enemy warehouse and opening the crates in which he expected to find treasure, Lu Xu was greatly disappointed to find water bottles and canned food. After going through all 20 crates and not finding any treasure in them, he felt annoyed. He absorbed these crates with his superpower anyway, figuring that by doing so he could deprive his enemies of food and supplies. Thanks to his seal and the blue dragon that could absorb everything around him, our hero was satisfied. His little dragon had an infinite ability to absorb everything around it. After that, he noticed that a large number of trucks were entering the warehouse. A huge number of warriors were crowding around them. Our hero wondered what could be stored in these vehicles. Opening one of the boxes, he saw that it contained weapons, or rather, they were swords. Approaching the truck, the guy used his magic power, trying to absorb the whole truck. He hadn't resorted to such a technique before and decided to use it. There was a commotion because everyone noticed that the truck that was just standing there had disappeared. It was urgent to contact his superiors and tell them what had happened. No one understood why trucks were disappearing. Lu Xu, under the cover of another appearance, continued to sow confusion in the enemy camp, causing disorder and turmoil there. The Heavenly Net Warrior urgently contacted his boss and reported that the trucks from the warehouse were disappearing. They weren't just trucks, they were weapons vehicles. The boss was beyond angry. He didn't understand how a whole truck could be lost. The boss contacted Francisco and reported to him that not only the weapons were missing at the supply base, but also the trucks that were transporting them. It happened in the blink of an eye. The trucks disappeared instantly one by one. Francisco ordered to find who did it and kill him. He also ordered the forest to be closed, and only those transporting corpses would be allowed through. Everyone noticed that Francisco looked kind of strange and had aged a lot. With Francisco's arrival, the forest took on a strange reddish hue, as if a bloody mist had descended into the gorge and filled everything with red. The sky in the forest seemed blood red, because a great heart was levitating above, to which streams of blood were rushing. At the bottom of this heart stood Francisco, and collected from the dead all the blood that tended to fill this great throbbing heart. Two corpses lay on the ground, and all the blood from them was being absorbed by this heart. Francisco stood and watched in fascination as the heart grew larger and filled with the blood of the dead. He wanted to fill this heart with blood in order to increase his strength and reach the rank of bishop. Meanwhile, another weaponized vehicle disappeared in the base. The Heaven Net warriors raised the alarm. The boss ordered everyone to raise their hands and immediately move away from the trucks. The boss said that there was an enemy among their order, and they needed to find him. Lu Xu didn't understand Italian and couldn't understand what was going on around him. Soon, the people from the Logos of Faith revealed the identity of our hero and learned that he was not who he claimed to be. A violent explosion followed and everyone ran to see what had happened. Lu Xu realized that he was invincible 
and there was nothing the Logos Faith Warriors could do to him. But the Logos Warriors didn't know what kind of power our hero possessed, so they attacked him thinking that he would be easy to deal with because he was acting alone. Lu Shu stood surrounded and prepared to use his battle technique to overpower the enemy. He applied his water elemental power. His power was devastating. Thanks to this water elemental, he was invincible. The heaven net enemy broke through our hero's water defense and sneaked up on him from behind from behind. But the guy turned around sharply and grabbed his opponent's sword with his bare hands. His enemy had the ability to hide in the air. He had the power of the element of air. Therefore, he could dissolve and thus disappear from his opponent's sight. Lu Xu realized that his opponent was well prepared for stealthy attacks. He took out a seal from his box that had the ability to absorb. Then he realized that he had no time to procrastinate and urgently needed to escape to avoid revealing his identity and also to bring the rest of the trucks with him. Such a guy's insolence angered the warriors from the Logos of Faith. A high-ranked fighter chased after him. But there were also water particles in the air and our hero was able to use his ability to surround the enemy. With the humidity of the air increasing greatly, he accumulated water around him to displace the air. The water element was able to resist the air element. His enemy couldn't resist him, and the air elemental was about to collapse. He fell to the ground. He had no way to stop and hold our hero. Then the enemy came up with an idea to share information related to the attack on the celestial network, and in return, our hero had to give back the machines and magic weapons. But Lu Shu ran to the next truck, for he didn't pick up Italian. The boss of the Logos Faith Warriors ordered to build a strong line of defense and be ready to stop the enemy at any moment. Meanwhile, our hero continued to absorb the trucks one by one with his magic power. The boss was beyond furious. He ordered to stop our hero at any cost. The negative emotion points were off the charts. Lu Shu decided to run to the sea, where he felt his water element, and come up with a plan next. He was followed by the Heaven's Net Warriors with weapons. They tried to catch up with him. They were desperate, for they were afraid of the anger of the Cardinal who was about to arrive. Lu Shu dealt with these warriors in one blow, for the opponents were quite weak. Once on the pier, he activated his water ability and raised a huge wave above his head. A giant-sized water dragon appeared, and on its head stood our hero. The boss from the Logos of Faith shouted to the guy that the Celestial Network would still lose because all the organizations had come together to defeat the Celestial Network and destroy all its warriors. The water dragon had incredible power. Reinforcements arrived to help Logos of Faith. Their boss boasted that they had three times the number of awakened ones and that it was now impossible for a guy to defeat them. Lu Xu praised their courage and bravery and said that he hadn't originally planned to fight them, but now he had no way out. Since a large number of high-ranked awakened ones had gathered here, he would help the heavenly net and kill them. Gliding through the water on his water dragon, our hero rushed towards the enemy. The Logos Faith's warriors thought they were in for an easy victory and aimed their weapons at the guy. The opponents activated all their strength to defeat the Blue Water Dragon. A huge wave descended on the Logos of Faith warriors, knocking them down. The boss of the organization, along with his assistants, watched Lu Xu's displacement in horror. Instead of killing his enemies, our hero was fleeing towards the forest. He had accomplished his goal and was luring them into a new trap. The warriors from Logos took to the sky and followed our hero. The Sky Network headquarters received urgent news about the port of Artyom. Everyone gathered to finally find out who had destroyed the enemy base. The information was confidential and said that the awakened water elemental had taken the guards by surprise. He had emptied 20 warehouses of supplies and took away 30 trucks carrying magical weapons. Reading this news, the intelligence director realized that they didn't appreciate Lu Xu's madness. Everyone in the Celestial Network read the news about our hero with admiration thinking how could an ordinary person be so great? The next information said that the guy was now hiding in the mountains. His classmates did not understand why he ran far away from the sea. After all, his element was water. Lu Xu ran all the way to the forest, luring his enemies farther and farther away. He moved very professionally and skillfully. To have fun, our hero launched a stinky tofu bomb right at the Logos warriors who were dressed in all white. These bombs hit them right in the forehead and the smell that came from them was just disgusting. Thanks to this trick, the guy managed to earn even more negative emotion points. Then he took out his magic seal with the blue dragon and prepared to show off a new trick. He wanted to try out the new artifacts he had obtained. He was curious to see the effect of introducing the energy of the invisible small sword, an actual magical weapon. The warriors of the Logos of Faith saw that our hero had a flying sword and took up defensive positions. 
they acted cautiously. A sword flew past the warriors. They noticed that this sword was magical, and the guy could manipulate it from a distance. The Logos Faith warriors were frightened by the sword attack and rushed behind the high cliffs to somehow evade the attack. Lu Xu easily killed three high-ranked warriors with her enhanced magic weapon. The Logos of Faith decided to use secret battle techniques. They surrounded themselves with a powerful protective energy field and prepared to attack. The techniques couldn't stop our hero. He launched his sword and his purple dragon, shattering the protective field. The Logos of Faith's military had never met an opponent who could single-handedly smash their secret defense technique. They shouted that the guy was a devil that even Lord Francisco didn't want to face. The surviving fighters of the Logos of Faith tried to flee into the forest to save their lives. Lu Xu chased him into the forest. He decided to play around a bit and earn extra negative emotion points. A meeting was going on in the neighboring camp at Riviera Beach. The heads of various organizations had gathered together to discuss their war against the Celestial Network. Those gathered wanted to find the treasure in these areas. They argued about their next course of action and their feud with the Celestial King. The director of the foundation was also present at the meeting. They had their own feud with the Heavenly Net, their goals kept secret. The Kingdom of Darkness had prepared a special shipment of supplies. They were to arrive at the port of Artyom on cargo ships. The bishop learned that our hero had single-handedly defeated all high-ranking opponents and sent Francisco to bring his head. After sending Francisco on his mission, the directors of the various organizations continued their meeting. The time for the attack was set for tomorrow. It was agreed to let the mercenaries in at the beginning to weaken the celestial network and also to see the actions of the Celestial King. In the meantime, a communication station, electricity, water, and internet were built at the new base of the Celestial Network. The base was perfectly fortified. Grandmaster Lee arrived at the base. A great battle was about to take place, and he, as a member of the Celestial Network, came to the base. A message came through the communication channel that an enemy attack was expected tomorrow. A large number of mercenaries were expected to attack the Celestial Network's fortress. The little girl Xiao Yu asked what could she do to help the organization. The Heavenly King said that this was no place for a 12-year-old girl. He asked why she wanted to help the Heavenly Network. The girl replied that her brother had said he wanted to fight for the Heavenly Net. But since he was away at the time, she would take over the duty. The Sky King agreed to give the girl a task that was perfect for her. The assignment was to sneak underground and capture the enemy Earth Elemental Masters. He took out the documents that contained the pictures of these masters and showed the girl. Although the foundation of the Heavenly Net was fortified, but it was difficult to keep track of all the masters in an attack. Xiao Yu replied that she had a great way to deal with them. Watching the little girl, the Heavenly Network leaders understood that although Lu Xu and Xiao Yu considered themselves separate from the Heavenly Network organization, but over time, they developed sympathy and grew closer to the organization, worrying about it. Meanwhile, our hero lured his enemy to the river where he possessed the most power because water was our hero's element. The warrior of the Logos of Faith realized that he needed to run as far away from the river as possible. It was the only way he could save his life. Then he heard someone's loud voice and thought that someone had come to save him. But suddenly Lu Xu suddenly appeared and killed him. The Logos Faith warrior fell on the rocks, never finding salvation. Suddenly, through the dark clouds came Francisco. He flew straight to the place where our hero was. Lu Xu ordered his dragon Chaos to wake up, but he did not react. So our hero decided to run. Francisco spotted him and prepared to strike him with his magic swords. Francisco's sword had such power that it shattered rocks into pieces. Our hero was lucky that he was near a river, and he folded his arms and was about to dive into the water. Francisco was very furious. He was going to kill our hero. He struck with his sword and there was an explosion. Water splashes flew in different directions. Francisco floated in the air, but he saw that our hero had managed to escape, probably under the water. Francisco dove into the water after him. Diving deeper and deeper, he continued to pursue our hero. Lu Xu, gritting his teeth, swam underwater. He tried to escape from his pursuer. It was hard for Lu Xu to get away from Francisco because Francisco could move faster underwater after increasing his combat class. Our hero realized that he had no other choice and would have to use his trick and ability. He electrocuted Francisco with an electric shock. Tears spurted from Francisco's eyes from the pain. The Lord of the Logos of Faith knew this electric shock. He remembered the battle in Africa and the same trick. Our hero had revealed his identity. Francisco realized that that man in Africa was Lu Xu and felt incredibly angry and thirsty for revenge. He wanted to destroy our hero.